Assalamu alaikum, everybody. How is everybody today? Um, I'm looking a bit bright. I've got a new light, so it's like put me in the spotlight. But anyway, um, welcome to another arena. Alhamdulillah. Uh, mashallah, 261 people waiting. I must be late. Uh, anyone, any of the fish in the chat so far? All right, let me just, uh, yeah. So welcome to the arena. Um, if this is your first time here, it's a very simple, um, very simple show. So basically what it is, it's designed to invite uh, non-Muslims to come onto the panel. Our debate cushions here, brilliant stuff. Oh, I've got a perfect uh, gladiator for you. Um, so basically it's a show that's designed to invite non-Muslims to come into the arena and either directly challenge Islam so they can question the Quran, what we believe as Muslims, or whatever, whatever. Or they can try to present what they believe um, is true, which by default would challenge Islam. Yeah. So um, that's it. So it's not for Muslims. Maybe if we, we're low on guests, we, I'll let you guys know that, yeah, this space for Muslims, if they want to come and ask questions to some of the panelists, to some of the gladiators, um, then no problem at all. But this is a non for non-Muslims. So it's for non-Muslims to challenge Islam. So we're giving them an avenue to do so. Uh, or it's they can come and defend what they believe. Alhamdulillah. I know Debate a Christian is here. And I know uh, Silly Billy is going to be back. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to bring on today's gladiators. Alhamdulillah. Um, back by Dope Nimand is our brother Jake, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum, Achi. Labas, bikhair, alhamdulillah. Bikhair, alhamdulillah. How's everything? <laughs> alhamdulillah. Good to see you back, man. Honestly, missed you. Honestly. Alhamdulillah. I'm glad to be here, bro. Yeah, I haven't been on the arena in a, in a minute. It's been a while. <laughs> oh, alhamdulillah. I've got a Christian in the comment section who's coming on. I spoke to him earlier in the warm-up. And mm -hmm. uh, he's a nice guy. But I think you'll have fun with him. Um, Sounds good. Oh, actually, talking to Christians... There's another guy who'll have fun with him as well. Hashim, salam alaikum, bro. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Very nice to see you as well. Did I hear a Christian? Yeah, we got we've got a Christian in, in the uh, chat. So uh, he, he I spoke to him earlier and he, he I spoke to him on actually he came onto my stream earlier and we had a little basic chat. So he's willing to come on now, so which is cool. So because Shabir's gonna be a little bit late, and I think uh Sabor's gonna be a lot late. So in the meantime, we can invite the Christian on, inshallah. So, um, without further ado, I'll put the link out there, and let's get this party started. Alhamdulillah. It was quite funny, actually, because the, the Christian was called Debate a Christian. So, when I brought him onto my stream, I said, so you want me to debate you on Christianity? And he's like, no, I'm not saying that. I'm like, your name's Debate a Christian, so surely you want me to debate what you believe. All right, anyway. Anyway, you guys chat amongst yourself just while I do a bit of housekeeping. Sure. Nice to see you, brother Jake. Uh, you're right, alhamdulillah. Good, it's, alhamdulillah. It's Long been, time no see. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, isn't it, since being on the same stream? Yeah, yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, I'm looking be. forward to it. Looking forward to who we got stepping in the arena today. Yeah, who dares? <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Some um, a Christian guy messaged me on um, <clears throat> saying. Um, what how how do you invite someone to the show so i'm like uh why would you like to come on he goes no but christian prince has asked me to get your details what so like, Prince? Uh, yeah what was that uh, he, he, <laughs> yeah he apparently asked him to get the details right so i'm like um he ain't gonna come on and then he started saying oh that's like opening a crappy restaurant and then gordon ramsay wants to come and eat you say no don't come eat i said no 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 i'm just letting you down gently he won't come on Anyway, so I gave him the link and I, and I showed him the lineup. He went, his, his response was, oh, that's strong. And then, later <laughs> on, then, then I said, have you given the information to him? He goes, uh, yeah, I have done, but um, I don't I don't think he's, um, I don't think he's going to come on. <laughs> like, yeah, but no, but. <laughs> All right, so we've got Silly Billy and we've got Debate a Christian. Um, if you don't mind, uh, Tom, in it, uh, Silly Billy. Um, if you don't mind, can I let the Christian on first? Because we've got the, the good uh, gladiators ready for him. Is that all right? Yeah, I'll take that as an all right. Yeah. Debate a Christian. How are you, sir? Hey, can you hear me well? 
we can hear you well, man. You look like you've got dressed for the occasion, man. Looking good. Looking sharp. Thank you. Yeah, man. You're putting us to shame. You should have let Obviously, us know. Obviously, we're all there slouching about in our T-shirts and, and hats. And <laughs> come on, you come ready. For, you know, I like it when you're ready for business, dress for business, isn't it? That's what they say. So, debater Christian, what do we call you? Is uh, Do you have a name we call you by? Oh, you just call me Christian. Okay, Chris, that is it then. Yeah. Okay. So, um, welcome to the arena. Um, what's your point? <clears throat> Uh, uh, I suppose the main uh, contention, or one of the main contentions between uh, uh, Islam and Christianity, would be the crucifixion. Okay. Do you agree with that? Um, it, yeah. One of them, yeah. One of them. Yeah, yeah. One, yeah. Okay. So. The Christians believe that he was crucified, and the Muslims believe that he was not crucified. However, the, I would say the vast majority of people believe that he was crucified. The only uh, contrary to that would be uh, believers of the, of the Quran, Islam. Is that accurate? Not really. You don't think so? No, Christians believe he was crucified. Are you saying that that uh, the history does not attest to his crucifixion? Um, I, th I, I would say if, if you're going to go off history, um, people were believing he was crucified or a man called Jesus was crucified in history. Um, yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. right. So the majority would say, yeah, he was crucified. Majority of who, though? People. Just people in general. The atheists will say Jesus didn't exist. Um, well, they they might you know many of them will actually say that he existed whether or not they believe that he that he is god is another question i no, i think you'll find atheists they don't believe in moses they don't believe in abraham they don't believe in david they don't believe in the prophets no. well, i'm not saying that there aren't those who don't believe that i'm just saying that just because they're atheists doesn't mean that they don't believe that jesus was crucified they don't have to believe jesus was crucified it doesn't matter to them because look, uh, look. I think silly Billy just said he's an atheist and he doesn't. So there you go. So let let me get this point straight. So you're saying if the vast majority of them uh, believed it, so that must be true. Is that your argument? No, that is not the argument. So what is your argument? What makes you think that Jesus was crucified? Is it just based on the Bible, or do you have any historical sources that are credible? And that okay, so let me ask you. Let me ask you: Are there historical sources that that? Well, the other one making the claim that he was crucified. So you should bring the evidence, isn't it? Are you the saying you don't you, know? No, 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 no. You're making the claim he was crucified. Yeah, you're making the claim. So the What's your evidence you to provide no, the evidence? But the question is: Is do, see to me, it seems as though you're being disingenuous. How? Because if you know that there are historical references, stuff in collaboration, whatever. And you're trying to say, well, we don't want to step in there yet. We want to see what you have to say. It seems very disingenuous. No, it doesn't. So I'm for asking us, you. For us, the source is the Quran. The Quran says he wasn't crucified, neither was he killed. So okay. we don't go based on historical sources, which can be true or which can be false. And you know that as well. So if I don't okay. have any historical sources for Moses, will I stop believing in Moses? No, I wouldn't. I would go based on the Quran. And you would go based on the Bible. So please do not use historical evidence as your main source. Excellent. So now it has progressed. So now we yeah. only have the Bible. And we only have the Quran to talk about. Now I'm not saying go only based on the Bible. unless you That is pretty much Bible what you just said. Is a it is only the Quran. Information, then yes, we can, we can you talk You only about accept it. the Quran. Is that accurate? Well, right now, your evidence is lacking. Unless you show us but evidence. Just, just, just interrupt. Just, just you interrupt. just said what? that you're only going to Christian. conform to the Quran. Christian. You did that that uh, assertion. Can I, can I just address yeah, the elephant in the room? If I confirm only based on the Quran, will you agree with that? Okay. So, can I just so, address the elephant in the room? Okay, go on. Right. So, let me just address, so, let me right, just address, let's address the, the elephant in the room. In the room. Right. Can I just address the elephant in the room? Right. So, right, so you have Christian, the Quran. Christian. Yes. Can I just undermine the whole thing, if you don't mind? Because I think you've misunderstood what the Quran says. Um, the Quran confirms what history says. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. 
No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Okay, the Quran says no. the people thought he was crucified. People can go and look it up. You can go and look up listen, external listen. sources to the Bible about right, what does the Quran it's say? About, what does the Quran it's say about the crucifixion? It's easy to look up. What does the Quran say about the crucifixion? You tell me. It, it says the people believed he was crucified. Okay. Right. What does history say about the crucifixion? The, that the crucifixion occurred. No, people believed he was crucified. Right. Right. So they're so, being what honest. Is that, so history, so they're being saying, honest. So history is saying people believed mm -hmm. he was crucified. The Quran is saying people believed he was crucified. What's the difference? Well, see, that would be a very amazing thing. I mean, you could call it even miraculous. It's amazing that that you have this uh, this man who who dies, and no, and they say he died, but he didn't really die. So that's pretty much what you're saying, correct? No, we're saying, no, no, no. We're saying he didn't die, but the people believed he did. Why did they believe that he died? Because because it was made to it appeared so to them. Who did that? Why does that matter? It it, it matters a lot. Why? So do, do you have an answer for that? No, no. Why does it matter? How it was appeared to, to them, how it appeared because so it's them. miraculous. Oh, alhamdulillah, no problem. Uh, hold on, hold on. What is miraculous? Whoa, 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 what does that mean? Are you saying for God to die is miraculous? Really? No, no, Jesus that is, is not what God I'm saying. What I'm saying, saying for him to die no. is miraculous. Hashem, I think that is not Hashem. what I am saying. Well, you said it's miraculous. That is not I mean, what I am saying. Like a thief. Do not put words Between into my mouth. The thieves. Do That's not put words into my mouth. Activity Hashem. At that time. Hashem, yes. listen. It's Hashim, by the way, not Hashim. Ha Hashim. Hashim. Yes. Thank you. Elongate the A. Okay. Chris, Hashim. Chris, Chris, you're getting Hashim. a little hot under the collar, man. Yeah. You might, you might want to I mean, just. I really just don't lose lose right, because he's putting dying, words in my mouth. I just don't find that acceptable. It's Chris, out of Chris, loosen up your tie a little bit, brother. <laughs> just chill out. <laughs> it's not that big a deal, man. All right. So, what is miraculous would be that there is a man. Whom everyone associates and says, yeah, we know who he is, and he died, but he really didn't. And this was made to appear that way. That's miraculous. So who did that? And then, Hamza, you said, what did you say? Okay, I said to you, very simply. No, it, people, Hamdil, Alhamdulillah, praise be to God. Okay. Oh, so God did it. However it happened, it happened. We don't know. So the point here is this. How it so happened, it happened. Did God do it or not? Okay. How it happened, we don't right. know. We, we, what we believe, what we believe that Allah took Jesus up before they could do anything to him. So how it happened, whether it was substituted or whatever it may be. Well, but who substituted him? He what just mean? told you we don't know exactly we don't what know. happened. We, we don't have the details of oh, how Allah Jesus says in the Quran. was saved. Allah says in the Quran. But we know that God saved him from that crucifixion. Uh, uh, that Allah says in the Quran. Quran. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So right. God so, so the details of how it happened. We know that it happened, but we don't know how it happened. What we okay. do know, though, let's ask well, the fact. You don't know, actually. You well, let's deal with what we do know. That. Let's deal uh, with what we do know. It's, it's quite clear. Allah no. says in the Quran, he wasn't killed and he wasn't crucified, but it appeared to them so. He did not say he made it appear to them so. It appeared to them it so. For example, so. if you see the sun setting, Yes, it appears to you that as if the sun is setting. But in reality, we all know it is the rotation of the earth which makes it feel like it's setting. Okay. So okay. wait a minute. Are you going to blame God for making it appear to you that the sun is setting at the horizon? No, you wouldn't. Because when it appears to people, there could be several factors why it appears to them as if it has set or as right. if but Jesus was the one who was crucified. There, but when in right? reality, he was the one who was saved prediction? by God. Right, but you have a whole bunch of people there who are observing the crucifixion. And yeah, they're give like, me one name. Give me one name of an eyewitness who saw Jesus being crucified and who has written about it. Go on. All right, are you going to accept the Bible? The Bible? Okay, which which uh, author no, no, of the no. Bible? Wait, wait. Are you going to accept let me qualify the that. Bible? Let me no. let me qualify the question first. Was that you a no? Said, you Christian, said what's that you have what's that evidence. Christian. Are you saying you have evidence of an eyewitness account in the Bible? Of Jesus, so we have two things here. You are saying I am. Ex you are saying you accept the Quran, and so I am saying that I can accept the Bible. 
Yeah, Why? Show me from if the you're telling me that you need a account, witness, then, but don't you need a witness? No. No. Because I'm not, Why not? claiming Jesus was crucified. You are. So you need a but, witness. But your claim is that he wasn't crucified and that he was taken away and that he was made to appear as yeah. though it didn't happen. Now, yeah. how did that occur? Wait, wait, are, are you saying he wasn't are you there? Saying it's impossible were, for God to say Jesus? Is that what you're saying? I'm sorry, what? Are you saying it's impossible for God to save Jesus? What what I am saying is that there is an individual there, according to Can you to please answer the question I asked you? Is it impossible for God to save what Jesus? I if you am to? saying. Why are you triggered, is, man? I'm asking you a simple question. Calm down. What I am saying. Is it saying, impossible for God to save Jesus Christ if he wanted to? What I am saying. You're still not answering the question. So you have an individual who appears to have been crucified, but you're saying he was taken away. No, I didn't say it was taken away. I said it appeared to them. That means just like the sun appears to be setting at the horizon for you, when you look at the horizon at sunset, it appeared to them so. Wait, wait, wait no, no. Are you saying he wasn't taken away? Which okay, part of Christian, what I just, you need, I need to, to listen. One second, it Hashim. appeared to them so. So, for example, if God wanted to save no, Jesus no, no, Christ, no, you, no, that's not are the you question. Not are you saying, saying that he was not the taken away? Okay, I, no are you listening? Taken away. One second. What? He just was listen. never at the never at the cross to be taken Christian. away. Just he was listen. saved from that crucifixion. I, that's not what I'm asking you. All right, Christian, just listen. Taken away, Christian. Just listen, please. Taken away from where? The Quran says they killed him not. They crucified him not, but it appeared so to them. Yeah. And anybody, right. nobody knows what happened. And anybody who does claim they know is nothing but conjecture. They're just guessing. So the reality is, so one second, one second, Christian, Christian. So the reality is the Quran doesn't elaborate on what happened. What the Quran says is. So it's he not clear. One second. He wasn't crucified, nor was he killed. So it's All not right. clear. Now from that, what, listen. From that, no, the Quran makes it clear. We can derive. We can derive. Apparently, it's not clear. What, what, is it clear or not? Uh, Christian, just you, listen. You're the one who misses. Did, okay, go on. Up. Finish your point here. Right, okay. So, so we don't know what happened. So, Allah says anyone who tries to know what happened, they're just guessing, right? But there are theories. So, there's a substitution theory that he was replaced yeah. with somebody else. Now, some yeah. claim it could be Judas. Some and I think even the, there's a Christian source. Is this is it? Who is it who says uh, it could have been Judas? I think there's some um, apocryphal. No, book but we don't that, need to bring Hamza. We just stick to. No, 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 no. I'm just giving him. I'm just explaining because what he's he's holding on to one theory. I'm just trying to explain to him how different theories have emerged of how it could have yeah. happened. So either he was replaced, or he he could have been on the cross but didn't die on the cross. This this is another theory. All of this, it was made to appear so because somebody manufactured uh, the Bible in a way to make it look like he'd been crucified. Or there's another theory that there was no there was no crucifixion at all. And this is all just a fabricated story. So there's many different theories. What would the point being made here is a very clear one. The people it's believed or right. some people believed he was right. crucified and they were right. reporting one second and they were reporting that he was crucified. And history, all it will do is report what the people are saying. So, right, right, right. So history is reporting a man called Jesus was crucified. Okay. The Quran okay. says the people believed Jesus was crucified. So the Quran is confirming what history says. It's not against history, right? Now, I need to ask you a question, just a little question. Do you know what the first name of Barabbas was? I'm not worried about that. That's not part of the topic. No, it is part of it. Do you know what his first name was? Uh, that's not part of the topic. No, it, so, it is part uh, of it. Back to the crucifixion. Okay, I will ask you questions. I'll just tell you. Okay, so Barabbas' first name was Jesus. Yeah? So his name was Jesus Barabbas. And Jesus Barabbas was the leader of the rebels. Yeah? And the Romans crucified rebels. So you're lying. But anyways. Well, no, no. One second, one second. What no, you're about? lying. You're no, lying. No, no. So, so we know. Go read the Bible. One second. You're lying. L look. I don't either. Lie. So it's a you question of the Bible it. versus the Quran. Please don't interrupt when That's I'm talking. Don't interrupt when I'm talking. I won't interrupt you. Don't You're interrupt lying. me. You're lying. Okay. I, I am not going to stand here and Barabbas let you just first... lie. One second. It's a lie. What? What was the first yeah. name of Barabbas in the Bi of the Bible? So back to the crucifixion. So what? So what we're talking about is that. Hey, listen, listen. One second. 
You're saying that it appears as though. You know, Hamza, what I've noticed, he, he, he doesn't know how. He, he, he just wants to. Wait a second. He, he has a narrative and he just wants to read Ashen, that. Just one second. He doesn't just one answer second. any questions, this guy. One second. I Why just come want to a live stream. Because he just called me a liar. He just called me a liar, Christian. So yeah. just listen. What was the first name of Barabbas in the Bible? Jesus Barabbas. According to Britannica, according to the early biblical scholar Oregon and other commentators, the full name of Barabbas may have been Jesus Barabbas, since Jesus was a common first name. Okay, so I didn't lie about that. <laughs> second thing, second thing, did we know the Romans did you crucified rebels. Barabbas was the leader of the rebels. So if history reports, the leader of the rebels was crucified, and what? And Jesus Barabbas means son of the father. So now we're, now we're down to a Monty Python sketch. Who shall I release? Jesus, son of the father, or Jesus of Nazareth? Hey? Um, she's son of the father. Come on, man. Two I Jesus. can't believe he raged, he raged, run out. <laughs> did, he, did he leave? Did, you, did he happened? leave or did you boot him? No, why would I boot him? I was enjoying him. <laughs> I, was, I was enjoying the intensity. The problem was... It just got cranked up. So I think he must have threw his laptop or something because he didn't even go to the backstage. He just went. <laughs> you were saying that his guy was pretty chill. Was he lo acting okay. like this earlier or no? Oh, no, he was passive aggressive. Oh, okay. No, 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 bro. Well, we have to get them into the arena somehow, yeah. innit? Well, you know what I mean? While, while we are on the topic, can you read uh, Psalm 91, uh, was 10 to 12? Because it, it actually says something quite extraordinary in there. He kept saying about the Bible. Yeah, because if you go to Psalm 91, Psalm 91, 91 um, verses 10 to 12. Hope silly please don't be yeah, that. It says, there, shall, yeah. um, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give You're his the angels KJV. charge over thee. Okay. Yeah, this is KJV. Old English, man. Get some new, uh, new international. Or something no like harm that. will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command mm. his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. There you go. So that's I'm about the that. Messiah. Yeah. No harm will come to him and no disaster will overtake him. I mean, this is... No harm will overtake you and no disaster will come near your tent. Now, God wanted to save someone. He could have saved him quite easily. Yes. And this is a prophecy about the Messiah. So it's it's confirmed in the Bible and it's confirmed in the Quran that he'll be saved. And it's, it's quite clear, you know, Allah made it such that all men, they die once. Yes. And Isa alayhi salam, the reason he was taken away he ascended to heaven uh, without death is because he hasn't finished the second part of his mission. So the part two of his mission is yet to come. And the Christians believe this, the second coming. They believe this. And the Muslims believe this as well. And that is the reason he didn't die. But eventually he will die one day. But I find it quite fascinating that they keep on maintaining that this doctrine of crucifixion is like their main doctrine, you know? Look, look, look at this comment. comment. Let's look at this yeah. comment. What is That's that? it? The apostles and all the Christians were wrong till Muhammad voices showed up six years later? No. Basically, your New Testament was corrupted and isn't yeah. reliable source of historical information. And God came and told us what actually happened. Yeah. And, and I what, gave from oh, the Old Testament. Sorry, let me that. That. God came and told us what didn't yeah. happen. And you know the beautiful thing about the Quran and this, this part? It's not even addressing the Christians. <laughs> it's talking to the Jews. Saying what they did, and, it, and then it's just like a side swipe, not even looking, just knocks out Christianity as <laughs> like a byproduct. <laughs> exactly, I yeah. think it's amazing. Oh, <laughs> Paul, you, Paul, you, you know why they why they, they think like this is such an important to, event in history, and they have to stick to it because without this human sacrifice, none of them will be saved. Their entire salvation depends on this human sacrifice of so Jesus know. Christ, the death of a completely innocent human being okay <laughs> this is this is the level they will go to to defend uh, jesus christ doesn't matter what comes they have to well like they were given the opportunity to save jesus they wouldn't save him because then they'll be it'll be a cash 22 for them because if jesus is saved then their salvation is in jeopardy subhanallah so either way either you save jesus or you save whole of humanity take your pick what are you going to do 
Look at this comment. Why don't you read the entire Psalms? The New Testament corrupted. LOL. What a joke. Come on, the readers okay, here. Read guys. the whole thing and explain that passage. Go on. Honestly, anyone, any Christian, scholar or non-scholar, go on, read it. All right. Um, should we bring Silly Billy on? <laughs> is he? Oh wait, there. Oh, <laughs> he's back. He's back. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, there he is. And he's back. Oh, he's back. Good. I thought we lost you for a minute. What happened? Can you hear me? We can hear you, sir. What happened? Oh, I left. You left? Why'd you leave? Uh, the lie. Which, which lie? What was Jesus' name and calling no, him Barabbas? No, no, no. What was Barabbas' first name? I'm not, Why was that? I'm not worried about Barabbas. I'm talking no, no, about Jesus. What was the lie? What was the lie? You, you <laughs> called Jesus Barabbas. It was, was Jesus' first name. Come on, man. He's he not talking about Jesus Christ. No, no, He's no, talking about the that. other Jesus. His I'm name talking about Barabbas. Jesus. Barabbas. I'm talking, talking about Barabbas. I'm talking about Jesus, what was Barabbas Jesus first the name? Messiah. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. No, he so actually, actually Jesus what was of Nazareth. Barabbas' first name. Yeah, Jesus of Nazareth. And you had Jesus Barabbas. So you had two Jesuses. Yeah. Yeah? I'm talking about the Messiah. Well, I, well I'm talking about someone called Jesus who was crucified. So... You think that the okay, so that's one of the theories is that Barabbas, this guy Barabbas, is the one who replaced. Okay, no. so that's the replacement. No, no, theory. no, 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 that's just stating a fact that the rebel leader's name was Jesus Barabbas and the Romans crucified rebels. So, if history reports a man called Jesus was crucified by the Romans, so what? So are you going to take back your false allegation against Hamza that he lied? Yeah, what did I lie about? When in fact, it was you who misunderstood it. So instead of asking us to clarify things, you just made a big allegation against Hamza saying he lied. No, he was asking what Jesus' name was. No, I didn't. I no, said, you well, said he lied. What did he lie about? No, I don't care about his name. So what did I lie no, about? You said, you said Hamza lied. What did you, he lie you're about? Asking, you're asking what Jesus' name was, and then you associated him with Barabbas. Man, no, I'm asking you what Barabbas' first name was. As respect to correct himself when he has been corrected. Okay, so my understanding was is that you were associating the Messiah with that murderer. What murderer? Associating. Why well, that would we Barabbas. Do that? Well, why would we Re the rebel that? leader. Revolter. I mean, however you want to classify him. Oh, okay. So, so if you were you. associating him with him, that is a lie. Why is that associating a lie? in what sense? Because it's not true. How am I associated, with, how I, how am I associated with him? What do you mean? No, no, that was my understanding. Okay, no, so but how you did I do that? What was the association? You misunderstood. Say like that. Jesus, the well, Messiah. So saying Jesus and then associating him with Barabbas. Associating him how? In your speech. I am what Chris, way? Chris, you're lost, like a man. Jake, Come Come on, you understood it. What did I say? What did I say that associated okay, him with? It him? won't make you a smaller person. What, what did I say that associated with him? No, it was the conversation. There was an implication that you were referring to Jesus, the Messiah, as Barabbas, and it's a lie. No, I didn't. Do but that. if that's not you what you're saying, you then don't worry it. about it. No, no. All, all I was doing is telling you that Barabbas, which means son of the Father. But, but why are you bringing up him? Who cares? Because his name was Jesus. Who cares? Well, well what who his cares? Name is. Okay, okay. So if somebody called Jesus is crucified by the Romans, why not Barabbas? Because his yeah. name's Jesus, and he was a rebel leader. Right. So, and so you were talking about this concept of the theory of the crucifixion. So Jesus, no. the Messiah, is being replaced by no. this revolter. Is so no. that's the theory that you want to go. No, that's not what I'm saying. The question is: Is how did the Messiah get mistaken for someone else? That's no, the no. Question. Here's the problem you've got. I'll explain the problem you've got. We had this conversation earlier. You think the New Testament is like historical records. You think it's recorded history. Okay, so you now think, you, you are think, no longer... Well, here's the problem, Christian, Christian, Christian. Here's the problem with your premise. You believe that the New Testament is a reliable source of information of what happened. Yeah, and you think anything that goes against what the New Testament says is going against history. And your problem is that, that you think that your source material is reliable. And, so and we're here... 
Of are you saying today. again? And so we're we back to the question today of: Are there yes, external no. references from the Bible? Who Which back external it references? Up and they Which exist. external references? Are you telling me you don't know? We're back. Not, we're back like not, at the beginning. They're not independent of the New Testament. They're dependent on it. Which, re which external references? Are you talking about Tacitus? Are you talking about Josephus? Okay, so they do exist. What do they say? You're just you're acknowledging that they exist. Acknowledging Chris, what exists. It seems like it seems Ta like you're you saying Tacitus. You're saying uh, Christian. Let me, let me tell you what I think is happening. I think you came here, but you don't have the references off the top of your head. Is that correct? I am. At, so the question is asked, and I'm asking if you know. And Hamza has agreed that they exist. Christian, can I just make yeah, some well, it, we're, we're sitting here. And with now you people. agree that they exist. We're Christian, sitting Christian. here with a thousand and people. So, and so, and any so it, it Christian, comes Christian. across as y'all being very disingenuous. Christian, can you just hear me out? Okay. No. Do you understand that concept? All right, Christian, let me explain something learn, to you. Learn to One smile sometimes and stop you. saying disingenuous, liar. You know, you, you don't look very civilized. You're not helping Doesn't you. No matter how civilized you might be dressed. So here's the thing, Christian. Just one second, right? We've got another channel called EF Tower. All right. Well, for the past two years, we're doing historicity streams of the New Testament, going through every single book of the New Testament. Right. Our first stream, which was three hours long, was challenging the historicity of the claims of crucifixion outside of the New Testament. So we went into the claim of Josephus. We went into the claims of Tacitus and we took it apart. Yeah. So the people at home know that we know Tacitus and Josephus because we took it apart completely. And you're free to go look at the stream and challenge anything we say there. Because even in those streams, we invite Christians to come on. And people like Samuel Green came on and, well, Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Jason Burns came on. And Jonathan McClatchy came on. So we had Christian scholarship coming on to try and challenge what we're saying. And they could not. All right. So, you, no, it's not the first time I've heard the term Josephus. I mean, for me, Josephus is evidence. Right. Well, listen, you know what Josephus does for me? You know his letter, you know his book about the crucifixion, uh, where he talks about the crucifixion and such? The point is... No, listen to the point, Christian. Christian, do you know what Josephus does? It's an evidence against Eusebius. It's an evidence against the guy who wrote church histories to, to show that he corrupted the letter of Josephus. Evidentially, with proof, with empirically proven. So... Okay, but, so you mentioned know, a guy named Cassius, The letters correct? of Josephus, we know the letters of Josephus were doctored by church fathers. We know that. As a fact, you mentioned and, and so the problem you've got now is bringing Josephus as a witness is going to become a hostile witness because he's going to demonstrate how your whole foundations of your Christianity, all the church fathers and all this, you know, your um, papyruses and origins and all this are going to collapse under scrutiny when you realize the guy who wrote church history, Eusebius, doctored and corrupted the letter of Josephus intentionally okay. so let's go ahead and move on to the next part of this so you're not willing to accept the bible all right no. so the only thing you're willing to accept is the quran is that right. accurate yes okay so that's now where i have to try and argue from is the is the concept behind it does that make sense you're not willing to accept anything no, no, else hold on hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. i don't think i don't think you 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 understood when you rely on historic evidence and your historic evidence turns out to be doctored, for example, do you know when Josephus and Tacitus existed? Josephus and Tacitus both were born after the crucifixion. Born. So I'm not saying they were born after the crucifixion. They were literally born after the crucifixion. Like so Josephus was Muhammad. Was year, wait, wait, listen to me first. In the year 37, he was born. When was and, Muhammad and born? Tacitus, wait a minute. Tacitus, when, this is the argument we're making. Listen, when was Muhammad born? Finish, I will answer your question. Don't worry. When was Muhammad okay, calm born? Calm down. Calm down. Tacitus when was, Muhammad was born, born in the year 56. Christian, please, you stop asking Tacitus that. Tacitus was question. born in the year 37. It's the, so neither it, of his them argument is based accounts. upon the concept of someone earlier, being... Provide you muted, you muted a at the moment, single Christian. eyewitness account, either from the Bible or from historic evidence. So far, you have zero evidence for that. So don't tell me the only thing you will now come to is because uh, the Quran, because we reject the other. Do you know why we reject the others? Because you have no credible evidence for the crucifixion from either history, an eyewitness account, either from history or even from your Bible. According to your Bible, all the disciples left 
The only one present there was Mary Magdalene, and sorry, Mary the mother and the other Mary. So you don't have evidence of eyewitness account from the Bible or even from history. Now, what is the other option you have left? According to you, only the Quran, I guess. Or if you got something else, bring it forward. Right, you're unmuted now. Yeah. Okay. But didn't Muhammad accept the gospel? No. Is that your next question based on the crucifixion? Why, why, what are you doing, Christian? Well, I, the only thing I'm allowed to use, according to your argument and premise, is the Quran. No. no we let you use no. the other evidences, but you yes. failed. Oh, okay, here's an idea for you. Here's an idea for you, right? Imagine we're atheists. Right? So does the Quran the tell you to accept the, the, the Torah he and the gospel? He doesn't awesome. listen. Look, 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 look. I have to mute you again. Just listen to what's being asked of you, right? Just imagine we're not Muslims, right? And you're trying to convince us why you believe in the crucifixion, the resurrection, and all the things Jesus taught, yeah? The Quran's not going to help you in your beliefs, yeah? We're interested in what you believe to be true. Just because we demonstrate that what you believe is true is not true doesn't make Islam true either. The point here is this. We're trying to question you on what you believe. Yeah? Now, bring in the Quran, bring in when was Muhammad peace of Muslim born and all this is not going to help you. You're supposed to come to us and say, well, look, I believe the Bible. This is what you should be saying as a Christian. You should be shouting this to the rooftops. I'm a Christian. I believe the Bible is the word of God. I believe it's eyewitness testimony of the lives and times of Jesus Christ and the witness of his miracles, explanation of his parables and his mission. That's what you should be talking about. You should be bringing the Bible as your evidence. It should be evidence number one. And then we'll take that apart. But you need to bring it. You're not even bringing it. You're hiding the Bible behind your back. I don't understand. Right, go on, you're on mute. Okay, so did Muhammad believe in the Torah? Muhammad believed the Torah was revealed to Moses. Okay, did he use it in judgment? No. That's a lie. Okay. Uh, or you don't know. That's a lie. Prove well, okay, it. Okay, what's the lie? Why did Muhammad okay, use the Torah? Well, you can look it up in, a, in one of the sun. No, no, you're did the one. Not, no, 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 no. Did he right? not so use the, the Torah in and judgment? The Torah. What's the lie? Did he use the Torah in judgment? No, you made the claim that Muhammad used the Torah. Where's the evidence for that? In your sunnahs. Show me. In a hadith. All right. Show All right. me the hadith. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. So you I, have don't, to I don't even know what you're saying now. Nothing from but this history, is something that I would expect one. that y'all would know. Well, we know that Allah says in the Quran that the Torah was corrupted. In Give chapter me a 2, moment. verse number 79, I gave you the reference. Check it out. Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 79. Give me a moment. I have to go find it now. Yeah, keep Googling. Remember, he said, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used the Torah. Correct. To do what? Judgment. <laughs> Judgment of what? Stoning a Jewish woman. Oh, I see. Okay, go on. Oh, I know so the, you do I know, know that of, one. Wait, wait, I know the context of that. So you do know that one. I do know what Christian Christian. Do you know what was the question you, asked? You think you're presenting anything that we've not heard before? <laughs> you don't. You don't even know who <laughs> asked the question. It, it seems as though, as it I was putting it out there, that he used it in judgment, and there was this. When did he do that? And I mentioned it, and now you know it. No, no, wait, wait, wait. You said Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used the Torah just like that. You didn't give any. No, context. I said in judgment. You yeah, asked you, me, but how, even and I told you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You did not specify the judgment. You just said judgment. What? And you told me he did it. That's what he you said. Judgment. Did. You so said he did. judgment. Judgment can be many things. It could be the entire jurisprudence, the entire fiqh in Islam. So be specific. When, you, when the Jewish people asked him what should be the punishment for adultery, he pointed them back to what is in your Torah, the one in your hand. So he, he did not use it. it. He did not say this is now going to be the judgment for all yeah. of mankind. Yeah, he didn't authenticate it. He so simply do not said, lie. simply like the told them what was saying, in their own lie. book. You're the one lying when no, you're he, saying right. that Muhammad so used, the, it. used the Torah for judgment, as if you're saying all of mankind. Do not lie. Christian, oh, back at what you. Was, what did I lie? The medicine that you... <laughs> that what you, did you I say that was a lie? Okay, so what, what is the point you were trying to make? If Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pointed the Jews... What did I say that was a lie? You said he used it for judgment. He did. Did you specify the judgment? 
Is it true? What is true? That he used it in judgment. What judgment? Why are you dancing around this? Well, you're the one who was jumping around. Did he it use it in judgment? Without any evidence? Not for Muslims. No, he didn't. No, do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? So he supported it. Do you know what? No, he didn't support it. He told the Jews what he used it. 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 He pointed them back to their. He told them what was in their own book. Do you know what this indicates, Christian? Just so you understand. Because you seem to misread everything you're, yeah. you're, you're coming out with. Okay. So what do you mean, Mr. Muhammad? Did he or did oh, okay, he listen. not do that? Listen, this is an indication of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu telling the Jews to live by their laws and to judge by their laws. Yeah? This so is, he this, agrees with so those this laws. Is, this is opposite to the idea that the no, Muslim... Isn't, one second, Christian. Yeah? Isn't that what the Quran says? That he supports it? That it you know, that is not like doesn't. saying... That is like saying it in the Ten Commandments, the it says, wait, wait, it is like saying in the Ten Commandments, it says, do not lie. And then when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, do not lie, yes, you will say, Chapter oh, hold three, on, he verse that three. from the Torah. The Quran, it is he put 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 down down effectively what you're saying. Book, let's just put something in let's just, before, listen. And he sent down the law of Moses Christian, and Christian. the gospel. Christian. Of Christian. Jesus. Read Christian. chapter 2, verse 79, and then you come and tell me if Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam accepted the Torah to be credible. Okay? Sorry, Don't what? come with half truth, half knowledge. I'm just you telling you what really your sources stupid say. If you keep doing that. And you have done this several times now. You had no I clue about the history. You, you had no say. clue about uh, Tacitus or I about Josephus. You, you come what your and jump say. around okay, saying, oh, the crucifixion is true. And then when you get found out, you move on. You move on to another topic. You do I not even have the courtesy to say you were wrong when you blamed and when you made allegation against Hamza that he lied. When it was in fact you, you had some comprehension issues, so you didn't understand what he was saying. What's that? Instead so of asking us to clarify what it is, you jumped premises. to the conclusion he lied. Hashim, let me just correct Christian on some premises. The audacity. Do you believe when the Quran says in Jeel, it's talking about the Gospels? So what does it mean? No, no. Do you believe it means that? You're the Muslim. What does it mean? No, no. Oh, for God's sake. Do, I'm asking you about your beliefs. Do you have beliefs? And what you're, you think? you're telling me about your Quran. What does it what I'm is telling it? you. What is you were just trying to I'm tell I'm asking us. you a very simple question. If you don't according answer the question. To the, according Christian, to this, Christian. it says the gospel. What I'm is that? A very simple question to you, Christian. Yeah. Do you believe? You so is it clear? Do you believe because you keep quoting the Quran, you think you're quoting the hadith, right? So I you, don't mind. You told me the only thing you're willing to accept is Christian, the Quran. Christian. No, he didn't say that. Yeah, but the pro is the problem. You said that he didn't say What's, that. Ashim, so Ashim, one second, bro, please. Okay, so Christian, what are you willing to accept problem? as here's an authority? The, the Quran and what else? Okay, Christian, can I just explain something to you? Right. You are no authority to tell us what the Quran says because you don't understand it. Right? Simple. And I'm proving that right now. So I, I'm going to demonstrate it right now. Uh, when the Quran okay, so says let's go back Jeel, to the crucifixion then. When the Quran... You're telling, tell me what it means when he... No, I'm not going to tell you. No. Gets, it appears as no, though... No, I'm not going to tell Jesus you nothing. died or I'm didn't die or me. died and he didn't explain it to me. Christian, I'm not going to explain it to you. All right? I'm gonna make you're it very not going to explain you. it to me. I'm going to demonstrate right now that you're in no position to try to quote the Quran as if you understand it. Okay. You told me that I'm that's demonstrate what it you right are now. willing to accept. Right. I'm just going to well, mute you a second. You said that. Stop I'm lying. I'm going to mute you a second. You made that point. Right. I'm going to mute you a second. I'm going to repeat my question. Right. Yeah. And here's my question. Do you believe when the Quran says Injil, it's referring to the gospels found in your New Testament? Do you believe that? Yes or no? It's a very simple question. Do you believe when the Quran refers to the gospel of Jesus, it was it's referring to the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John? Is that what you believe? You're unmuted. What does it refer to? I'm asking you. Well, I'm asking you as a Muslim. No, I'm asking you to test. I'm asking you. Because you seem to quote with authority yeah. from the Quran. You're the Muslim. Well, I'm demonstrating that you don't understand the Quran if you think that. And I'm that. asking you, what does it refer to? Do you, do you believe that? What does it refer to? Think of that. Do you okay. believe that? Let me re-ask the question different. What does it refer to? You're not re-asking the question. not the gospel. Why would you re-ask me the question I'm asking you? 
Because you're the one who's supposed to know it. Is that no, the I know answer? It. So a, you I don't know, know it. it. I know the answer. I want to know if okay, you so know the answer. Okay, so what is it? I, I know. I want to know if you know it, though. Do you know the answer? What is it? No, do you know the answer? What is it, Hans? Do you know the answer? What is it? Do you know the answer? No, you don't know the answer. Tell me what the Gospels are, and that or the Injil. What I'm is asking the Injil? You very simple it's questions. not the Gospels. Oh my giddy aunt! Right? Do you believe the Injil is referring to the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? What is it referring to? If not, would you believe it is or not? He doesn't know the answer, and that's why he's I know he doesn't. No, no, he does know the answer. He knows he's wrong. Well, you're asking me a question him. about the Quran, yes. right? Yes. And so let's okay. No, so let's go. Let me. So let's go. You're you are referring to that, or you're not referring. Okay, let's go with you're not referring to that. It's not referring to the gospel. Then what is it referring no, to? No, no. Do you believe it's referring to the gospel? Yeah, do you know it? Do you know? I it? don't believe in the Quran. <laughs> Right. What does that right. have to do with so anything? When you're asking me what do I believe it means, I'm asking you what does it mean? So you don't understand the Quran. You accept you don't understand the Quran then? I, I No, no. What I'm saying is I don't believe it. I think it's, you understand I think it? it has contradictions in it. All right. Do you understand the Quran? What do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, when it says something, do you understand what it's saying? Well, according to the Quran, it's supposed to be clear. And so if it's true, then I should be able to understand it. Again, you've misunderstood. Just by reading it, right? So, so this is just another demonstration. You've misunderstood the Quran? No, because I think the counter argument is that is usually used is that it's in Arabic, so you can't understand it unless you know Arabic. No? Not no, so. that's not what it is. So if it's in no. English, I can understand it. So in, in English, you can understand it, yes. Okay. If that's the case, then Sure. Okay, According but, to the Quran, right, if so you it's true, the then Quran, I understand it because it's easy to understand. Oh, okay, okay. So when the Quran According to the Quran. To the, okay. So when the Quran refers to the Injil, what's it talking about? Well, it must be referring to the Gospels then because that would be the why most... Must, why uh, must it be? Why must Because it be? that's what would make sense. What? It would make sense. Okay, so you believe... it says Injil or Gospel, when it is referring to that, that is yours translation. When I say your translation, I mean the Muslim translation. It says the gospel. What is the gospel? What is the, the gospel? only thing that makes sense is the gospel, what the gospel? good news. Yeah, but if you, if you actually read the Quran, you would know the answer. If you actually read the Bible, you'd know the answer. <laughs> what was Jesus preaching in Galilee? Can we get back to the main question here? No, 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 no. Actually, actually, question. It's about Christ. He doesn't understand the Quran. Right. So far, he hasn't no. demonstrated it either. No, 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 no. no. We're going to show him. Or even from. No, no, no. We're going to demonstrate. Quran, he doesn't so know his Bible or Quran. But yeah. anyway, but let's go with the Bible. What was Jesus preaching in Gallery? No, no, but you don't accept the Bible. What? So no, we're this talking is what you... about the Quran now. Oh, okay. What do you so think? So I, I have to stick with you, the Quran. You're a Christian. Do you accept the Bible? But you don't accept it. Do so how am I Bible? supposed to have this conversation with you? Do you accept yes. the Bible? So it's the the pre yes the, the premise of, the premise of the Bible the important point and one that we're discussing is Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. Okay, that is the you. main point and drive of this the Bible's true and extremely important. Christian, and do you the, believe the Bible's true? Yes. Right. So, what was Jesus preaching in Galilee? What does that have to do with his crucifixion and resurrection? Well, well no, we were back to no, the topic. Like it, well, no, what was it? No, no, no. Can you talk about the gospel of Jesus here? So, let, let's just deal with this. So, what was Jesus teaching no, in Galilee? No, 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 no. Let's not jump around. The, so we're not jumping around. We're on the same topic. And, and the Quran. Christian. I'm demonstrating with your Bible that Jesus. When it, I'm demonstrating with your Bible what the Quran says about the Injil is not the Gospels. I'm demonstrating it, mate. Then what is it if not the Gospels? It's, what was, what, it's exactly the same thing that Jesus was preaching in Galilee. The Injilian, the good news. The and Injil. what is the good news? Well, it's not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Was Jesus walking around? No, preaching? the good. No, one the second, good news is, is salvation in Christian. Jesus Christ. Christian. Who, from the grace of God Almighty, Christian, that's not what Jesus. His is death for the sins of the world, no? and his resurrection, no? the life, and he that's is not what Jesus indeed the King of no, 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 no
That's not what Jesus That's taught. That's the good news. No, 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 no. That's not what Jesus taught. That's the good Who news. Who did Jesus teach that to? That he was, that, you mean his disciples? Yeah, who did he teach it to? This thing you've just said, this doctrine of Christianity, who did he teach this to? Where have you got this information from that that's the good news? Who told you that? No, the Bible, but if you're not going to no, accept no, no, right, the right, Bible. Right. So, so the point here is this. So what's your evidence that Jesus taught what you just said? Right. And so, the, and so this is the belief claim where you're saying you believe the Quran. No. I believe the Bible. Right, and so right. if I believe the Bible, that's where we have. So this convince system. us why the Bible's reliable then as an evidence that you're right. bringing. So convince me that the Quran is reliable. That's no, no, the no, same no, 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 And what I'm finding in the Quran is that the there is a whole Christian. bunch it's of misconception or, or contradictions in the Quran. Okay, Chris, Quran you said the good news. Your beliefs. Hamza, Hamza wants to. It does Chris, my beliefs because it Chris, shows let's, me let's that it's all calm down. Listen, Chris, you said the good news is the crucifixion and the resurrection. Am I right? Salvation through in Jesus yeah. Christ. Yes. Where did Jesus say that in the Bible? That he was going to die? No, you said that's a good news. Show me where Jesus says that's a good news. Well, you can find in the Bible. No, no, don't tell me to find it. You're the one who made the claim. So show it, show me from the Bible. Because now, look, you're saying you don't believe in the Quran, okay? So now you're saying you believe in the Bible, which is obvious because you're a Christian. So right. you made a claim that the good news, the entire purpose of this good news, the Gospels, is that the crucifixion and the resurrection, and you're claiming Jesus supposedly had said that. Show me where. Well, you can find it throughout. No, no, don't tell me to find it. You're the one who made the claim. Onus is on I'm you. Just, no, I'm, you, you is in general. If no, this so is the entire see, argument that you had and you don't even know where that is in the Bible, then there's a no, lot it, more it, question it's, marks it's throughout the in your Bible. case than I had assumed. No, so it's throughout it? the Bible. When you read it, throughout that's the Bible. Now show me one place then. It should be very easy, right? If it's throughout the Bible. For example, if you ask me the oneness of Allah in the Quran, it's throughout the Quran. I can show you in several places. So you show me your good news in your Bible, even one place. Go on. The good news of Jesus Christ? You no, mean the good news that the salvation, the salvation that you have is based on your crucifixion and resurrection, and Jesus is supposed to have said this. Right. So it's he's dying for the sins of the world. Show me why Jesus said that. Don't give me a narrative from your script. Okay. So he okay. So he tells them that he's going to go to be sacrificed. Show me where. <sighs> okay. Uh, this was a shy of relief or desperation. I don't know which one. Should we bring another Christian on to help him? Oh uh, yeah, you can get. Should we bring the Christian on to help you? <laughs> you brought Shamir in. <laughs> I don't know. I don't Should know. I bring the <laughs> Um, I'm not going to be brother Shabir, Sheikh Shabir. How are you doing, brother? Where did Jesus? Where did the Black Jesus go? We can't hear you, Shabir. Bhai, we can't hear you. No. Hi, you, Shabir. Assalamu alaikum. Well, you're right. Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Good to see you. I thought you said you're going to bring a Christian to help him. You brought two more Muslims. <laughs> yeah, Jack, Black Jesus disappeared. I don't know Is where he went. This part of the good news. <laughs> Who just disappeared now? Oh, oh Shabir. Uh, Shabir, I think okay. he's had an issue with the audio. Okay. Just, so just to bring you up to speed, have you been watching, uh, bro? Yeah, I have. That's actually why oh. I decided to jump on, because there's like a lot going on. I was supposed to just be a spectator. I was in bed, and like, my hair is all <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. You think you're in you think, come on, let me go and jump on. So, so he's no, no, in the now? We're waiting for Christian <laughs> to give us uh, um, in jail. So Chris is looking for the good news from Jesus where he says that my crucifixion resurrection is a good news for you or something along that line. Uh, so if, you, if, you read, if you read John 17... Yeah, John 17, 1 to 4. In verse 4, he says that I have completed my works. This was before the crucifixion. And then he's asking God for, to give him the glory. Yes. So this was supposed to be given to him after he has completed all works. So if, if Jesus completed all works before the crucifixion, the crucifixion cannot be one of the works he was 
basically, um, I don't know, pointed to have completed? You have a misunderstanding. Well, explain it then, if I have a misunderstanding. So far from this stream, I've realized that you are the one who misunderstood many things. And even after correcting you, you seem to be holding on to those misunderstandings. Just a quick one. Muslims, can you please stop joining the stream? This is not for Muslims, yeah? Yeah. Just quickly, in the private chat, I put a link uh, to uh, an academic paper that shows uh, about CBS, you know, okay. doctoring Josephus's work on a point that you uh, yeah, brought earlier. Like Chris got something? Yeah, so this is a Mark chapter 8, verse 31. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, that he must be killed and after three days rise again. There you go. Where does it say it's good news? Where does it say salvation is based on that? What, you mean the faith, faith in Jesus Christ? No, you said the good news was the salvation based on the crucifixion and resurrection. And this was a good right. news. Where did Jesus ever claim this? No, that is the good news. No, that's your claim. And he, that's not and Jesus he claim. foretold his death Foretelling and his, his resurrection. Death. Hold on. Did he say for his death was going to be good news? Did he say that? No, he it didn't say that. It is good news for mankind to that he took the yeah, that's your he claim. took the that's sin a onto claim. him. Yes, that that's is not Jesus' claim. claim. That's what I've been telling you all sin. along. That Jesus did not make such a claim is a claim made by Christians. Because for you, the only way you can be saved is by the human sacrifice of a completely innocent man, Jesus no, Christ. No, God. Oh, so death of God. Okay, that makes it even better, isn't it? Seriously? Yes, that does so make it better. Who died on the cross, God or man? What do you mean by died? Jesus died on the which, cross. Which part of this simple English you don't understand? Who died on the cross? Was it God or was it man? It was Jesus who is was God. Was it God or was it man? He is God. Can God die? His spirit or the body? The Either. body can die, person. yes. You're talking about God? God the body, the the body can die. die. The body can die. Okay, was the body God? No, Jesus was God. No, you said the body died. He was had body... a body. The body can die. Yeah. Was the body God? Because when I asked you the question, who died on the cross, you said God. Was the body yes. of Jesus Christ God? It was his body. And was he it is God? God. Was yes, the body of Jesus Christ God? It was part of God in the sense of him being on the earth. Yes. Wow, I didn't know God had a part. Oh, human. really? Does Allah have parts? No, no. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, let's go ahead and go with it. You no, brought no, no, it up. The question Does is, Allah have hold parts? on, hold on. Don't get Does triggered. He have a shin? Don't get triggered. Allah never... Does he have a shin? Does he have a shin? So don't tell me about parts. Does he have a shin? So does that your Allah question? have parts? Remember when, remember when Mother does uh, Allah when have asked parts? you the question, you, you said it's not relevant it. to this you topic. You brought it up. You brought it up because you said God you died on the cross. Said parts. Does he have a Christian. shin? Wait, wait. Who Christian. said parts? I asked you, is the flesh part of God? I didn't bring up parts. I said, is the flesh of Jesus Christ part of God? He was God. I think you really have comprehension issues, really. Seriously, uh, you do. Uh, Hashim, well, look, okay, so look, maybe if I explain. So Jesus Christ was God. He died on the cross. The body was dead, but he okay. got resurrected, so he's alive. Okay, so, so, that's the question. Hamza, wait a minute. Let me, let me just right? take it a step back so you understand yeah, what, I'm trying to, what, what I'm trying to get here. God, we know, at least the Muslims know, I don't know about you as a Christian, because most Christians I speak to claim that God doesn't die. Do you believe you that mean God spirit? dies? You're right. His spirit is not What do you mean dead? his spirit? God, God, Almighty, God the Father, does he ever die? No. Good. Does God the Son die? Yes. So who is immortal from the two? They are both immortal. No, you they said one God. dies. No. The meaning of immortal right, means right, no, not no, no, subject no, no, to death. No, no th so this is that misconception where people start asking about Trinity and that sort of thing. So maybe if I explain it. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. Carry on. Okay. I'm listening. Yeah, you're okay with that. Do you agree? No, I'm listening to you. Carry on. Do what you is the agree? Point you're to make? I Do believe you agree? that Jesus Christ is a creation of God. 
Do you believe he is the word of God? He's the word meaning he's created by the command of God, yes. So in the Quran it says that he's the word of God, correct? He's the word no. from God. Kalimatum min. We've already established you can't quote okay. from the Quran. You don't understand. Can you answer the question in instead of going to irrelevant points again? Once again, God. if God doesn't die and Jesus died, what does that tell you? If God the Father no, never dies, the Spirit didn't die. Does your spirit die? It can. It can. Yes, it can be destroyed. So you're saying the you're saying a believer's spirit will die? Seriously? No, that is not what I'm saying. I'm I saying asked that you, if your spirit, spirit remember, I didn't say anybody else. Die. I asked if your spirit can die. Can your spirit yes, die? Yes, it can die. Okay, so you as a believer, your spirit will die, right? The spirit can be destroyed. Of the believer? The spirit can be destroyed. Of the believer? Let, let's just do something. Whoever, anyone, anyone's spirit uh, let's can just be destroyed. If the believer's spirit is going to die, then you're not going to heaven. I think... Can you I just say this? this believer, that's the only be way your spirit destroyed. will die. Why is that difficult for you uh, to oh, understand? Okay. You don't understand even the simple nuances of this conversation. I'm trying to tell you that God is immortal. If you die, yes. what is death? What is the meaning? How do you define death? Wait, you're talking about God being immortal? Yes, and Jesus was immortal. I'm asking you, yes. how do you define death? How do I define immortality? No, how do you define death? Okay, maybe I don't understand what you're asking me. How do yeah, I, I don't define think you, I think, what? Like I said, you have comprehension issues. So let me... Right, let me I don't you. understand what you're asking me. No, no, look, which part you don't understand? The term death? You're asking me to define something. What are you asking me to define? The term death. death. <laughs> death. How much more clear can I get? Because T-H-A-T? Death. No, death. death. To oh, die. death. Okay. Oh, everyone understood except you. Yeah. Wow. Well, you yeah, I know. I thought you were asking me to define. You know, you know, everyone yeah. understood except you. I was you. like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Okay. So, death, how do you define it? Uh, okay. So, but right, we have two things that we're talking about here the body and the spirit. Yeah. Okay. What happens during death to those two? The lack of life. Okay. The body can die. That's the first death. <laughs> There okay. is a second death, and that can be for the spirit. No, we are not talking about the second death. I'm talking about the first death. Okay, so you're talking about the body. Yes. yes. Every so, single person you can expect to die. Okay, including Jesus, right? Jesus' body did die. Good. Yes. Thank you very much. So just Only like you, body? Jesus, is, well, Jesus like Jay, can die. Very good, very good. Because death, correct me if I'm wrong, death means to separate the soul from the body. So when your soul separates from your body, then you experience death. Did Jesus experience that? Yes, the spirit Good. left so the Jesus, body. Yes. Jesus, and like he said you, so. And he gave yeah, up the spirit. Yeah, you can find I, that. I'm in not the disagreeing body. with you. I'm, I'm agreeing okay. with you. So Good. Jesus experienced the first death. Do you agree? Yes. Good. You will experience the first death. Am I right? I have every expectation. Everyone on this panel will experience the first death. Every one experiences death. This first death, which is separating the soul from the body, they will experience this. Does the father experience this? God the father, does he experience this? He, no, he does not. He's he does a not experience this, right? No, he is a now, spirit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That God is the, the reason. God the father is a spirit. Yeah, hold on. Even, even angels die. Do you know that? I'm not angels worried about spirit. that. They, they die as well. The father is a spirit. You're claiming that. Where are you getting that from? I'm claiming what? Angels dying? Yes. Oh, where, where does it say angels are immortal? And if they're a spirit, they can die. It, you could consider no, that. No, no, no. That is your misunderstanding. Yeah. I'll tell you where I'm getting that from, your Bible. If you read your Bible. It, hold on. I'm, I'm educating you here because you're saying you don't know. So let me where? educate you on that. Give me the reference. In your Bible, the reference is First Timothy okay. chapter 6. Verse 16, where it says, He alone is immortal, who lives in an approachable light, whom no man has seen or can see. First, Timothy, What does that have to do with angels? Well, it says the only one who is immortal is God the Father, which excludes even Jesus Christ, which excludes the angels, which excludes everyone. No, because Je you don't under Jesus is God. Right. Can I just well, stop? Died, he experiences I should, I should. death. 
Passion. Let's just do something. That means point. he's mortal. No, End right. You, you're trying to say that Jesus will die. His spirit. No, no he's God. No, his spirit's not going to die. I think Jesus is mortal. Hashim, he's not Hashim. immortal, unlike God. He is Hashim. immortal. Okay, God. He's God. Just one second. Just one second. Okay, Whatever. let's just do something at this point, I, Christian. I, I made my point here. <laughs> because what seems to be happening now, we're, we're looking at the nature of Jesus. Was he God? Was he man? Was he fully God? Was he fully man? Yeah? So what, So we're talking about the incarnation now, yeah? Of what, what was the nature of Jesus? How many bodies? How many natures? Yeah? Did he have, how many bodies did Jesus have? One body, yeah? Uh, why, uh, why is this relevant? We, we got to talk about the nature well, of Jesus, and so it, how would you not know? That's a simple question. He doesn't know why is this relevant. Jake, take over on this one. Take over on this yeah, one man. because you you're talking about what died on the cross. He was talking to you before about what died on the right. cross. So what died on the, the cross? The body died. Yes, only the body. Correct. So not the spirit. Correct. Did Jesus have a human spirit? No, God. He is God. So the only element of humanity he had was a human body. That's it. I, I actually don't know what you mean by that. Did Jesus Christ have a human soul? No, he's God. Okay, so he only had a human body. And it was the spirit, the second person of the Trinity, which indwelt the human body, correct? Jesus, the, he is the word of God. He became flesh. Yes. And you just said right. that he didn't have a human soul. He had a human body, which means the, the word, which was spirit, indwelt in a human body, correct? The word of God became flesh. Yeah. And I'm telling you what it means. And he can't, he, right. The word will not die, cannot die. Yeah, but you okay? Correct. Let's okay. So let's be clear. The only thing human about him was his body. Correct. Well, I, I don't know what you mean by anything in reference to humanity. Because I, I asked I don't you if he had a human soul, about. and you said no. Right. He, right. He, okay. He, he's God. Do you know that's heresy? No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's no, a it's poly, not. It's called Apollinarianism. It's a heresy. I don't care what you call it. No, it's not. Uh, is it the Christians is what they call it, not not Muslims? It well, is it's a heresy. Not. No, it's not. Okay, Look it up. so you, Look you it want up. me to you want me to put it on the screen for you? Right. So this is where I was discussing with Hamza. Well, Hamza has someone who was telling me that if I have someone who is my authority, claiming that it is some scholar or something. No, that's wrong. That is not my authority. My authority is Jesus Christ. All right. That is my authority. So when you, you're trying to say there's someone out there or a group of people that say something that is false, it's wrong, and you say okay, that what, and what church, they're saying which, it and you have to accept it. No, I which, don't. It's what wrong. Church, what church do you belong to, Christian? Christ's church, as in Jesus Christ, as in the Messiah. Okay. As in so, Christendom. Yeah. That is the church <laughs> I belong to. Okay. Well, but the, so, the thing is... Sorry, it's it's because like you say, you know, your authority is Jesus, but then you say right. Jesus didn't did not have a human soul. Now, since your authority is Jesus, where does Jesus tell you that he did not have a human soul in order for you to proclaim it as truth, as an authority from Jesus? Good, good question. You mean from the Father? No, from no, no, Jesus. No, no. You said Jesus was your authority. So correct because you claimed. Well, right, okay. Yeah, but he's a different person, so I, you can't say, well, follow okay. you know. Christian, just hear me out, hear me out. The, the I think the problem is, is you, that you, we're you talking past each other because you don't understand what I'm saying when I'm saying that he's God. Because you're yeah, saying Christian. he's not no, God. I'm saying, saying he is God. No, he just asked you a simple question. You said Jesus. I, I agree, no, I agree right. with what you're, you're saying. You're, you're claiming he's – it's the question. Yeah. You're, you're, you're basically uh, – okay. he's so, – yeah, um, I think there's a delay going on here. Guys. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. So basically, his question is a very simple one. Who told you, or where did Jesus tell you he doesn't have a human soul? Well, no, no. It's it's the claim of him being God. It's him being God, so he is God. So yeah, he but he's also have a man. Human soul. But he's also he's man. But he's also man. So you're saying he's not fully man. 
Because he didn't have a human soul. He just had yeah. a human body. If you, if you read Acts 2.22, yeah, it says he was a man yeah. accredited by God. So the Bible says that he's a man. And you're saying he's not a man because he doesn't have a human soul. A no. man who doesn't have a human soul cannot be human. Yeah. So you agree he's God. Our Christian, no, you're the you, one, you believe you're he was fully man. You just said he can't you said be the Bible he's, God. Right, he's God. Now you're going Christian. against the Bible. The Christian. Bible says he's a man. Yeah. Yes. He you, was believe a, he was, no, no. you believe he was fully man. You believe he was he, fully man. I believe he was God. Do you believe he, he was the so word of God, God and, and not right. man at all? Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is, so we're going to be talking past each other if I am not able to explain to you. Christian, it's a simple Jesus. question. Do you believe he was fully man, yes or no? I, he was God. We heard that, but was he fully man also? He came in with, he became flesh. He is the word of God that became flesh. Was he fully man or part man? The, the flesh was man. Yeah, but was he fully man? No, he's God. <laughs> so you don't believe he was actually fully man? The flesh was man. Christian, traditional okay, Christianity what teaches what he was fully man. Okay, no, maybe Christian, you can explain, let me, let me why explain it. Yeah, I'll explain it to you. I'll, I'll, expl I'll tell you why you're struggling, because you're a heretic. Let me explain it to you. Okay. No. Traditional Christianity no, teaches. No, no, I, no. Traditional no, Christianity I'm not gonna listen. teaches. Traditional yeah, traditional he's whatever. fully God and fully man. You have part God, part man. That's the what you're flesh teaching. was man. Yeah, and you said that he didn't have a human soul. He's God. Why would he okay. have? Okay. So let me ask you this: Does the, does God's spirit does God's spirit experience emotions? Pain. Does he get? Does he get yes. sad? Is he get yes. sad one day yes. and then he's happy the next no, day? No. And so then he's... there's a piece of scripture that says not to grieve the spirit. So yes. No. Does God's spirit Himself? Yes. So the Father gets happy one day and then the next day he's sad. No, no, no. What I'm saying is he ex can experience or does experience the like emotions. So he oh. so he changes. He can change from being happy to sad. So God changes. No, no, you're taking that out of context. God How? does not change in the sense he's always God. He is God. He does. But he's change. changing from being happy to sad. Right. He can experience. He can experience being happy or glad, and he can experience being sad. Yes. Do you believe Jesus was all holy? Oh, okay. Well, uh, he, he. So he knew what the Father spoke to him. Yes. Because he is the Word of God. No, no. Was Jesus all knowing? He knew what the Father spoke because he is the Word of God. He dodges every question, man. It's just no, I, I'm answering the question. Oh, no, 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 what's the oh, okay, okay, I'm going to make it easy. Um, <laughs> is God all-knowing? Yes, the Father is all-knowing. No, is God all-knowing? The Father is all-knowing. Is the Son all-knowing? Is the Son all-knowing? The, the Son knows what the Father spoke. He is the Word of God. So oh. if the father didn't speak something, then the son won't know it. If, if the if he so if the word of God has not been spoken, then he's not going to, he's not right. going to so tell you what father, that is. Okay. So if the father is withhold knowledge from the son, then the son won't know it. No, this the, he's the word of God. If the father has not spoken it, he's not going to speak it. Right. He's so the he word of it. God. Right. So, so he wouldn't know it then. It had it would not have been revealed. So he wouldn't know it then. He wouldn't know it. Right. It would not have been revealed. So right. The word of it. God would not be spoken if it, the father did not speak it. Right. So, so, he, so, would so, not so, he, so he wouldn't know it then. The the know what? What Whatever he hasn't the father revealed, to, revealed to him. The son. He would he would not speak what the father did not tell him to speak. Right, so he wouldn't have the knowledge of the Father then, would he? He would have the knowledge that was spoken to him by the Father because he is the Word of God. Right, so the knowledge wasn't spoken. No. Okay, so the we knowledge just, we're going to we're going to continue to talk past no, 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 each no. other. I need we're you not to understand Christian, this, Christian. You're pinning it. I won't please listen, Christian, Christian, explain Christian. this. Let me just let me just put things in perspective for you because I don't know what you think you're listening to. I just muted you a second, right? We're not talking past each other. You're just pinned at the wall, mate. And you've got nowhere to go now, and you've 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 sunk into heresy, 
Yeah, you're going against the church councils and their rulings. Yeah, you 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 now got a problem because you know if Jesus is not all knowing, then he can't be God. Because the excuse used by Christians is is human nature didn't know, but his God nature may have known. Yeah, there, there's an escape clause with the human nature, but you took away that escape clause. You're stuck with God now. So you've got a God now that's not all knowing. You've got a God now that grows in wisdom. Do you believe God can grow in wisdom? Answer that one. Let me unmute you. Can God grow in can can God grow in wisdom? I would like to explain explain this portion because we are talking past each other. Because you do, you it doesn't seem like any of you understand that you could call it the nature of God. Yeah. The, the the concept. No, no, it's okay? not the nature of God that's in question here. Yes, it it's is the because that's Jesus. why we're talking past each other. We're not talking past each other. Why do you keep okay, saying then that? Let me explain. Then let well, me explain. Tell me why we're talking past each other. Okay. So you have God the Father, who is God. He is God. He is all knowing. Okay. The Word of God, which is Jesus, the Word of God proceeds from the Father. So now he is the word of God. The word of God has the authority of God. But it is, is God. Word. It is his holy word. The pro one more second, one second. Prophets had the authority of God. No, they didn't. Of course they did. No, no. They relayed God's commandments and stuff. He, they didn't have his authority. Yeah. Stick to the knowledge bit, Hamza. Yeah. So, so we're trying to understand that how how does the word of how can Jesus be God? Or okay, okay, oh, maybe okay. What, what what do you mean by authority? If the prophets had the authority, what do you mean by authority? Because okay, when the prophets spoke, they yeah. spoke on behalf of God. Okay. Yeah? So, what's the difference between that and the word of God? If if what is being spoken by the prophet is the word of God then it the word of God the word not the prophet but the word has the authority because that word is God it's from God because right. God spoke it it he has the authority right the word that's Jesus but he but so the word is not God the, the word is God. It's Jesus. It is the word of God. How can it be God if it's not all knowing? How can Jesus be God if he's not all knowing? It can God he's be the God word he's not of God. Can so God when all... the Father speaks the word of God, is that, is God that's knowing? Jesus. Is he God is God. God. He has the authority of God because he proceeds from is the God Father. All it is God. Is God all knowing? You can keep preaching as much as you like. Is God all knowing? But Okay, but do you... So do you understand that concept? Though? No, what you're saying makes no sense. Okay, what about it does not make sense? Okay, is God all-knowing? Yes, the Father is all-knowing. Is God all-knowing? Yes. Right, was Jesus all-knowing? Jesus is the Word of God. All right, was he all-knowing? He knows what the Father spoke is because he, he is the Word of God. Is he all-knowing? He knows what the Father spoke. Is he all knowing? It's clear he's not. Why is it so difficult for you? Christian, it's clear he's not. Because he asked you, he asked you, Hamza, listen, you asked him, is God all knowing? No hesitation, he answers. Is the Father all knowing? The Father is all knowing. No hesitation, he answers. When it comes to the Son, you can't answer because you know he's not all knowing. No, I am answering. Which means that he's not God. what the Father Come on, man. You want to talk about disingenuous? In other words, Christian, you're saying the most disingenuous person up here. Sorry, you're saying the word of God can only say what has been revealed to him from the Father. Is that what you're saying? He right. He's not going to reveal something that the Father does not reveal. Okay, good. No. So basically, you're saying Jesus or the Son or the Word is only limited to the knowledge that has been told, uh, revealed to him from the Father. Am I right? He's limited in his knowledge to what the Father revealed to him. The Word of God is what has been spoken by God. That means what has been revealed to him, right? The, right. What what God spoke. Yeah, that's the same thing. You're, 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 you're basically saying the same thing as me. So the okay. Father is all-knowing. The Son yes. only knows what the Father revealed to him. He's the Word of God. He knows what the Father spoke. Yeah, means what the Father revealed to him, right? right? 
So if the father did not reveal to him the hour, so the, the, the word will not know that. Am I right? Right. The son does not know the hour, only the father. Okay. Correct. When you say the son doesn't know, means the word doesn't know. The logos does not know. Correct. Right? The word that means, does not know that because means the you, father did not say good. it. So I basically, say at that time. That's fine. That's fine. So basically you're saying the, the father is all-knowing. The son yes. is not all-knowing because he's ignorant of the hour until he's the, the word, father reveals it to him. the word of God. What? It's what he's I, spoken. I did not say he's not the Bible. word of God. According to you, he is limited in his knowledge because only he can only say what the Father revealed to him. So he's limited in his knowledge. He's not all-knowing. That's all Hamza was telling you to say. And you have finally agreed to that. I'm but you said, the, you said the I'm word is Christian God. To help you, mate. But be definition, God about. should be all-knowing. Right, God man. is all knowing. The, the, but not they're Jesus. not different. All right. Hashim, let Shabir have a chat yeah, with Shabir. Take on, inshallah. Shabir, welcome, bro. Have a chat with your Christian. Uh, thank you. Uh, is my mic working? Yes, beautifully. Yeah. 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 I'm going to bring a Christian on to help him as well. Welcome, thank Marco. You. That's fine. Hi, hi, Chris. How are you? Are you okay? I think he's actually disagreeing with the Christian in the back chat, but anyway. <laughs> Chris, right, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. Excellent, excellent. Uh, you know, I, I've been listening to what is happening here, but I, I'm just going to try and be as basic as I can. Okay. If I were to ask you, and this is something we can all consider, uh, from the inception of humanity up to today, do you know of any human being in whatever physical, spiritual form one may be, do you know of any human being who is fully aware, fully knowledgeable about absolutely everything. Any it's a question, human Chris. being who knows absolutely everything. Yes. I would assume no. Why? Okay, excellent. Uh, the second question then, uh, which naturally arises, is that if there is a human being claiming that he is receiving information from what is known by human beings about a creator, would that individual be known as a prophet of God? No, not necessarily. Okay, please explain. Well, a prophet, I believe, has to prophesy. But he can only do that if it has been revealed to him. Well, I mean, people can prophesy and not, you know, and so it could, they could be a false prophet and still get something right. Excellent, Chris. Christians in the house now, yeah, just so you know. Right, go on, carry on. Chibi. That's fine. Excellent, excellent, Chris. But you are accepting that any human being is incapable of having all the knowledge that a creator would have. And because I did say from the inception of humanity, we would have to necessarily include Jesus Christ in that. Yes? I would not include him, no. Okay. So I did ask you that from inception of humanity, have any human being. So it goes back to the question that the brothers had been asking you, Chris. Was Jesus Christ fully a human being? No, he was God. Okay, that's fine. But while he was on earth, was he fully a human being? The, the flesh was human. Okay, I ask again. Was he fully a human being like me and you? Okay, what do you mean by fully? Because yes, he was human in the flesh. Okay, when, we, when you just said he was human, was he human like me and you? In the flesh, yes. It doesn't matter. But no, as doesn't a human matter, being, yeah, if I can... We're talking no about problem. It. Excellent, excellent. The second component is what? <laughs> You what is the second divinity? component? No, 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 no. You said there are two parts. I'm saying right. as a human being, me and you, Chris, are we composed of two parts? Oh, so, okay. So you're going with the, like uh, the flesh, the so body, and spirit. That's what you're. No, going no. With? I'm not going with any. I'm not going with anything. I'm just asking for so clarification what, what you, purposes. What are you talking about? For clarification purposes, Chris, Jesus Christ, as a as a human being. If he was stood with me and you, is he any different from me and you 
in the yes. context of what we define in the context of what we define as a human being yes how he's god okay that's a separate issue but i'm talking about the human being jesus christ is a human being do you agree with that he, so he, he the flesh was human Okay, I can, I can, I can understand. But I'm asking you a very specific question here, Chris. Respectfully, human being. Now it is apparently obvious that me and you are accepting that what we consider to be a human, uh, what we consider to be a human being, is how we are understanding a human being to be. Do you agree with that? No, I don't know. I don't actually. Right. Agree. Excellent. So now you need to define for me what constitutes a human being. Firstly, no. Why don't you define it? I'll tell you why. Because I just said to you, we all are agreeing what we consider to be a human being. Now you have disagreed. So what? If, what? What, I, what do you agree please, to be? A please, human please, being? please, please, respectfully. If we talk, no, yeah, we won't talk over each other. What have you agreed? What have you agreed upon? Yeah, yeah, I, just, I just said to you, if we agree about a human being, if you are disagreeing, then we need to define what a human being is. Okay, so I'm so asking you. I'm asking you, what is the definition of a human being according to you? Because the clarification is sought from you. No, I think it's from you, isn't it? Uh, what do you think is fine? But I'm asking you, and I, I'm the one who firstly asked. So I would respectfully ask you to define a human being according to you, to me. Because uh, I'll just, I'll just clarify for you. Well, okay, you, I, I would say, hey, hey, Chris, if I can just finish, yeah. You have said, when I asked you that there are three of us, Jesus, you and me, as a human being, were we all the same? You disagreed about Jesus. So obviously the, defini the definition of a human being, according to you, seems to be different. So I'm asking you, define a human being. Okay, well, okay, okay. The Between those three, you, me, and Jesus, the difference yeah. is... Jesus is God. So that's the difference. That's why he can be separated from the two of us and the rest of humanity. No, no. What's a human being? Define the human being. Forget this, Jesus. Uh, as Hamza just said, brother, what, what you are conceiving of is what you believe, which I am not going to argue with at this moment in time. However, what we are talking about here are factual definitions. I'm asking you to define a human being. If three of us were stood yeah, there... But I don't Chris. see a good reason to define a, define a human being. I don't know okay. what you're trying to get at okay. or what you well, want I'll, I'll from it. And I, so I'll, I'll I, I don't you. know why why do I even need to define human being. I have like uh, don't have the motivation to do so. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay, you see, there's a reason, and the brothers have been actually touching on each one. In Genesis six six, we are told that God regretted making human beings. Now, the, 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 the issue of regret can only be with a person who is not all-knowing. Do we agree with that? Uh, no. Okay, tell me how so. Okay. No, no. So you're telling me that, someone, that an all-knowing being cannot regret. Yes. No, 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 not only that. I'm saying to you, you can only regret if you are not aware. Well, I, I don't agree necessarily with you that. Don't. Statement. Okay, you don't. Okay, tell me, if, tell me, tell me. If you are fully aware of something, can you regret? Yeah, I assume you can, yeah. How you know can you regret, assume you, you know can? What regret means? Do you know what regret that means? Sorry, sorry. I'm not, that, that, I'm not interrupting you, Shabir. I'm just trying to explain. It's okay, it's okay. That was my next question anyway. Yeah, the, regret. Regret. This is what regret means. If you knew what the outcome was going to be, you wouldn't have done it. That's what regret means. If you knew what the outcome was going to be, you wouldn't have done it. That's what regret means. Yes. Simple. And not only that, Chris, you see the problem. Well, and uh, brother, I, I, I don't necessarily if agree I, with that definition. If, but... That's fine. That's fine. Let, let, uh, okay, look. one second, Shabir, Shabir, Shabir. He doesn't agree okay. with the Can dictionary definition that? of regret. <laughs> well, like for one instance, second, uh, so we'll have uh, regret. Don't worry. Re Christian, so you disagree with the dictionary definition of the word regret. So you tell us the Christian definition of the word regret.
What do, what do you mean by that? Well, you said the dictionary definition of the word regret is you don't agree with it. So what do you agree with is the definition of the word regret? Well, the, the question is, is what do you mean by regret? If you mean that you already know something's going to happen. No, I said to you, regret is if you knew what the outcome was going to be. Right. You wouldn't have done the action. But that's, that's not regret. necessarily true. Right. Sometimes you do do something that you know what the answer is going to be, and you still get grieved by it. No, 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 no. If you knew yes. the, listen to the definition of the word regret. If you knew what the outcome would be, you wouldn't yeah. have done it. That, that's what regret is. Dictionary definition. You said you disagree with that. So now you right. give me your definition of the word regret. Well, no, right, you because the context, it's the context that it's being used from. No, 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 forget right. context. No, I'm not going to forget context. <laughs> it's important. Okay, what's the – which context – how do you understand the word regret? So, okay, so if you do something, you know what the outcome's going to be. You know it's going to be bad, but you do it anyways. You can still be grieved by it. No, no, no. That's not word, what the word regret means. The, the de definition that you're using. Okay, listen to the definition. Right, if but I, knew, I don't have to agree with your I definition. Know you don't, this, I know you don't agree with the dictionary definition of the word, so I want your definition of the word. Okay, so what happens if you do something and you're grieved by it, even if you know what it is? Well, that's it's not, not grief, it's, it's a regret. There's two different <laughs> things, grief and regret. Regret <laughs> is... If you knew the outcome, you wouldn't have done the action. Right. That's, that's what, your definition. No, that's a dictionary definition. That's the word. That's what the word means. Right, fine. That's the definition that you're using. Uh, what can I, can I just, definition? That's the question. Yes. What's the definition of the word regret? Not grief, sorry. regret. Two different what, words. What's, what's another definition of the word regret? No, 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 no. The definition has different words in it. You don't use regret in the same definition. Uh, or the definition of it. We're just asking, asking you to define it. a word. Yeah. Right. And you How didn't you accept it. The word regret? You did not accept the definition that I gave you. You didn't give you, me one. If you do something, regardless if you know what it is or not, and you are grieved by it, you can still be like, you know... That has hurt me. Can can I can I just perhaps yeah, okay, you see okay. I, 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 I yeah sorry Hamza. you see uh, 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 Chris our friend I, it is it is patently obvious that you are really straining at trying to be reasonable and uh, I mean that sincerely but okay, you see the you issue, if definition. I can just finish Chris if I can just it wasn't a definition it was a potential explanation but I will go with it yes. You see, the point is this, that even if you were aware and you did it, you are concluding that you were not aware of the final result. As a human being, I can fully understand. I can fully understand if, if I can just, you see, because when you said you, although you knew about it, where's it going? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, although, although uh, according to your uh, I, I put it in an inverted commas definition. Uh, are you looking at the word regret now? Well, uh, I had someone in the in the chat put in regret, feel sad, repentant, or disappointed over something that one has done or failed to do. So you know, disappointed. Yeah, so that's, that's there, so that definition, definition does not agree with your definition. definition. The same so, definition. Yeah. No, 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 Chris. Uh, Brother Shabir, I think it'll be easier if you give him the context of Genesis 6-6. Six, six. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Before we go there, the issue is about the words themselves, because it's patently obvious here there's quite a lot of confusion about words. So, Chris, the question is, even if I go with what you said, yeah, about regret, it can only come about if you were not fully aware of what the consequences were going to be. But I don't, I don't agree with that. Tell me why. One moment. Uh, because, I mean, because, okay, because you can still be disappointed about something, even if you know what is going to happen. Say that again? You can still be disappointed in something, 
even if you know what's going to happen. If you can be disappointed, even if you know it was going to happen. You can, right? Is that as a human being? Then you're yeah, e yeah you're even as a defeat in a way. Yeah, e even yeah. as a human being. It's, it's a, you're conceding defeat. Are you saying God is like that? That's the logic. No, I'm not. Yeah, that's no. only if you don't have power. <laughs> yeah, you don't have control over that disappointment, sadness. Okay. Oh, you it, didn't know the outcome. Okay, no, no, no. Being, okay, okay. Let me give you the definition. Let me give you the definition of regret. Gone. Yeah. To look back upon with a feeling of distress or loss. Why? Exactly. That's the definition. Yeah. No. Ex right. So you can Ex look back upon something with distress. You, yeah. you don't, whether or not you know it's going to happen or not, you can still know it's going to happen and look on it with distress. So, so you're saying you would do something that you know. For example, if you, if you played with fire and you know you're going to burn your hand, yes, you're okay. deliberately okay. still going to play with fire, right? Okay. And then you're going to be sad and distressed and at loss of whatever. Right. And then you can call it regret. Skin of your hand. No, but would you seriously do that? You know what the context? I think I'll let Brother Shabri take on now. Give the context of uh, Genesis 6, uh, 6 because that's second. where it started. And it? by the way, that yeah, definition yeah. came from the Reader's Digest Great Encyclopedic Dictionary. Yeah, that's fine. So well, we don't disagree with, with, with the definition. But what you don't realize yeah. is that it... In the human context, that would be true. Okay, so you can regret because you don't have control okay, no, no, of the here's, outcome. Whoa, here's but the in the one. case of God, He knows the outcome. For right. Him to regret something that He has control over makes no sense. Think so about here, it. Here's the second definition: to feel sorrow or grief concerning. Yeah. So yes, so there concerning you go. So you can something have you have no control of the outcome. It doesn't say that in the definition. It it depends which dictionary you're reading. The one the Reader's not, Digest can I, can I just, Encyclopedic Chris, Dictionary. That's what? that's fine. Uh, that, thank can you. I just, dictionary, yeah. Can I just you see, Chris? The point so, is as I so, as I so when I disagree with your definition, you got on to me about me not being reasonable. No, I have a very reasonable definition. Actually, Chris. you just Mr. gave Christian, the definition Christian, at the beginning. Christian, you did not give faith. the definition. I have a question for you. Go on, Faith. Okay, I want to ask you a question. Can you describe God to me in a few words? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Christian. Okay. Oh, Christian. Okay. Oh, you're 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 after the you're a Christian, aren't you as well, Faith? Yeah. <laughs> I wanna, uh, just like I want to know something. Oh, brilliant. Go on then. Yeah, we'll let are, the are you a Muslim or a Christian, Faith? Um, I'm open uh, still for the ideas. I believe in I believe in Moses. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Muhammad. Yes. Okay. okay so you're a Muslim. And I, I I am a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. This is not for the Muslims, by the way. Okay. No, and I'm, now I'm, I have a question for you, Christian. No, with thanks, the word thanks. regret. With the word regret. That's my question to you. If I right now have my cup of tea, and step with one spoon of sugar, I put salt. What's easy way for me to do? I, I just dump it asking. and I carry a new cup of tea and I put a spoon of tea, like sugar. And you say, God regret? That's why a lot of people leave Christianity. Like, I don't understand when you say the word regret. God regret. I believe that I God don't can, understand. If God I am breathe. in my kitchen and I cook and I cook like a dish of food and I I screw up with a recipe. You know what's easy for, way for me? I throw in the garbage and I create a new dish. I don't believe God. If I want to believe in God and he regret, what type of respect I'm going to have for this God? So I let me make sure I'm, I understand I'm not, this. I'm not attacking you. I'm no, just no, like me look, trying to look for a faith. Okay? Faith and I try to believe in something. Faith. Faith. I want to believe... I just want to stop you a second, Faith. Sorry, I've just muted you a minute. You're not a Muslim, are you? You've not taken your shahada or anything like that. You're seeking the truth. Is that correct? Kind of, yes. 
Yeah, so you're not a Muslim, you know, because um, okay, because we're, we're trying to uh, we don't we don't allow Muslims on this particular stream because obviously we're um, we're, we're allowing people to challenge. No, Islam no, no. I'm listening to you guys, and I'm trying to find something, uh, something like powerful, something strong. You know, yeah. that's what why I'm in, the, I'm, I'm in this. I need to be part of this. I have a question. I want to just will throw it there. Okay, but no, but faith, faith, faith. What I'm going to do then? Let me just remove you for now. I'll definitely bring you back. Because I'd rather deal with you and your own entity rather than with this Christian flex, yeah? If you don't sounds, mind. Sounds great. Bye. All right. We'll bring you back on. Don't worry, Faith. Uh, Marco, yeah. just unmute yourself a sec, mate. No, yeah. I'm, I'm a Christian, though. So You're a Christian, isn't right. it? Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what I'd like to do at this point, um, because I get accused of, oh, you guys are always bullying one guy and 5v1 and whatever it is, right? So yeah. I decided to bring another Christian on today to help Christian out here, yeah? Now you've been listening to Christian. Do you agree with what he's saying? Um, I mean, with the topic about uh, Jesus being man and well, yeah, what, uh, what, what's the nature of Jesus? Do you believe Jesus had a, a human spirit? Uh, well, traditionally, well, I believe, I'm not very knowledgeable, by the way, and I didn't expect any of this. Uh, I just came in to ask some questions, but traditionally, we well, believe okay. that Jesus was fully man and fully God, like 100 percent man, 100 percent. Uh, deity, not so that 50 or 50, because that wouldn't really, you know, he couldn't be 50% God or anything. So you believe he had a human spirit? Uh, yeah, he had to be 100% man and 100% divine, well, that's, I guess. That's not, so not so he's got, one second, Christian, one second, Christian. <laughs> so you, you're a Christian, Marco, and you believe Jesus had a human spirit and a God spirit? That's what tradition, as I said, that's what I've read in theology books and traditionally Christianity, what it teaches, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's so right, Christian. That, Christian. Sorry, no, Christian. it's not true. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. No, that is true. You're a heretic. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Christian, uh, that's not true. Do you, do you believe in the? Um, just because they do don't you believe in the? One second, one second, Hashim. Um, let me ask you a, second, a question, Christian. This is for the Christian, the Christian, not Marco. Uh, Christian, um, do you believe that the Holy Spirit is co-equal to God? The Holy Spirit is God. Yes. Why do you believe that? Why, why do I believe God is God? No, why do you believe the Holy Spirit is co-equal to God? Oh, oh, hold on. What do you mean by co-equal? As in that he is, that the Holy Spirit is God? Yes. What do you mean by co-equal? Meaning that there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and these are not one. They're one, but uh, distinct and co-equal. So, again, we, we believe in one God. Yes. Just one. Yes. Okay. So is the Holy Spirit God? Yes. Is the Father God? Yes. That's two gods. No. No? Why not? No. Okay. And so this is what I was trying to explain earlier. Well, so if the if the Father speaks the word, that word proceeds from no God. Holy Spirit, it, no. It, We're not talking about the Son. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is, because it, that is the context. So no, 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 no. The word Forget the is son. God. Forget the sun, because you're hiding behind this word of God business. So let's deal with the Holy Spirit now. Is the Holy Spirit God? It, it's the same argument. No, it's the not. The Spirit proceeds from the Father. Where's the it say Spirit that? The Spirit is God. Where does it say the Spirit proceeds from the Father? Let me go look it up. All right. See, here's the funny thing you see, Christian. You're not going to go to a council, are you? I hope you're so not do you want me to go to the, Do you want me to go to the Quran? Because that's no, what I the want, Quran says. No, I want you to go to he the Bible. Council, not Quran. Show, Do you want, want me to go to the Quran? So you don't believe the spirit proceeds from God? I want you to show no, it in no, the no, Bible. No, that's no, what the, no, that's no. what the Quran says. Christian. No, Christian. I want you to show it in the Bible. The Bible. But isn't that what the Quran says? So you're, you're a Christian, man. You don't believe in the Bible. You don't believe true? in the Quran, mate. You don't I believe think in the you Quran. came on here with the wrong name, man. You don't believe in the Bible. It's the same argument. I think you came on with the wrong name. No, no, no. You believe, you don't believe the Quran. Yeah. So you're a Christian. So Correct. You're, you're I do not believe the Quran. Right, right, right. It, it well, has contradictions. Right. And do you believe the Bible? So where does it? Where does the Bible say that the the Holy Spirit emanates from the Father? Where are you getting that from? Somehow, I, I have the feeling he doesn't believe that the three persons are distinct i think he's a modelist who believes they're one possibly okay i want you to go to john 15 verse 26 go on read it moment
Okay, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So, so do you believe the Holy Spirit is the Father? Proceeds the from the Father. the Father, yes. So he is the Father. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father like the Word of God proceeds from the Father. It's the same argument. When does They're that take all place? One. When does he proceed? When does he what proceed? Do you, you just read the verse, John 15, 26, right? Yeah. When When is that supposed to take place? It, that doesn't matter to me. I don't care. It does. It does. It says... Yeah, uh, uh, when is it talking about? Isn't it after Jesus leaves? Come on, Christian. Uh, What's the, up, the, man? The spirit is already in existence from That's the beginning. The you just read. So, so just... in Genesis, for instance. No, no. But the verse you just said doesn't say that. <clears throat> you said no, he, the, the verse said that it proceeds from the Father, which is no, what I'm saying. He's yeah, asking when. when. I when? don't care. When does it happen? I, say I, don't, care. I happen? don't care, and it doesn't well, if, matter. Yeah, it does, because if it happens in time, well, okay. Then how if is it he does God? matter, then it, he was there from the from Genesis. Where does it he say was already that in there? Here? Where does it say he proceeded eternally? Where so, does it say so he go, proceeded? So if you eternally? go to Genesis, it talks about the Spirit of God. No, you brought this verse to say he proceeded. Where does right, it say because he you asked eternally? me. You asked, where did it, one where of you does asked it say me, he proceeded eternally? It, the Spirit proceeds this is talking from about, the Father. It, this is talking about and after he, Jesus And the Spirit dies. is eternal. Okay, where does it say that? In this verse here. It doesn't so say that. He back, says he's going to proceed from the Father after Jesus leaves. He's going to send him. Yeah. Actually, that's in uh, chapter 16. So if you go to John 16 and read verse 7. It explicitly says when he will proceed. Yeah, it's the same context. I don't yeah. know what. Because you know what's no, kind of funny. It, you know said, what's kind it, of funny? it makes a statement. The statement is proceeds from Christian. the Father. The I'm, Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, proceeds from the Father. It doesn't matter when. Right. Yeah, it does. does. Because if he does. says from Genesis, if that's the case, then the spirit was there from the beginning. If you want, that's to not that what this text says. That's yeah. what the Bible says. No, it doesn't. Show me. That's not what Go John fifteen Genesis. says. No, you're okay. reading John, and then you're going to Genesis. Yeah. No, Passion right. is giving John you in the, the same spirit... in the same book of John, just about ten verses later. It doesn't say that. Okay. It's supposed what, to happen uh, after Jesus okay. leaves. What, what about the, the phrase that the Spirit proceeds from the Father? Do you not understand? Okay, I think I think we are talking <laughs> cross purposes. So let me just clarify what Jake is saying to you. You're saying the Spirit was there since Genesis. Am I right? The Spirit was already there at Genesis. Okay. Then does it make sense for Jesus to say that until I go, the Spirit will not come? Does it no, make it sense? Says, no. The next portion, it says, the Spirit proceeded from the yeah, Father. I mean, proceeded. Correct? Look, if okay, you read. There you go. Calm Which down, verse says that? Christian, Which verse says that? Sorry. In John Which 16, verse says 7, it says, unless I go. Didn't I just read it? He said John 16 or something. No, yeah, John 16, 16 7. 15, I think he 20. was reading John 15. In John 15, it's not very explicit. But if you yeah. read John 16, verse 7, it says, but very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away unless I go away. The advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Right. Now you try to reconcile that with the fact that the spirit was already there since the, the, Genesis. But then Jesus right. is saying, until I go, he will not come. I will go and then I'll no, send no, no, him. No, come to them. Say again. Read it. Read it again. Go to them. No, no. Read John 16. That's what it's. Seven. You read right. it in your, I don't know which Bible you're reading, but if you read it for us says he proceeded from the Father. Sorry, I'm just confused here. Which verse? Oh, he's saying 15. John 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 26. 15, 15, 26. Did you read, did you read John 14, 26? <laughs> which, which one do y'all want me to read? 14, 26. Read it. 14. 
happens. All right. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Yeah, so the Father will send him, so it didn't happen yet. To them. Yeah, so it didn't happen. So the proceeding to didn't them. happen yet. No. So the, so the proceeding the spirit, didn't happen yet. No, the, the Spirit proceedeth from the Father, as in it comes from the Father. It's telling it, it you where happen the Spirit's yet. from. It didn't happen yet. No, it didn't go to them yet. Where did it say that the Spirit proceeded eternally? It, so it tells you that the Spirit proceeded from the Father. Do you where agree does it say that? it was? Where does it say Do it was eternal? Do you agree with that? Yeah, but according to this verse, okay. it didn't happen okay. yet. It happens then, after Jesus then leaves. Stop. You agree happens that it proceeded Jesus leaves. from the Father. The, the Spirit is already in existence. You can see it in Genesis. When that does it statement proceed? is telling you that it the Spirit proceedeth from the Father. Did you, That's when what it it's telling. Did you proceed when from the proceed? Father, Christian? Did you proceed from the Father? <laughs> oh boy. Spanner in the works. Okay, so I don't know what you mean by that. When you when you say that I proceed from the Father, what do you mean? Do you proceed from the Father? Just like the Holy I Spirit would say from the no. Father. Do you proceed from the Father? So what, do you, no. what, did you, what does your spirit proceed from? You mean being being created? Where does it proceed from? Your, your spirit? No, 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 no. no I, I was created. What's the difference? The difference is, is that the Holy Spirit is eternal and I am not. Where does it say the Holy yeah, Spirit? Yeah, where does it eternal? say? Where does it where say eternal that? procession? Where do you get eternal procession from? That's not what because, the verse says. Because it's because it's God. Where does it say that in a verse? It just says he proceeds later after Jesus leaves. Because the, the part Holy... I'm not understanding, the part I'm not understanding, it took the church 400 years to decide that the Holy Spirit was God. Why has it took you like a second to read one verse? Why did it take them 400 years and councils to decide this? Your that narrative or that argument. I don't know what to do with it, and I don't really care to try and deal with it. It's pretty simple. God is God. God is eternal. So no, that which no. proceedeth from him is eternal because it is God. You keep Where saying does it so say the that? word of God, which proceedeth from the Father, is God. The okay. Holy Spirit, which proceedeth from the Father, is God because they are one. It's, it's they're God. One. They're one, but they're not all knowing. Only one is all-knowing. Marco, do you, do you understand this? Are you agreeing with him? I just want to get another Christian perspective on this. I lost track of whatever you're talking about because it's literally getting nowhere. I so I just you, kinda, I dipped and <laughs> I, I was just live reading yeah. the comments. So I don't know what you're Brother, saying. Brother Hamza, can I... Yeah, go on, you, you see, Yeah, you see, one of the major problems we seem to be having here is that where there is a crucial question that needs to be answered... Uh, our friend Chris just says, I don't care. Mm. The, 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 issue, the issue then arises that are you applying any form of intellectual exercise to what you are discussing? Because so far from what I have heard from Chris, and I, again, I say this with due respect, uh, it is totally ill illogical. Uh, no, every time a question of if, if I can just finish, if I can just finish. If a, if a word that everyone commonly understands is applied, he suddenly says, I don't agree with it, and then he goes off on a tangent. Having said that, even the word proceed, as Brother Jake is trying to pin down, you see, the word, the, it, it, it is talking about beginning a course of action. That's what the word proceed means. Now, when you say no, the whole... Come from. The, so there we are, you see? It proceeded, so it came from you, God. See, but here we are, you see, you're inventing the words again. As we said, we have to work on what are commonly understood words and their definitions. Okay, well, let yeah? me explain. You see, Chris, if I can just... If I, if I, if I, if, God, why is that difficult? 
if I can just just finish with you. You see, uh, there are two, four, six of us here. Okay, if we decide on a plan and we want to put it into action, what are we proceeding with? Chris, hello. Did you just hear what I said? Uh, yes, but you, so words what did can I say? be used in different contexts. No, no, no. Context what did I just say? What did I just say? It's coming what? from Chris, the Father. Chris, what did I just say about six of us? What you just said is you're referring to understanding the word proceeding, that if you're going to go do something, you're going to proceed with something as though you're going to go do it. The course of action begins where? Well, it seems as though this is go just going to become another one of those situations where like I'm, before, I'm, I'm, I have a definition that is valid and you hmm. don't want to accept it. Not at all. Not at all. I'm asking That's you a question. Then. Let's again. finalize. Okay, let's finalize this, Chris. The word proceed. How do you define it? In this context, when it says that it the Holy Spirit proceeds from yes. the Father. It comes mm. from the Father. Like my words come from my mouth. My words proceed from my mouth. Okay. So Jesus oh. Christ is the word of God. He proceeds from the Father. It is. Okay. Excellent. When, uh, as Brother Hamza asked you, when the Creator decided, and I have to use these words because that's how you'll understand them, when the Creator decided to create Chris, did that also proceed from the Creator? The words or my, the, the, I'm created. Okay, but did the words so I, proceed I'm external to create from you? God. I am external from Word. God. Okay, excellent. Who created you? Are you, are you being serious? No, it's just a question. Who right, created but you? It seems, it seems as though that you're not taking me seriously. If I didn't, I wouldn't even bother speaking to you. But let's see. Can you just answer the question? I was created. By whom? God. Was it a word that proceeded from him? No, I am not the word of God. I didn't ask you that. I said, was, were you a word proceeding from the creator? Or no. are you going to say, no. or are you going, no. one second. Yeah, no, if the I get, the or answer I, is no. Okay, so are you saying, uh, Chris, that when the creator intends to create something, he just says be, and it is? Well, that's what y'all believe. I'm you asking you. With that? I'm asking you, do you accept that? I believe that if God says be, it will be. So when he says be, is that a word proceeding from the creator? The word be is not yeah. me. I am created. I am external from God. The word you, uh, is what comes from God, not uh, me. Excellent. You see, just follow this logically, uh, Chris. Uh, no, no, if you follow this logically, it, that means that you believe in idolatry, that everything is God. The earth, are, that stupid stone that you kiss, which is idolatry, what? that's Chris, what you're Chris. arguing, and it is evil, and Chris. you should back it up. Chris, As in you are entire, uh, Chris, <laughs> you, are, you are entitled to your opinions. You can keep them, but let's just deal with what we are dealing with right now, Chris. Oh, when we are talking about you being created by the Creator, were you a word proceeding from the Creator, even if that word be be? No. What were you then? The a, a, a creation. I am not how the word. how so how so. What do you mean? So did you just talking about uh, like how okay, let, let me, created? Oh, okay, let me simply simply are, are you a bit more. are you trying to tell me that that you Chris, Muslims Chris, believe calm down, calm that down, Chris. People if you are listen, the words of God, and they are excellent. God because excellent. of that. that excellent, excellent. Trying to say that you Muslims believe? Uh, I uh, respectfully I Muslim. believe that. Of course, respectfully, Muslims would not even apply such silly logic. But why are you applying it? I don't I'm believe it. 
because I'm following your logic right now, Chris. Now listen carefully. No, you're trying yeah. to put words into my mouth. I am telling you no, 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 and you aren't listening. Or you're not willing okay. to accept it. And it's getting Chris. obnoxious. Chris, respectfully, is, is there some sound coming, Hamza? Can you hear it? Can uh, you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you. I think it's coming from your okay. mic. Oh, that's what I thought. Chris, you see, it's very simple. It's simple logic. Yeah. When we use the word, it proceeded from the creator. If we use it about the Holy Spirit, is the Holy Spirit distinct from the creator? Uh is he is the holy spirit distinct from, from the, the creator yes there is a distinction that can be made but he, the spirit is still god so are you saying the answer is yes okay let me give you an example go ahead okay so just two minutes thumbs up okay brother yeah then you go for it don't worry okay go on so let me use the sun as an example the sun exists. It's there. It produces light. The light proceeds from the sun. It exists. It's there. The heat comes from the sun. Does that make sense? It, it, it's not the theological uh, uh, thing. It's right, not right, right. accurate, well, but well, it hopefully <laughs> will get the point across. Oh, oh, okay, so are you saying that the trillions of rays coming out from the sun are all proceeding from the sun? Yes. Are the, the trillions... Light the, are, light, the light is proceeding okay. from the sun. No problem, no in problem. Reference, oh. In reference to the sun. Okay, in reference to the sun, trillions of rays are proceeding from the sun. Do you agree? If the sun did not exist, the sun as in the... That's fine. That's so, fine. That's, Chris, it Chris. Did not follow, exist. The light would not exist and the heat would not exist. Does that excellent. make sense? Excellent. Now I'm going to follow your logic. So if the, the Father does not exist, the Son, Jesus Christ, would not exist. The Word of God would not exist. And the Spirit of God would not exist. But they and he, are and associated with the Father. They are the okay. Father. In okay. That now. Sense, now, you see, the example that you have used, right, right fine, Chris, the Father, Chris, the Spirit, Chris, the, Word of God, the, ex the, example, the example you used actually totally demolishes your belief. You see, no, because if, 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 if I can just explain, you see, because if I were to take your uh, uh, example and say there were trillions of rays proceeding from the Creator. Okay, I am using uh, that as an example. I told you it was not accurate. I, 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 I am Chris, trying to get the analogy Chris, across and you don't excellent. seem to be understanding it. Excellent. So you are telling me that you are using an example that is inaccurate to try and establish right. what is already a confusing situation. The, yes. The okay, let me follow this up. That I'll try and simplify it further. That, that the Spirit Chris, of God, the Holy Chris, Spirit, I asked, and the Word what? of God proceeds hmm. from the Father. Fine. And I use a inaccurate example but it hopefully okay. puts forth the idea that you could understand it since you're struggling so hard okay with chris, the trinity. chris okay chris listen uh, no one struggles with the trinity only christians do respectfully but i will tell you something okay i'm not struggling i with it. I, I, I i'm telling you uh, well actually you seriously are struggling <laughs> you're telling and I, me and I, that i'm struggling chris, with it yeah if i can just finish now no. my question was uh, chris my question was, is the Holy I, Spirit... How can I take you seriously? Chris, though, calm down, calm down. Calm, calm down. I'm, I'm not behaving. I'm merely speaking. Uh, now, listen to me carefully, Chris. You're telling all I me asked, that I'm struggling with it, but I'm not all, struggling with it. No, I didn't say that. I said Christians struggle with the Trinity. We don't. Oh, yeah, yes, okay? yes, yes, yes. Now, lot listen to me. Listen, listen. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, I'm, I'm making an observation here, okay? But I'm asking you, is the Holy Spirit distinct? Now, the fact that you used a, 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 an example that doesn't really fit, I'm asking you again. Is the Holy Spirit distinct as Jesus Christ on earth being God was distinct? Okay. Is the heat from the sun distinct from the sun? All right. I'm, ask, I'm asking you that. I'm asking Is you. It? 
Is okay, I'll the say, heat uh, from the sun dissipating? The heat. All right. I, I think we've had enough of Chris. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've had enough, too. <laughs> I, I, I think Marco... Uh, Two I hours of Chris. I want Rob to correct Chris. Oh, okay. Oh, I've brought Rob on to correct Chris. Oh, Rob, good. Rob, I've only brought you on just to correct your Christian <laughs> brethren, if you don't mind. No hadiths today. Would you like to correct your Christian brethren? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you you to correct him. Do you believe Jesus had uh, human nature and a uh, God nature or just a God nature? Both. So Christian here claims that Jesus only had a God nature, no human nature. Could you could you correct him? I mean, we, we could see various human aspects where Jesus was on earth. Um, and the, the point was, the whole point was that God was was sending his son to come onto earth to actually be with humans to to like uh, you know Emmanuel God is with us he it's literally God's representative his son on earth mixing with people at that time I suppose before he the second coming when he comes to rule on earth so that would that was like the first time he was coming before the second coming did you understand? Yeah, but so Chris, Chris, can you explain to him? Christian, can you explain to him how we did have a human spirit? Uh, Agent, I'll, I'll call you Chris for now. Yeah, I'll call you Chris for now. Yeah, we have to show the Muslims love. We don't be arrogant, because my brother, you being arrogant, you're not going to bring anybody to Christ. You're being too arrogant, my brother. Yeah, you're good. You've got quite a strong argument, but you're being too arrogant, my brother. We got to show the Muslims love, my brother. Okay. Yeah, that's so I all I wanted to them. say to you, Christian. No, you want to tell I him. I do love the Muslims. No, Rob. And I'm worried about them. Rob, Rob, you have to tell Don't Christian. be so arrogant, Christian. Tell please. him he's wrong. Don't be so tell arrogant. Tell him he's wrong. Tell him yeah, he's wrong. The, Rob. the specific question was Did Jesus Christ have a human soul? He, yes, Christian, I believe he Christian said no, if I remember correctly. What do you say, Rob? I, I, I believe he. You know, it says he. It says in some verses that he emptied himself no, lower about the than soul, the angels. Friend. What about his nature? We're no, no, no. About we're talking about, look, look, Rob. Yeah, human we're talking soul. about the incarnation, right? So when <laughs> Jesus walked the earth, did he have a human soul and a God spirit? Now, Chris says he just had a God spirit, and he didn't have a human spirit. Do you believe he had a human spirit? And Chris is wrong. All I can say is when he was on this earth, he had to he had to lower himself no, more than what he, 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 his normal status was. Rob, let me ask you this a different way. Are you a man? Yes, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Do you have a human soul? Yeah, of course, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. If you didn't, would you be fully man? I'll probably be dead. <laughs> okay. So you dead. wouldn't be fully man if you didn't if you didn't have a human soul. Yeah, if I didn't have a human soul, I'd probably be a zombie. Okay. Okay, good. So was Christ fully man? Yes, I believe he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did Christ have a human soul? Yeah, I believe he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we got you to admit that Christ had a human soul. So Chris says that he didn't, and I'm arguing that if he didn't have a human soul, he wasn't fully man, and it's actually a heresy. Yeah. I, be I, I, believe, I, I believe there's like a duality. I believe it's like a duality. So although he, although he took on humanity, he was still part of God, God's son. We understand that, Rob. Yeah, I agree, the, but the point is he had two spirits or souls. He had was the divine son, the second person of Trinity, and he took on a full human nature, which included a human body and a human soul. That is false. Rob, do you believe you have the Holy Spirit in you? Do I have? Yeah, guiding you into all truth. I've been, I've certainly been filled with the Holy Spirit, and I've seen okay. evidence of it. Christian, well, yeah. do you believe you've got the Holy Spirit? Guiding into I'm, all truth. I'm going to tell you that that the statement is false. Do you believe you have the Holy Spirit in you? I am referring to what he said. No, no, one second, Christian. Had we'll a human that. spirit we'll that. that is 
false. Do you have well, the Holy Rob, Spirit? Well, Rob just said that he did. So are you saying that Rob, Rob's wrong about that? Yes. Yes, That's I what am. he's saying, yeah. Oh, so, so Christian's telling you, Rob, you haven't got the Holy Spirit. Could you tell him what you are? That is have? not what I said. What did you say then? I am telling him that Jesus did not have a human spirit. Yeah, but Christian, here's the problem. Rob just said that he has the Holy Spirit. So you're saying one or two things. Either you're saying that Rob doesn't have the Holy Spirit and Rob is lying about having the Holy Spirit, or Rob has the Holy Spirit and you disagree with God. Those I are disagree with Rob. Saying. But if you just disagree he with is Rob, wrong. Oh, hold on, hold on. Just, just hear, hear, hear me out. Rob is claiming to have the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So if you're saying Rob is wrong, you're, you're saying one of two things. Either I Rob believe that lying he, about he, having the Holy Spirit or that Rob is truthful about having the Holy Spirit, but he's still wrong, which means this inspiration is feeding him false information. Those are one of the two things. So which one is it? I am telling you that he is wrong. Jesus Christ did not have a human spirit. No. You know, you know Rob, something, Christian. It's I'd it's, like to hear it's, it's quite fascinating that you believe that Jesus is a man, but he doesn't have a human spirit. You know, when Jesus was growing up, he grew in wisdom. So, who really grew in wisdom, God or human? Because a human without a human spirit, I don't understand how they're going to grow in yeah, wisdom. Where, yeah, where'd the ignorance come from? Rob, he's calling you a liar, mate. How did Jesus grow in wisdom? If can you didn't I, have a can I respond? <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I want you to respond to Christian because he's saying you're you're wrong, and you're saying he's wrong. So there's only one way to determine who's right or wrong, man. Let's have a fight. No, I'm joking. Go on, speak to Christian. Tell him why he's wrong, and Christian, you explain to Rob why he's wrong. This would be interesting. Christian, Christian, can I ask what denomination you are? I'm a follower of Christ. I am part of Christendom. Christ is okay. My yeah. is the high priest. What church do you attend? What church do you attend? It's irrelevant. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Because you, if you was a, if you was a true Christian, you'd have no problem to tell me what denomination you are. Just I like did tell you Sunni my Muslim, quote unquote Shia denomination. Muslim. And if you had listened to Paul, he told us not to decide whether or not we were, we were, uh, you know, followers of. No, so -so. no, no. Followers of so what church do you go to? Christian, Jesus Christ Christian, what church is you go our to? high priest. Christian, what and church do you go to? I personally think that you should step out. <laughs> Christian, what, Christian, what church do you go to? Rob is telling you you need to leave the building, mate. <laughs> Marco, you're very quiet. Oh. What are you doing? <laughs> Has he been muted? <laughs> no, he's just staying out of it. Uh, he's, 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 he's the white man, thing. Marco. Rob, so how do you respond to that? Christian's telling you you need to leave the building. You're wrong. <laughs> no, this guy, this guy's got, this guy's got serious issues. He won't even discuss what what church he attends, what denomination. I agree with you, Rob. Attends. Rob, for once, I agree with you, my friend. I agree he's with making you. it up as he goes Rob, along. It would seem. Well, that's this his belief, guy, so this let's, guy, let's not push it now. Come on, he doesn't guy, want to reveal. So, you know what? I, I don't normally, I don't normally go off. I don't normally go off on Christian Brothers, but this guy is stuck up his own behind. Okay, <laughs> let's let's leave it there. Now yeah. it's getting heated unnecessarily. Oh, but we want to understand the reasons, the reasons yeah. why. Why, Christian, why are you, you wrong with you your say right? that you follow you follow Jesus Christ? Am I right? That is correct. And I believe you believe only in the Bible. You don't believe in the church or something that's all irrelevant to you. He's definitely a Protestant, man. I mean, there's no yeah. way around Yeah, I mean, it. because you know the Trinity, like uh, Jake told you earlier, it took I the church not, four centuries. I do not pick denomination. I have I have the king, which is Jesus Christ. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the Okay, Messiah. let's make it simple. Are you a Catholic? No. Are you Eastern Orthodox? No. I do not declare denomination. I believe in doing so is against... What exactly. You're non-denominational, which is Protestant. Yeah. Okay, no. that's, that's fine. I mean, if he wants to not reveal his, uh, what he says, sect, that's fine. So Christian, when, do you, you know believe, when Jesus, do you believe, do you believe the Bible Jesus the word of God? the best uh, role model for you? No, Jesus Christ is the word of God. Do you believe the Bible okay. is the word of God? Jesus Christ is the word of God. All right. Do you believe the Bible is the word of God? 
Jesus Christ is the Word of God. Okay, okay, let the Holy me, Spirit, let me rephrase that, that question. Would you know that Jesus is the Word of God without the Bible? Would you know that Jesus Christ is the Word of God without the Bible? The Bible attests to Jesus being the Word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm aware of that, question, but I'm asking you, question. would you know that fact without the Bible? Uh, well, it's possible. I mean, depending on what situation, the Bible does exist, and it does attest to no, Jesus no, being never the Word read of God. The Bible. I do believe that the Bible is correct in that Jesus is Christian, the Word of Christian, God. Christian, Christian. Just do me a favor. And please. actually, your Quran says so Christian, too. Christian, what? Do me a favor, please. What does the Quran? Does your Quran say that Jesus Christian, is the Word of God? Christian. Oh, yeah. Christian. The, the, did you say? Did someone say no? From no. God. Christian. From God. Do you believe? Do you know it says the same thing about John? So in the when Quran? it says from, yeah, does that mean that it says the exact same the, thing about John the Baptist in the Quran? Hey, Christian. That is the word from God. Hashim, just one second. There you go. Christian, if you never read the Bible. Where would you get the belief that Jesus is the Word of God? I mean, you can be taught different ways. No, if you never read the Bible, so you never got access to the Bible, right? Where do you get the understanding that Jesus is God or the Word right. of God? You can you can learn different ways. From where? What source? Well, you can you can people can teach you. Yeah, but they're going to teach from the Bible. I'm talking about without the Bible. But we have the Bible. But without the Bible. But we. Oh, we have kidding. the Bible. Oh, okay, okay. So now what we're saying is, you only believe Jesus is the Word of God because the Bible says so. She, and you Muslims even no, believe? Forget Muslims. Forget Muslims. You only believe Jesus is the Word of God because the Bible. Do says you so. believe that, that He's a Spirit that proceedeth from is that the correct? Father? You only believe this because you've read it in the Bible, yeah? No. Uh, I, I think that is a uh, like a that direction is saying that you have this, therefore you must only get it from this source. And there, and if, for instance, if the Bible did not exist, I am confident that we would have a way of knowing. What way? How? How whether or know? not someone is teaching you, or yeah, whether or not the Lord, the Lord the Lord provides. Uh, Where, where's the knowledge coming from? Yeah, what's the source? You mean from you mean from like from God without the Bible? Yeah, without that's the, the question. Bible. Right. What so do you, you say? Like from God, R right? So the point is this: you right now believe Jesus is the Word of God because the Bible says so. The Bible does say so, and I do believe it. Yes, because the right. Why do you believe what the Bible says? Well, I've evaluated it, and I believe it to be true. Well, what have you evaluated it using? What standard? Uh, reading it. How does that make it true? No, 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 no. I've evaluated it, and I believe it to be true. What have you evaluated, and what determined it was true? Uh, it rings of truth. What does that mean? Christian, sorry. Uh, you, again. Christian, hold on a second. You know how every time we ask you a question about the, uh, the Bible and you try and put it back on the Quran? Well, this time we can do the same thing. You've okay. read the, uh, the Bible, and it rings of truth well we read, read the quran and it rings of truth therefore the quran must be true so why why wouldn't you accept the quran all right but i can find things in the quran that, that we are, can that find things contradictions in the Bible. Oh, okay so now what you're saying if you but find you're something... you are the one who makes christian so do you agree that there are contradictions in it christian no. well in the bible yes in the one quran, second no. i'm just one second one second one second Abdul Razak. Uh, uh, Abdul Razak. all right christian just one second so, so what we're saying now, so rings of truth is not enough now. Now you're saying if the book contains contradictions, yeah, even though it does have rings of truth, it's not true. Is that what you're saying? Wait, are we talking about the Bible or the Quran? Any, no. Anything. Any, we, we're looking for a standard for truth here. No. So no. You, right. you, one second, one second, Christian. So you brought a standard to determine what something is true or not because it rings true to you. OK, so if something rings true to us, then according to your standard, we can have the same standard. OK, but now you added an extra layer. But they're an extra... they they don't second. agree with each other. Christian, now they don't agree. So, yeah, no. So what? What do you mean? Point... So what? That's important. If you're looking for truth. 
Well, why is yours true and ours false? Because yours has contradictions. So does yours. I'm not the one claiming that everything in it is totally like. Oh, like, okay, that's you why you didn't want to say that. Inerrant. That's why you wouldn't say the Bible is the word of God. That's why you wouldn't no, say the Bible is the word of God. Because you knew God it had contradictions. The, the Bible is a is like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a historical wow, document. Man. I never it's seen a, a Christian waffle so, so you much the Bible about trying to answer whether or not the Bible is the word of God. So the Bible contains contradictions. I didn't. I said that Jesus Christ is the word of God. Do not put words in my mouth. Exactly. You refuse to admit it. Does the Bible contain contradictions? Your Quran has contradictions. I'm you, Answer the question. Does your Bible contain contradictions? Does it? I'm asking you. Yeah. Answer it. Yes or no? Does it? I haven't. Find me a contradiction. No. Does it? Uh, how about that? Why don't we play that game? You find a contradiction. Do you believe and I'll find a contradiction? Contradiction for your Quran. Do you believe the Bible contains contradictions? I like this guy. Do you believe it contains contradictions? I believe the Quran came contains What's contradictions. Rob, does the Bible contain contradictions? Does the Quran contain no, contradictions? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Right, Rob says no. Really? Marco, it doesn't? One second, one second, Christian. You're not the only Christian here. But it, the Quran Marco, does have contradictions. Marco, does, does the Bible contain contradictions? Chris, the answer is no. You should just say no. So Marco said doesn't. no contradictions. Rob says no contradictions. Chris? The Quran has contradictions. No, we're not talking about the Quran. We're talking about the Bible. You're, here. you're deflecting the question. We you're are. not answering the question. You're we're deflecting. I'm the Bible. not worried about. See, what's important in the Bible oh, is about the, Bible the now? death wow. of Christ and His After resurrection. No, no, no. But we're trying to qualify the Bible here, mate. Yeah. Right, and I'm asking you to provide me with a contradiction. No, no. The point is, did I say you... there was a contradiction? I'm asking you to provide one. Okay, I'll say it again to you. Do you believe there is or not? Can you provide me with a contradiction? Yeah. Okay, well then try and do so. And okay. I'll provide you with a contradiction in the Quran. Okay, what was written above the cross of Jesus? All of you can answer, all you Christians. Which one? Who wants to answer first? What was written above the cross of Jesus? Anyone? I've read, Habs are already answered this on yeah, a previous you, you show. First, mate? What was written above the cross of Jesus? Yeah, I've already answered this on a previous show. Well, answer it again. What was written about the cross of Jesus? In in the four, in the four gospels. No, which gospel? You have. So, if you read all the four gospels, you have six. You have a a piece of the what was written above. So, each gospel will form a small part of the whole. Of what was written on the sign. What? So each gospel will have uh, like a, a part of what was written. And so you read the whole four gospels to get the whole picture. Oh, right, what does it say then? Yeah, what is the whole picture? What What, what do you get from that? What is it? What did it say? Uh, off, off, the, off the top of my head, Google I can't it, remember Google the whole friend. thing. Go Google it. Go Google it. All right, all Marco. All, all, right, all, all I... All I can remember is, you know, the King Basically, of the Jews. That's all I can remember. Vague memories. I want you to go Google it. We'll come back with your answer. Marco, uh, what was written about the cross of Jesus? Uh, like the actual event or what it led to? No, no, what, or what, what exactly was written about the cross of Jesus? What was written on top of the cross or whatever, wherever he was crucified? Oh, what was written on top of the... Uh, I believe it yeah, said the, uh, the king of the Jews. Well, that was what was written. Which okay. which gospel says that? Which gospel says that? Oh, sorry, man. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not that... It's okay. You can Google it. No problem. Each... Yeah. All right, you Google as well. Otherwise, Christian, yeah. Christian? what's written on the cross? Uh, who's looking this up? Do you want me to look it up? Yeah, you look it up. Christian, do you know the answer or you have to look it up? I'll, I'll go look it up. Make sure I get it right. Okay. Well, you're not going to get it right. <laughs> yeah, you're not. Because the Bible is not the word of God. Oh, really? <laughs> right, Hamza, are we going to bring Marco on? Because I think uh, Chris... Yeah, I'm going to let Christian and let Rob go. Let's just, let's just answer this question. Well, that's, that's more than generous, I think. 
You can come again, Christian. I've enjoyed you. You can come again, no problem. Yeah. So, but we're not going to talk about the contradictions in the Quran. No. Oh, we're going to. Yeah, okay. Well, if, if you want to run no, away no, from not, that. Not well, not really. You've been on the show for 24 minutes. Smile. Chris, <laughs> yeah. Chris, you've been you've waffling for over two hours, dude. You've had a good run. We've enjoyed you, and you're welcome back. No problem. But before you go, titles are written above the cross of Jesus. Uh, Y'all can look it up. Um, well, I, Chris, the cross is the good news, well, no, and you don't even know what was written on it. That's pretty bad, brother. You should be able to find no, it. Don't try to insult me. Should we let him bring blue, a contradiction blue. from the Quran before he goes? I think we yes. should actually. Yeah, we'll let you bring no, a contradiction just... from the Quran because it's only fair. All right. Uh, according to John 19, mm -hmm. verse 19, it, it says the writing was uh, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. OK. And what is it according to Mark? That's Matthew. No, you just quoted uh, John. I quoted John. Yeah. So quote Mark. Yeah, let me go find Mark. One moment. It says the king of the Jews. Okay, and what does it say in Matthew? It says the king of the Jews, I believe. Ah, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. So what did it say? You got three. He was three different things now here. A sign can only say one thing. What did it say? No, actually, well, uh, yeah, so Luke the, is the, something the, else as well. Yeah, Luke's different as well. All four gospels say something different, but which yeah, one? It says what this did is it the say? king of the Jews. Right. So they're telling him that it's the king of the Jews. Yeah, but they all don't say the same thing. It says, they this they didn't is know how to Matthew, read, or Matthew, the, yeah. or, or they all read a different cross or something. Yeah, Matthew okay. says, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Mark says, the king of the Jews only. Luke okay. says, this is the king of the Jews. Okay. They're all different. They're not the same. What's a contradiction? contradiction? Yeah. Do you agree that's a contradiction? No, not particularly. I don't really have a problem with it, I guess is what I should say. No, I mean, it, all, it all relates the to the same. It's a contradiction, not whether you a have a problem with it. When you see a sign and you see four different uh, four different accounts of that same sign, yeah, then someone is not telling the truth. Three of them are wrong, or all of them are wrong. You see what I mean? Or they're done in different languages. What? It was only written in one language, right? I don't know. It can't be written in four languages. Why not? Well, unless you got evidence for that. I'm just, I'm just saying it could. Why? Why would the Romans write in four different languages? Well, I'm not saying it did. I'm just saying it. it so the concept well, even if it's in different languages concept is not a problem. Even, even if it's in one, different the concept languages, is not a problem. Still say you're, the same thing. Right. And you're claiming that it's a contradiction. It's like, OK, but I don't know if it is. Well, well, well don't it's kind of if you don't know then. No, right. I don't know. So don't speculate. I'll, I'll give you another easier contradiction. No, yeah. no, when the Pharisees ask for a sign. When the Pharisees ask for a sign. that you got gone. One second, one second, yeah, one second. Dealt with the Bible. Let me just deal with this one, this particular one. When the Pharisees asked for a sign for Jesus to prove who he is, mm -hmm. what did he say? Are you referring to the sign of Jonah? What did he say when he was asked for a sign? No, not that one. Not the sign of Jonah? Yeah, yeah. Which depends. Which gospel? In Mark, Jesus says no sign will be given. Except for the sign of Jonah. No, Mark no. says no sign and that's it. So if he says this, no sign was going to be given to you, and then another says no sign will be given to you except for the sign of Jonah. It's a contradiction. Okay. No, no, no. It's no. 
So if Jesus is living there and does not provide them a sign, no, no, until it comes Not later. This event occurring in history, where the Jews, the Pharisees, come to Jesus and say, "Give us a sign," okay. and Jesus says in the Gospel of Mark, "No sign will you be given." Okay, and walks off and walks off. And okay. in Matthew, he says, "No sign, but the sign of Jonah." Okay. So we have a contradiction here now. Did he give a sign or not? Well, did no, he say so he's going to give a sign or not? So did it occur all at the same time? So if if some so there's a group of Pharisees that ask him and he tells them no and walks away. Another group comes up and says no, we we want a sign. He no, says no, no, no none group. will be given to you oh, except okay. for the sign of Jonah and walks it's away. The well, problem you've got, you're probably, right? I, it doesn't it doesn't bother me. Well, Christian, why should I care? It you, it and it doesn't it, you it doesn't mean point. that it's even a contradiction. Well, Matthew copied from Mark. Okay. Right, so how could he copy extra from Mark? Wait, so before when I had a conversation with you much earlier, you said that Matthew did not write it. No, no, I said to you, the author of Matthew copied... It was unknown or something? What? Was no, unknown no, no. or something? Okay, the conversation we had earlier determined that all of the gospel writers are anonymous. Okay, but what we do know, whoever wrote the gospel of Matthew copied from the gospel of Mark, okay, as his template. Okay. Right. So in the Gospel of Mark, no sign will be given. And then the same story, we've all of a sudden we've got a sign that's been added that wasn't in the Gospel of Mark. OK. Right. In the Gospel of Mark, the women flee and speak to nobody. In the other Gospels, they flee and speak to everybody. This is a contradiction. Right. Bring your Quranic contradiction. OK. So I'm sure you've heard the... Uh... The create the creation contradiction. <laughs> right, you've heard that. Yeah. Right. So there's one where it says that, that it was in six days, some that was in eight days. There's one that says that the mountains were created first. There's the one that says the heavens were created first. And so which one was created first? Yep. <laughs> true, true, true. You what right? What's the contradiction? Yeah, what is the contradiction? Well, if the what, mountains what were created the before the heavens, or the, the heavens passion. were created before the mountains, where is, where you can't is have both. Hold on, where is this passage? We gave you the references. Where is your reference? All right, all right. Let me get it for you. Okay. By the um, way, while you're looking for that, you know the biggest contradiction which you yourself had conceded earlier. Right. Sorry, Rob. I need to let you go because I need to let support. Was that Sorry. God is all knowing, and then you conceded help. that Jesus only knows. Jesus what is God the, the don't him. put words in my mouth. I'm Jesus not. is the word of God and he will speak what the Father tells him. Exactly my point, which means he is limited in his knowledge to what the Father will tell him. He is Thank the you word for of God. He, already, he already admitted that he was ignorant. Exactly, that's the biggest it. contradiction. God by yeah. definition is omniscient, he's all knowing. You said Jesus is limited in his knowledge to that what the Father reveals to him. He is the word of God. He it doesn't matter what title you give him. The he's, Father. he's ignorant of the hour. What right. title is That's given? because you don't <laughs> understand the association of the word of God. God you keep trying to keep them as separate. That's not three. It's one. Christian, Christian, <laughs> Rob's already corrected you on your error. Relax. Let's yeah, relax. contradiction in the Quran. Assalamu alaikum, brother Sabur. How are you doing? Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Hey. Well, I'm no atheist at the moment, so you've been all right. Don't worry. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Yemeni jumped on just to support us, mashallah. <laughs> right. Let's say, so, Christian now, he's been bashed for two hours on Christianity. Yeah? He's now trying to bring us a, a contradiction in the Quran. Two and a half. <laughs> You know, I always find it strange that Christians think if you show the Quran is wrong, automatically the Trinity, as conceived by the Nicene Creed, is correct. As if there's some sort of link between the two. This guy doesn't even believe in the Nicene Creed. This guy doesn't even accept councils, Christian councils. Or the church. Yeah. He doesn't accept scholars. My, my, my Christian friend, just come to Islam. It's easy. Just Honestly. The best thing for you. No, it's, it's, it has idolatry in it. <laughs> no, it doesn't. From a Christian, oh, Islam yeah. is here. Hey, we got Islam just for you. Hey, no, you have a, you have a you have a stone that you set up, and you, it's a sacred stone that's against what the Bible says. <sighs> we, don't, we don't worship What's a stone. Yeah. We the worship Allah, you the stone. set up a sacred stone that is against what the Bible says. 
We don't follow the Bible. What do we do with this sacred Obviously. stone? Obviously. Who cares yeah. what the Bible says? We worship a man. Come on. <laughs> no, we worship you believe God. In, you believe in human sacrifice? Yeah. And a man. <laughs> we are about um, idolatry and paganism. Anyway, give us your contradiction, mate. Yeah, so... One, one moment. I gotta, I gotta try and find the. I'll help you out. It's, it's in, it's in chapter seven, verse fifty-four. The first one. Chapter, uh, let me read it. Let me read it. I like yeah. reading the Quran. And this, chapter and seven, verse fifty-four. Bismillah. Indeed, your Lord is Allah, who created the heavens and earth in six days, then established himself on the throne. He makes a day and night overlap in rapid succession. He created the sun, the moon, and the stars. All subjected by his command, the creation and the command belong to him alone. Blessed is Allah, Lord of all worlds. Okay, and what's the contradiction? So the second, so the uh, supposed contradiction actually comes in Surah Al Fusilat, uh, sorry, in chapter 41, verses 9 to 12. No, yeah, I'll let you read it and then we'll. Yeah, I'll read it, I'll read it, I'll read it. But that's not what he came with, he came with something else. No, no, this yeah, is the six days yeah, and the eight yeah, days. Oh, okay. No, no. 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 No? So mount, mountains and in heavens. So he's talking, about mountains and heavens. he's talking about the order of creation, I think. Yeah, not the days of creation. Is this the guy who believes in the Bible oh, that okay. being light and then the sun being created on the fourth day? Is that is this the same no, guy? I think he's talking about the order of creation. <laughs> no, seriously. Is, is, right. is so creation? in chapter in chapter seventy nine, you have the heaven being created first. Chapter seventy nine, which verse? Uh, was it twenty seven to thirty? 27 to 30. Yeah. Which is harder to create, you or the sky? He built it, raising it high and forming it flawlessly. He dimmed its night and brought forth its daylight. As for the earth, he spread it out as well, bringing go to, go to 32. and pastures okay. and setting the mountains firmly upon it, all right. as a means of sustenance for you and your animals. Okay. All right. So heaven first. In chapter 2. Verse when did 29. I mention heaven in that? Yeah, verse, verse. 29. He what, dimmed you, its you, night you, and brought forth it at the beginning. Which is harder it. to create, right. you or the sky? He built right. it, raising it right. high and forming it flawlessly. Right. Yeah. So where, there you go. where did I mention heaven? Are you saying he didn't create the heaven at that point? No, you said that verse said heaven. What were you talking about? Well, I mean, I can go look at y'all's uh, y'all's tafsirs. Is that what you call them? No, the heavens were created first, right? No, I'm reading the Quran, which is yeah. harder to create, right? You or the sky, right? And then he read it. He built it, right? I'm forming it flawlessly. There you go. So what's no, the problem, no, no. Christian? <laughs> you're, you're missing it because in yeah. chapter two, verse twenty-nine. The earth is created first. Go on, read no, it. No, no. Read chapter it, go on. 2, verse 29. Christian, Christian, in chapter 79, right, it says, and after that, he spread the earth. He doesn't say he created the earth. He says he spread Where it. were the mountains? No, no, one second, one second, one second. Oh, where were the mountains? One second. So you have the heaven first, you agree, and then he spreads the earth, and then he puts the mountains there. In the other verse, the mountains come first, and then the heavens. Okay, let me read the other verse. So chapter 2, 29. Is that what he's saying? That one and, what is it, 41? No, I've read that Chap one. All right, I'll do it again. Yeah. O okay, so chapter, um, which is harder to create, you or the sky? He built it, raising it high and forming it flawlessly. He did right. this night and brought forth its daylight. There you As go. We stop talking. Well, that, you the, just said it. The heavens came first. Okay. I'm going to mute you because you're irritating. Let me read it. Which is harder to create? You are the sky. He built it, raising it high, forming it flawlessly. He dimmed its night and brought forth its daylight. As for the earth, he spread it out as well, bringing forth its water and pastures and setting the mountains firmly upon it all as means of sustenance for you and your animals. So what this does, Christian, it does exactly what we hold started at the beginning. You can't understand the Quran. You read things that are not there. You, you, you create, like this, this you create the heaven. The, the, the heavens were created first. No, no. If you read the verse, what this is saying, 
Allah's telling you how he formed, what he formed in the heavens and what he formed what? on the earth. Right. It's not, right. right. So it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily sequential in that way. What are you talking about? Okay. Then, he turned, then he went to the earth. Then no, he didn't he say that. It yes, says, it does. It says it, then he spread the earth. He doesn't say that. Right. And then after that come the mountains. No, he doesn't say that. He says. It does too. Just read it. Oh, it doesn't actually mention mountains no. in those verses that you presented. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. It's not... Allah in this verse is explaining about the sky and explaining about the earth. Right? So listen, listen. Which is harder to create? You or the sky? He built it, raising it high, forming it flawlessly. He dimmed its night and brought forth its daylight. As for the earth, he spread it out as well, bringing forth its water and pastures. And setting the mountains firmly upon it, all as a means of sustenance for you and your animals. So you've misunderstood what the verse is saying there. So Allah's explaining what he did on the earth and what he did in the heavens. Yeah, that's all he's doing in that verse. And then we're going to the verse in where? 29. He is the one. So I'll start from 28. How can you deny Allah? You were lifeless and he gave you life. Then he will cause you to die and again bring you to life. And then to him, you will all be returned. He is the one who created everything in the earth for you. Then he turned towards the heavens, forming it into seven heavens. And he has created knowledge of all things. How is our contradiction? In one, the heavens come first. And the next one, the heavens in, come in the one, It doesn't mention any sequential. It does too. It doesn't. It does too. Go read the it Arabic. Doesn't, it doesn't. It, it does, does not. too. It says then. It's returning to afterwards. And get lost. Marco. Oh, man. Well, no, I have to get rid of the man. Took I can't a while. deal with that anymore. Uh, well, you know, here's the thing you see. If someone's going to go, it does too. It does that. It does too. It does that. You know what? It's just pointless. Anyway, Marco, you're a Christian. Yeah. We put, we put you nicely in the middle of the arena there. Privilege. So come and tell thank us why you. Christianity is true. Uh, well, if it's all right <clears throat> with you guys, thank you for having me. But I just came in, if that's all right with you, to ask you some questions. But not for too long, because I've been here for so long. <laughs> it's been pretty tiring. Go on, then. Um, so, yeah, clearly I'm a Christian, and I wanted to ask. I'm familiar with uh, you guys' videos and uh, speaker's corners and all that. And I wanted to ask, regarding Islam, what makes uh, Muhammad a reliable source of information or a reliable prophet as well to carry on the final message of, you know, Judaism, Christianity, and all of that? Okay. What do you mean continue on Christianity? No, because don't, doesn't, correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't Islam uh, claim that it's the final revelation that the God of Moses, Abraham, is the same as Allah? And it's just, this is the final revelation from Muhammad. Yeah, but it's not a continuation of Christianity. So you okay, can say, that, why do we believe right. that Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger or final prophet? Okay, all right. But Christianity is, is, is nothing to do with Jesus. You have to understand that. Uh, I mean, that's where we differ, but I just wanted well, to know well, yeah, Jesus, what makes sense. Okay. Jesus didn't teach Trinity. Jesus didn't teach salvation through the cross. So where, where well, are you getting all that stuff from? Jesus didn't teach you as God. Once again, I'm just asking one question, and if I could just get that answer, and maybe we can move on from that. Oh, okay. So you want you want to know why we believe Muhammad peace and blessings upon is a messenger of God? Yeah, if you could tell me that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So first thing, what are the options for that we could have for him? So he's he's made a claim 1,400 years ago in the desert that yeah. he's a messenger of God. That an angel came to him and told him he's a messenger to the people. Um, what are the options? Uh, you're asking me, so if it's not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let, let's do a process okay. of elimination. What could be the reality? Let's, let's, I mean, let's from, uh, from a Christian standpoint and from what I've... Uh, once again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but what I've heard is that uh, upon first revelation, Muhammad thought it was an evil spirit or someone, you know, like a demon or something speaking no, to no, him. No, no, no. Think of, look, 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 look. Let's just have a look at what the possibilities are. Let's first thing, was he lying? Well, wouldn't a demon speaking to him be a possibility? No, no, but let's, well, we can come to that. Was he lying? Yeah. 
Well, if you are trying to find other possibilities, then yeah, we would say maybe he's lying. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. I have to spoil for you. Okay. If he's lying, what does that mean? It means he knows what he's saying is not the truth. Yeah. Fair enough. Right. Are you now claiming that, that he knew it was a demon? Okay. Fair enough. No, no. Are you claiming that he knew it was a demon? Well, I just know that he thought it was. He thought it was a demon. I mean, that's once again, if that's not correct, sure, I can. I'm not that knowledgeable. That's what I've heard. That's what I've said. Right. So if he thought it was a demon, why would he say he's from God? Because I guess, and, and as I said, I'm not very knowledgeable, but I think he was later on, con not convinced, but supported on the idea that was actually revelation from God. So then he's not lying. He thought it was God. Okay. Well, no, 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 I'm not trying to trap you here. I'm just oh, it sounds like here. it. So that's why. So yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to. Look, I'll, I'm going to spoon feed you a little bit. Okay. So Muhammad made a claim. Forty pieces blessed upon him. Fourteen hundred years ago, in the desert, in a cave, yeah. an angel came to him, told him, "You're a messenger of the people, and go and tell them." And, and over twenty-three years, receives a revelation. This was the claim made by the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. So we've got four possibilities. First possibility, he's lying. He's making it all up. Nothing came to him in the cave. He decided to invent a new religion, and, and that's what he did. Yeah? So there was yeah. no angel visit. There was no nothing. He just lying. Yeah? That's one option. That's option number one. That's the atheist option, I like to call it. Yeah? Okay. I'll bring you the Christian option. So the Christian option is it was an angel. It was a demon pretending to be an angel. Yeah. So he was a victim of deception. Okay. And he yeah. thought he was a messenger of God, but he was being lied to by a demon. But in fact, he was bringing out um, a message from the devil. Yeah. Or he was crazy, delusional, having visions of angels that were not really there. And he just thought to himself he was a messenger of God uh, because he had these delusional ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or he's telling the truth. Okay. Okay. Now, if we can demonstrate to you that he wasn't crazy and we can demonstrate to you he wasn't deceived by a demon and we can demonstrate to you he didn't lie then you'll have to concede he's telling the truth isn't it sure yeah really from shabir over to you or sabor which one do you want to take that on? brother sabor yeah inshallah sabor um yeah I, I, i'll just speak about it briefly and we could then go to brother shabir so the thing is, when it comes to these, uh, I mean, you spoke about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the first thing you mentioned is like a demon. Well, we have to first look at his teaching because what are the like? What is the likelihood that his teachings are uh, inspired by a demon? Well, we have to look at what those teachings entail. Are the teachings telling us to worship idols, sacrifice children? Um, you know, worship demons, uh, call upon the dead, uh, get involved in witchcraft, um, you know, celebrate pagan festivals uh, in the month of December. And none of those things. Uh, we don't find that at all. What we actually find is that there is a direct and clear call to worship the God of Abraham. Now, this is something which our Christian uh, guests who are um, coming onto the stream need to address. If somebody wants to seriously claim that the prophet peace be upon him is inspired by the devil is inspired by demons then why is he calling for the worship of the god of abraham the very god that they profess to believe in so that's a very hard um not to actually crack um yeah. from, from their perspective now what do we know about the life of this man what we basically know is this he broke all social conventions. He went against the social pressure in the land in which he resided. It was a land of paganism. It was a land in which there were idols being worshipped. You had a society which had a strong affinity to idol worship. And they also had this strong tribalistic racism. They had this belief in the superiority of their own tribes and people used to not take the side of justice they used to take the side of uh, uh you know their own tribe and also uh, there was this rife materialism prevailing in which people were competing with each other and there was hedonism in which people were basically looking out for their own pleasure there was womanization there was all these things and in it 
this man comes and he changes the society single-handedly. And he doesn't just change the society, he changes the entire world. The world as we know it today, today, when it comes to something like the science that we study today, or when it comes to the certain legal systems that we have in Europe, the entire world changed because of this man. And he changed the society that believed in all of these vices and all of these ills and all of these uh, social constructs to call them back to the worship of the one God. That is incredibly difficult. Let me just tell you guys um, as, as something, um, uh, uh, our Christian colleagues, something so they can imagine this. Right now it's very difficult for Christians as it is for Muslims in India. But I want you to imagine, imagine if in a Indian city, say uh, city of uh, Delhi, and imagine in a neighborhood, just a neighborhood, the neighborhood is filled with Hindutva, with these people who are calling for idol worship, these people who are very tribalistic, these people who, uh, frankly, have quite demonic traits. Imagine if there's a young man who goes there and he starts proclaiming in front of everybody that none is worthy of worship except the one true God and all of your idols are, are, are worthless and all of your racism amongst each other and these clans you've made and these different type of hierarchies you've made is absolutely unacceptable. All of this materialism that you're involved in is wrong. This type of vices that are spread in society, such as fornication and adultery, all of this is wrong. And to call to pure monotheism and for a moral reform on his own, anybody would say that that guy's going to get killed, that person is probably going to be shredded alive, yet we find the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did this in Arabia, and he succeeded. And if that's not evidence of him being a messenger, then give me an alternative plausible explanation for his behavior. Because you have to give an alternative. You can't just leave it as a blank. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that we know in his life he made many prophecies which came true in his life and even today. So when it comes to the, the, the Bedouins building tall buildings to compete with each other or the prevalence of the, the pen, there are so many reasons. There's a fantastic book called The Forbidden Prophecies in which um, you, we find uh, people from the ancient Mayans all the way to uh, modern false prophets uh, like um, you know that, that Mormon prophet, whatever his name is, Joseph Smith. And what we find is that they all have these prophecies which are vague, which are unfalsifiable, which uh, frankly some of them have been been actually uh, proven to be wrong and we find the opposite with the prophet peace be upon him he's making precise statements he's making uh, statements which are un unlikely to be true not self-fulfilling prophecies and yet we find time and time and time again that those prophecies are coming true and again in the in the end of the book it mentions something that we've been mentioning for a very long time Isaiah 42 Deuteronomy 18 18 there's that fantastic book thank you Al Yemeni that how do you explain it? Who is this prophet from Quran? Who is this man who is going to come and he's going to be from amongst the children of Kedar and he's going to fight the idol worshippers and, and be successful? If you do not accept the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a true messenger of God, fair enough. That's your choice. But you then have to give us an alternative explanation and to come up with crude things, crude things like he's inspired by a demon or, or or this or that i would say this is not even worthy I, I wouldn't even dignify this with a response because the people uttering this know fully well themselves this is just as absurd as claiming that he didn't exist which is sadly what some of them are trying to do now as well Ta -da! <laughs> yeah great okay thanks let me ask you a question. Uh, oh, wait, because I don't know how this thing works. So that's why there's the awkward silence. Forgive me. Um, no problem. Do you want to respond for, to that? Uh, sorry? Would you like to respond to what Brother Sabo just said? Oh, it was just a few thoughts that I had uh, while you were speaking. Um, I did le learn quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, for angels, uh, I don't know about other doctrines, but in uh, Christian faith, I know and I believe that Angels are not really as they're caricatured nowadays with horns and making you worship devilish stuff. And uh, can I can uh, I ask you a question, Mac? Uh, can I ask? Can you a I question? just finish uh, what I'm saying and then? No, not not really, because I've I've answered your question, 
and your and, like, assertion. Can I make a comment on it? Let me just make no. a comment on it, and then you can. No, but what about what angels you about for? No, I'm saying because he mentioned that. Oh well, he. If it was a demon, then uh, why wasn't he doing that? He gave a list of things. And I was just trying to make a comment that we believe angels are actually disguised as, in, um, not angels, demons are, demons are disguised as angels of uh, light and that the devil is the father of lies. So I don't necessarily think that a demon will come and make me sacrifice people or do other stuff like that along those lines. I just believe that they're actually disguised as angels of light. And that they can just proclaim actual good things that will go against God and stuff like that. That's just a thought that I had while you were speaking. Okay, so l let me be frank with you. Do you actually believe that? Well, that's what the in the Bible it says that they, demons can be like. So no, that's I'm asking I'm you a question. I'm 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 seriously asking you this question. Do you actually think that it is possible for a demon to come in the guise of an angel? To go up to a man and to tell that man to stop people from worshipping other than God and to ask them to worship the God of Abraham. Do you actually believe that? And to curse Satan. First of all, I'm not making this like my uh, rebuttal at you with what for what you said. It was just well, a you, you, you may yeah. not, you, that makes you sense. May not, what's the boss asking you? Look, you may not be doing that, but I'm asking you. Do you actually believe well, that? As I said. As a Christian, I believe in the doctrine of Christ, Trinity, and all of that, what the Bible says. Oh, so no, no, that, if someone that, comes along and a demon wants to go against all of Michael, that, he would just Michael. make the claim, well, dude, Jesus didn't really die. Jesus is not God. Ma and Michael. that's good enough to be a demon and go against the Bible and Christ. Ma Michael. Okay, Michael. do you know what? That's, that's very good you've given that answer now because what you've actually highlighted is the crux of the issue. It's not his teachings. So thank you for doing that. It's got nothing to do with his teachings. It's got to do with what you disagree with, which is that Jesus, according to you, is the son of God and died on the cross. So let's just clarify what's happened here. You've shifted the goalpost right now. You've recognized that it's not the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which you can challenge. You're actually challenging his view of Jesus. That's why you would say his teachings are demonic, not the fact that he called towards the worship of the God of Abraham. Once again, you're... Jumping to conclusion, I'm just giving you op like options to what you're saying because you think that there's a dead end and that there's nothing else, and I'm just giving you options to it. I don't no, have no, a conclusion. No, no, for you to give an option, you actually yeah. have to say something coherent, and you're not giving a coherent answer right now. What you're basically doing is this. You're first trying to say, well, his teachings are demonic, and when I explain to you, well, if his teachings, so look, if then, Okay, let's stick with simple logic. If then, so I'm giving you the simple um, in in this in these blanks. If then, I'm giving you some variables to put in. If he was inspired by a demon, then he would be teaching this. And I showed you how your in your insertion that he's a uh, he was inspired by a demon is out of line with the data that we actually have. So the real issue here is not his teachings. Uh, let's just get something out of the way. Isn't it a good thing? Isn't it a good thing that he turned a large section of the world away from the worship of idols towards the worship of the God of Abraham? Do you admit at least that was a good thing? Yes, of course. I mean, I'm not saying he was a bad man or he did bad things. That's good. Yeah, but once okay, again, that's good. I didn't make so a claim. I said if, as well as you're saying if. I didn't no, say he was okay, demon-possessed. Okay. So, 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 now, so now let's move on. Let's, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's say one yeah. thing. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Me. I don't want to yeah. dismiss this point. See, what you've done, Marco, is exactly what Sabor said you've done. You're basically saying you forgot everything he said about what he taught and all these good things because you're saying Satan will sacrifice all that just to get people not to worship Jesus. Yeah, that, that was basically your claim. So what you've basically said, because what the Prophet Muhammad, peace and upon him, goes against what the Bible, you believe what the Bible teaches, that means it must be from a demon because the Bible's from God. And if it's what's in the Quran is op opposite to what the and the teachings of Islam are opposite to what the Bible is teaching, then clearly it can't be from God. So your premise is this, that the Bible is reliable source of information. What the Christianity teaches of the nature of Jesus is true. And anything that goes against that is going against God. That's what you've done now. So you've now put the Bible in the spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I, was, I, I, was, I, I would also add something very important, which is if what you're saying is correct, 
then you have to explain <coughs> why the demon did not take the most parsimonious route to take people away from Jesus. Let's suppose you are correct and that your worldview is correct. Therefore, a demon enters the world and there's all these people who have never heard of Jesus. So they're not worshipping Jesus. They're not believing in Jesus. So he, she, the most parsimonious thing he could do is just leave them alone. Instead, what he does is he turns them towards the God of, God of Abraham, introduces them to Jesus, and then says, don't worship Jesus. That's the most unparsimonious demonic idea ever. That type of demon should be sacked from his job because his best <laughs> bet is not to introduce people to Jesus and Abraham, even according to what you're saying. Yeah. And Marco, can I ask you a question as well? Can, I can, just can Satan, according something? to what you believe as a Christian, can Satan oppose himself? So can I just speak as well? Um, once again, I that wasn't my definitive answer. Like what to well, whatever you said, my friend. It wasn't like I took it all and said, "Look, well, he was demon possessed." I was just trying to say some thoughts that I was getting whilst you were. But we just want to smash that out. The, yeah, but we're just going to smash this demon possession nonsense out of the water for good. Because the only one who comes with this claim is you Christians. So we're demolishing it. Okay, and Fair you're going to realize I you're mean... going to realize how it's going to bounce back on you as well. But anyway. So, you, according to Jesus, can talk. Satan oppose himself? It's a very great productive talk when I can't really get a word in, I guess. Well, no, because all you're doing is you're saying, I didn't say what you're saying. Yeah, because you're making it look like I just gave the definitive answer. No, he was demon-possessed. But I'm just telling you thoughts that I had in possible alternatives. Every time you come with your... Look, demon-possession is what we're dealing with. You're, not, you're saying that's not your position, Yeah. So even if it's your position or not, I'm removing it from our list. Yeah. So suppose then a massive job demonstrating to you, forget the Bible now, just forget Christianity now. What suppose then he's shown you how this man is teaching to worship God. Yeah. To praise yeah. God. Just Satan. Yeah. Right. Now, yeah. as a Christian, <clears throat> uh, you're a Christian. Yeah. You've got a problem now because I, what you're accusing the Prophet sorry, Muhammad, yeah. listen, what you're accusing the Prophet Muhammad, peace and peace upon him of, Jesus was also accused of by the Jews in your Bible. Yeah. Right. And according to Jesus, Satan cannot oppose himself. A yeah. house that is divided cannot stand. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Does the Quran oppose Satan? As I said, I don't know about the Quran. So. Well, yeah, it does. Okay. Tells you to seek refuge for him. He's the accursed. Of course it does. Okay. Right. So if the Quran opposes Satan, can Satan be the source of it? According to Jesus. Well, according to what Jesus said in the Bible in that context, when it was not referred to him, no. No, that's the standard. Satan cannot oppose himself. A house that is divided cannot stand. Yeah? So therefore, you as a Christian should never come with this claim because you know Jesus says this can't happen. Now, here's the problem you've got. Why do you believe Paul had a vision of an angel on the road to, or a vision of Jesus on the road to Damascus? That's uh, your question for me? Yep. Well, in the Gospels, he's talks about in the letters of Paul's, uh, Paul, he did gather with some of the apostles and they had clear, sound agreement on their, on his teachings, about Paul's teachings. So, the opposite, mate. Uh, Complete opposite. The, the yes, disciples no, of did. Jesus were opposed to Paul's teachings. No, they, he gathered with, he was with Peter and uh, he was with Luke and uh, all of that and it, they weren't okay. opposed to each Ma other. Marco, Marco, Marco. Luke wasn't a disciple of Jesus. Yeah, but he's one of the Gospels and he was close to the high eyewitnesses. No, but Luke wasn't a disciple of Jesus. Who were the disciples of Jesus? No, he in wasn't. Jerusalem? Yeah, I said All he right. wasn't, but he was. Oh, close who were head of the church in yeah. Jerusalem? And according to the Bible, who's the head of the church? Peter, James, and John, yeah? Who's. So, sorry, you lagged? I lagged. Okay. The, the head of the church in Jerusalem was James, Peter, and John, yes? I honestly, I don't know. I'm not According sure. According to your Bible, in Jerusalem, the head of the church was James. Okay. Yeah. And now was Paul's teachings in alignment with theirs or against theirs? From what I read in the New Testament, I believe that there was a segment where they disagreed on something. What but I know that on? in other parts, he met with Peter. He met with all these other disciples and... 
there wasn't any conflict on whether Paul was reliable oh, or not. Okay, you're completely wrong. Which tells Where me you don't know say he's right. not. Where does it say he's not? Okay, so Paul was teaching the Jews the laws were finished. Don't circumcise your kids. Don't follow the law. It's done now. Mm -hmm. Which is completely contrary to what the disciples taught. And Paul had to take the Nazarite vow to show that he wasn't teaching this thing, which he was teaching. Where in the Bible does it say, like, Paul is wrong and he's teaching the wrong stuff? Acts. Acts what? Um, oh, Hashim, what's, what's, the, what's the verse, man? Is Acts 25 or, something, or 19 or something? Yeah, look for the Nazareth vow. You'll find yeah, it. Nazareth vow. Give me one second, man. So do you accept if... If uh, Paul is teaching something contrary to the disciples of Jesus, then what his revelation he's receiving is not from Jesus. Well, yeah, if he contradicts the people that were with Jesus at the Acts time. 21. Yeah. Beautiful. That's what I want to hear. So the disciples of Jesus should be the authority, yeah? Yeah. All right. But you don't believe that. What, that the disciples of Jesus should be the authority over Paul? Yeah, we do believe that. No, like the authority, but you don't believe in all of that. You believe it's all corrupted and you don't know who was who and what. No, 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 no. Was. We believe the disciples of Jesus had authority over Paul. This is based upon, look, look. Paul had a vision on the road to Damascus. Whatever that vision was blinded him. I yeah. Think, for three years. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't years, he, but he was blinded. It was, it was three years, wasn't it? Was it three years, Hashi? How long was he blinded for? No, he um, went to meet a person and uh, until he met Ananias. Ananias told him that yeah. he blinded by yeah. the light. Yeah. 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 And, and, and then then for 10 years, he received this revelation, yeah? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, what did you say, Mark, what the light was? The, uh, the demons could come as angels, as light as well. And Satan's... Uh, can disguise themselves as the angels of light. Yeah, so the Satan also is known as the... Um, the messenger Father of light Wise. or something like that, yeah? Uh, yeah. And, and here's, a, here's a further question for you, Marco, while I'm looking for this, yeah? Um, if you were Satan, what would you <laughs> okay. do? If you have a choice, who would you corrupt, yeah? Send a man to pagan Arabs, tell them to worship the God of Abraham, or corrupt the message of Jesus? I honestly don't know what I would do. <laughs> I don't know about that question. I don't okay, know Jesus has just that. left this earth, yeah? And, and you come claiming to be the, the continuation of Jesus's teachings, which yeah. is completely contrary to the <laughs> disciples of Jesus. And you invent a whole new idea about salvation and the law and all of these things that goes against all the teachings of Jesus prior. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you corrupt the message of Jesus because the disciples of Jesus did not change worship in the synagogue, the dietary laws, all of these, they continued. Yeah. But it was Paul who tried to change everything. And if you look at the church fathers, all their inspiration is Paul, nobody else. So Paul is the one in the history that changed the course of what Jesus taught. Clearly. The, the, the idea of original sin, who created that idea? Paul. Fully man and fully God, who created that idea? Paul. The disciples didn't believe this thing. It's all coming from Paul. And when you yeah. see the church fathers quoting these ideas, it's always Paul. Always the letters. And they're not even all Paul's letters. That's the funny thing. Well, so, second, Marco, just... what is your main contention for the prophet, uh, for the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What is your main contention? Um, as I said, I don't... I generally wanted to know from knowledgeable people what is the core... Like, where, where's the trust... Um, that they have in Muhammad, like what? What is it exactly? That's all I wanted to know. I mean, I don't have yeah. in my mind that I say, so, "Well, he did this or he was better," and we can't believe him. I just so, wanted to know, to be fair, people that are knowledgeable, what do they see in him and trust in him? Sure. I mean, that's a that's a really good, and I really like your attitude towards being open and asking these questions. So, the book that Al Yemeni just held up, uh, the Forbidden yeah. Prophecies, in the private chat, I'm going to send you the link to that. And you can download it and you can read it for free and I'm sure you'll you'll enjoy it. And then you can email us and we can answer you questions as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you, you have the right attitude. You, you, you just need to explore, you know, why, why we believe uh, he is a true messenger. Fair enough. Yeah. So, Marco, in terms, in terms of the message of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do you know that it's no different to um, the message of the previous prophets? 
like Jesus, Moses, uh, Abraham, uh, so on? Yeah, I mean, from what I've uh, what I know, I mean, I don't have a wrong concept of Muhammad saying bringing or doing bad stuff. I just I know that it's a majority of the stuff of giving to the poor and uh, all the concept of uh, Yahweh and the God of Abraham and Moses is there. So I know so that. So, whom do you do? Do you think it's the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Do you think it's closer to that of? Jesus, Moses, Abraham, and so on? Or is it closer to what the church taught with regards to the concept of God in particular? Um, I can't really answer that because I'm not really knowledgeable in what he said. You, and you're did, a Christian, and right? You, you, you mentioned the Trinity, you mentioned the crucifixion. Oh, about Christ things. Christianity, yes. I mean, about Muhammad and stuff, I'm not knowledgeable. No, what no, I meant the, the message. I'm, I'm trying to contrast the message of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the prophets of the Bible. Because if you if you look at the core message of all the prophets in the Bible, yeah. none of them worshipped a triune God. Yes? Okay. None of them okay. said the only way you can be saved is by the crucifixion or the sacrifice of a human being. So their core message was the same, to do the will of God. Do you agree with that? Look, I know... I'm not very ver well versed as well with the Old Testament, but I, no, no, know, this is the Bible, I, I can hear friend, to what you're Testament. saying, and I understand what you're saying. And this is throughout the, the Bible, Bible, including the message of Jesus Christ. It's not just the Old Testament. Yeah. No, because you're talking about the prophets and all of that. So, yeah, I so I'm saying the prophets you were talking are in Christ. agreement with Jesus, and Jesus' message is almost identical to that of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam to worship one true God. So if I asked you who is the most, uh, who is your who is your role model in life? Well, it would be Jesus, of course. Uh, Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. So during the time of Jesus' ministry, whom did Jesus pray to and worship? Well, the Father. One person or three persons? No, just the Father. So one person, right? Yeah, the Father. Whom do you pray and worship to? I pray to God, to my One God, which is the definition of a God. triune God. Sorry? So a triune God? Yeah, I pray to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, so can we agree based on that, you do not pray and worship like Jesus? Okay. Uh, I mean, disagree a bit, but yeah. It's, it's, it's a fact, isn't it? Look, when Jesus was asked a specific question, how shall we pray? And he yeah. taught them how to pray. You know the Lord's Prayer? Yeah, Lord, hallowed be your name. You can come. All of that. Our Father in heaven. That's the first. Yeah. That's how it starts. Yeah. Yes. Hallowed be thy yeah. name comes later on. But first yeah. it starts with our Father in heaven. Yeah. Why did Jesus not teach them to pray in the name of the triune <clears throat> God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in heaven? Why did he direct them the same way that he would pray, only to the Father? Um, yeah, I understand how it can uh, look confusing, and because uh, we're talking about it's not confusing, Trinity and all my friend. That. It's, it's very clear. If you ask me, if you if I had a role model, yeah, yeah, and I claim that he's my role model, then yeah. I would actually follow that role model. I wouldn't yeah. follow the church. I wouldn't follow my parents. Mm. I wouldn't follow my friends. I would follow that person whom I claim to be my role model. Yeah. The, right? just the what are you doing that... right now, like many Christians I, I, I speak to, they all say they love Jesus Christ. But when yeah. we actually scrutinize that claim from the Bible itself, which you believe to be the word of God, yeah. you somehow go against Jesus Christ. Because Jesus in uh, John 13, I believe, said that if you love me, you will follow my teachings, follow yeah. my commandments. So when Jesus yeah. tells you specifically to pray only to the Father and worship only the Father, you do not do that. You go against that. Hence, you do not love Jesus based on the statement of Jesus. Because yeah. you I would follow his commandments and his teachings. I disagree with that. And I understand why you're, why would you disagree how with you're that? coming to this conclusion. No, no, honestly, because... I want to know why you disagree with that. Are you disagreeing with me or with Jesus? Oh, uh, with you, because I understand the conclusions that you're making. But 
as I okay. read the, so in the New Testament. What? Can I just finish? Can yeah, I just yeah, say sure. this? Go on, uh, go on. As I read the Bible and I read it, yeah. uh, the whole New Testament, in right. different verses, uh, it's claimed that Jesus is God. So we just have to, that's what Christians do. And I, reading the whole New Testament in the Bible, we just come up with it. We see what it says in it. And, it, and if we see clearly, and we do see clearly that Jesus is claimed uh, to be God and divinity, then we have to be like, okay, well, he's claiming to be God as well. So, so he's just coming and the Christian doctrine just says he's showing us additionally to come in here, being in the flesh and dying for our sins. He's showing us a what uh, because he was a Jew, showing us a way as well to be in fellowship with the Father and God and the prayers and all of that. No, no, but hold, hold on. If Jesus himself was God, why yeah. is he praying to God? Because God doesn't pray, does he? Uh, as I said, he's also as well showing because he's a Jew as well. He's full human as well. He's a Jew and he's showing the people the way. Of okay, how to so do if things. he's showing people to pray, then yeah. why is he showing them to pray only to one person? And you pray um, to three persons. You're still, even if you go by your argument, you're still wrong, my friend. So if you read the entire New Testament, and yeah. the entire Old Testament, did anyone in the entire Bible ever pray to a triune God? But I guess that's where we have to disagree because I am pretty sure but and you, content with the, what the Bible says, claiming the Ma Jesus divinity, and I am sure no, about no, hold that. On, hold on. We're not Marco, talking about Jesus' divinity Marco. because I can tell you for a fact, Jesus never himself claimed to be Almighty God. But that is that is a different topic altogether. I'm asking you, did you see, after reading the entire Bible, I don't know if you read the entire Bible, but from what you have read from the Bible, did you ever see any person whether he's a prophet or non-prophet, even the disciples, even the apostles, did anyone ever submit and worship and pray to a triune God? What I'm saying is that there's continual revelation, and uh, I do see and After believe Bible, that Jesus did claim divinity and that uh, it was given to him divinity by the disciples and all of that. So, What do you mean by I, continual revelation? Are you, saying, are you saying outside the Bible there is... Yeah, there's revelation outside the Bible? No, in the Bible that there was continual revelation. Okay, so, so show me where in the Bible did anyone pray to a triune God? But that's what I'm saying, that it, it didn't really... <laughs> okay. It's not there, just, just say, come to on, my friend. Come to the conclusion. Be, be honest, I do come... be sincere, and just admit that no one in the Bible ever worshipped or prayed to a triune God. This is a church doctrine. That's the reason it took them over 350 years after Jesus to come to an agreement, I think even more than that, in the year 381, so 350 years after, they established the doctrine of the Trinity. If it was clearly mentioned in the Bible, and if Jesus had advocated this, and other prophets had advocated this, they wouldn't need to have this several, what is it, church uh, councils, to come to a conclusion and derive a triune God as Almighty God. When Can Jesus I says... The only true God is a father. Do you know that? In John 17, 3. Can I bring it back to the point? Yeah. yeah. Can I bring it back to the point of Paul? Uh, can you tell me that and finish? Because, dude, I was here for a long time and I got to go. Yeah, well, okay, I, so I, I want, to, I want yeah, you go to go and research what I'm going to say to you now. Ah, uh, sure. All right. So I'm, I'm going to tell you what Paul teaches. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to show you what the disciples do with his teaching. Okay. And then I want you to accept before you leave, there was a contradiction between their yeah. teachings. That's all I want you to do. All right. I, I, yeah, I did leaves, say I would that like, there was. Uh, Brother Shabir somewhere. to have a few words with him, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. I'll let him do the nice. I'll do the rough part, then he can, Shabir can do the nice. Part. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it. All right, one second, Marco. So yes, this, is what Paul, this is what Paul says <laughs> in uh, Galatians 2 16. No, that a person is not justified by the works of the law but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Jesus Christ, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. But if in seeking to be justified in Christ, we Jews find ourselves also among the sinners. Doesn't that mean that Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. If I rebuild what I destroyed, then I really would be a lawbreaker. Yeah, for though the law, I die to the law, so that I might live for God. So Paul's teaching Jews, the law's finished. Do you accept that? Um. <clears throat> There's no justification in the law, only in the faith in Jesus Christ. 
because I'm trying to remember other stuff that Paul said. Well, I'm, well, I'm reading this, what Paul says. Yeah, I know, but I, I got to know as well what other stuff Paul said. All right. Uh, so do you accept Paul said that, that you're not justified by the law? Jews are not justified by the law, yeah? I mean, me, that I'm not a Jew, I'm not justified by law. I know I'm that. not talking about you, mate. I'm talking about Paul teaching Jews that they don't need to keep the law. Yeah, that salvation is with faith in uh, right. Jesus. And now, did the disciples believe the same thing about Jews? About Jews. Did they say otherwise? Yep. Where? Well, I'll just tell you. So we've established that that's what Paul was teaching, yeah? Yeah, that we're justified by faith, not by works. Not, not the by law. the law. So if you're a Jew, the law doesn't apply no more, yeah? Well, yeah, but for salvation. What? Yeah, to come to salvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. So this is Paul's teachings. He's on the road to Damascus. This thing has entered him and told him that he's uh, an apostle to the Gentiles, apparently. And that he, and it, he's going to Jews and telling them now, you're not justified by the law. The law's finished. Da, 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 da. Yeah? Agreed? Yep. All right. So just bear me a second. Um... I think it's Acts 15, one second. Uh, oh, uh, one second. Someone else can talk while I'm looking, don't worry. Uh, Shabir, you want to have a go with the problem talking? No, oh, no, not a problem at all. Actually, Marco, hi. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. I don't know if he can. Can you hear me? Yeah. Wait, you can yeah, hear me? Yeah, excellent. Excellent. I can. I can hear you now, Marco. Do you know, if, if, we, if I can just take a different, slightly different angle to what you are saying, uh, the last remark you just made, you stated that it's by faith and not works, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and what, that would uh, give you salvation, correct? Well, it's not the clear, you know, technical... Uh, of course, I understand. You know, verse, I understand. But yeah. yeah. Right, okay. But here, here is uh, the parallel that needs to be drawn because the question uh, uh, revolves around uh, whether the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a messenger sent by the creator, okay? Now, if I, if I were to ask you very briefly, any prophet that came from the creator logically came to guide humanity. Is that correct? Is that your understanding? Yeah. Yeah? Excellent. Yeah. Now, you, yes, excellent. Now, if we were to take it from uh, the belief perspective, the way the word belief is understood, okay, we have Jesus Christ saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Yeah. Mark 12, 29, okay? Uh, if we take it to Deuteronomy 6, 4, we have the same thing. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Yeah. The prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came. What did he teach? The, the Lord is one. Yeah. Okay? So there's consistency in what they have brought. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Right. Excellent. Now, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, according to the scriptures, is also saying, Matthew 5, 20, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall by no means enter the kingdom. Now, when he says your righteousness, how would you define righteousness? As faith or as actions? I know because I'm remembering how Abraham, he believed and it was credited to him as righteousness. No. So, not a, faith. excellent. 
Excellent. That's fine. But Abraham, uh, you are talking uh, and uh, to Jesus, when Jesus is saying it, okay, is he talking only about that? Or is he talking about actions also? Because he referred to something. He said, unless your righteousness is better than the scribes and the Pharisees. Okay. Yeah. So was that in the context of actions and yeah. how, you how you lived your life? It has some relation to that. Yes, I can agree to that. Now, excellent. You see, the, the, the question I started with, or uh, what I posited to you, is that prophets are sent for the guidance of humanity, correct? Yeah. Now, would that be in action also? Uh, from, like, wait, can you repeat that? No, not a problem. When uh, the prophets are sent by God for the guidance yeah. of humanity, does that include how the human being should act? So, for example, if I were to tell you, right, uh, uh, there's an individual who is intent on wanting to commit adultery. Okay. If, he, if he says, look, I have faith in Christ, but commits the act itself, is that valid? Yeah. Sorry? If that's valid, no. Why? If he, has, if he just says, I have faith in Christ and does something bad, if that's valid. Yes. Is it valid? By valid, do you mean like morally correct or like it stands? Uh, meaning, meaning in the sight of the creator, would, be, would it be acceptable? Would it lead him no. to go to the kingdom of heaven? Well, according to the Bible and stuff, yeah, it would still lead him to go to the kingdom of heaven. Did you, did you just say that he can commit adultery and still he would be fine to go to paradise? Yeah. That's in what the Christian Bible faith. teaches. In Christian faith. That we don't well, well, I believe that we don't lose salvation. So that's not what Jesus says. I believe we don't lose salvation. So Shabir yeah. just quoted you it. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you should never enter the kingdom of heaven. So you now you see this the, 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 the problem here, Marco, is this that if then he was to ask you to also worship the devil but the faith is correct, would that also be valid? Well, contradict what we know about God and stuff. So. But that's not the point. The point is about the action. You see, uh, so for example, in Matthew 6 also, yeah, yeah. It, 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 is, it is reported, and he said that lay up not your treasures on earth, where earth and moth destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Rather lay up your treasures in heaven, where earth and moth do not destroy, yeah, yeah. nor yeah. thieves break in and steal. Was that talking about actions? It's about faith and storing up our faith within the heaven. In right. God. Right. Well, if, <laughs> if you are talking only faith, whenever there's an action being committed, by a believer would the prophet teach him how to do it the correct way as the creator would it intend it yeah it would wouldn't it yeah right so the first thing that you'd need is a clear understanding of what the creator is intending for the believer right. yes and yeah. then the second thing would necessarily follow that the actions should reflect what one accepts or believes the way the word belief is understood correct yeah Okay, so if the creator, according to Jesus, says, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, yeah? And mm -hmm. he further says, he further says in 1916 of Matthew, the guy comes to him and tells Christ, Master, what good thing shall I do to enter into life? What did Jesus reply? He said, keep to the, com he said, keep to the commandments. Mm -hmm. Now, do the commandments tell you to do good or do they tell you to do bad? To do good. Okay, if they tell you to do good, okay, your uh, logic, yes, or the belief, as I said, the belief has to be consistent with your actions, correct? Sure. Yeah. Yes, excellent. So if you believe something that is true, and then you go and act the way it says you shouldn't act, is that valid? You should have or shouldn't? You should not. So if your belief is correct and you do an action that goes against the belief, would that be valid? You're incorrect. You're doing something that goes against it. It, would, it wouldn't be valid, would it? 
you be going against it. Yeah. Right. If you go against this, can you go to paradise? Well, as I say, Christian faith, I believe <clears throat> we don't lose salvation. So no, no, I'm not asking whether you lose. Deprive me. A sin doesn't deprive no, me of. Uh, not. You see, we logically took it to Jesus. Is that that's the point? That's what Shabir is trying to explain to you. What you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect my salvation. Jesus says it does. Well, also it says that I've gained eternal life with him. And I believe eternal life is forever eternal. And no, well, nowhere else the in the Bible does it tell me that I can, if you do this, Jesus you lose tells you eternal to keep life. The law. Jesus tells you to keep the law. Not you. Look, what we're establishing here, and I understand what Shabir has done. But what we're establishing here is I'm not really concerned about Gentiles right now. I'm interested in Paul's teachings to Jews. Yeah. Okay. Can you, yeah, tell me that. And then like, right. I so, go. so you accept we've established that Paul did teach the Jews are not justified by the law no more. Yeah. From the passage you gave me. Yeah. Right. Good. So this now is in Acts 21, 17. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Shabir, you can continue that line. I just wanted no, to. That's fine. That's fine. Lock, Carry lock, on. Lock this down. Cause this is the point we were trying to make. Yeah. And then, so, and when we would come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us into James and all the elders were present. And when he saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe that um, and they are all zealous for the law. And they are informed that thou teachest Jews, uh, which are among the Gentiles, to forsake Moses. Yeah. So they're saying there's thousands of Jews here in Jerusalem who've heard what you've been telling Jews that they don't have to keep the law no more. Yeah. And then they said, uh, saying they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. So what you have to do is go with these four men, which have a vow on them, take them and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them that they may shave their heads. And all may know that those things which they're informed of concerning you, are nothing yeah so basically what the disciples are saying these guys here have heard your teaching something completely against the teachings of jesus yeah mm -hmm. that you're telling jews to break the law right and they themselves obviously were observing the law to show this isn't true go to retake the nazarite vow to demonstrate you're not doing this thing yeah now does that tell you they were in agreement with paul or in opposition to paul's teaching we had a disagreement on a one of something. I remember me saying that actually beforehand. Yeah, I right. remember. So the disagreement is on whether you should keep the law or not for salvation. I mean, if I don't know if I can agree with that. Statement. Well, I just showed you that. Just read the verses. Yeah, but, yeah, but I, two fourteen. Write, again, write it down. Get a pen out. No, Galatians, I know. I already have it. I already have it. Yeah. So it's Galatians fine. two fourteen and twenty one seventeen. Yeah. Right, write them down and ask yourself. And, and then next time you come on, I want you to reconcile it. I mean, sure. It's, I got no problem with that. <laughs> You'll have a huge yeah. problem with that. <laughs> I, actually, I'm actually Marco, pretty okay. Thank you. Uh, actually, brother, just following on from what brother Hamza said, Marco, you see yeah. the, 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 the impossible uh, wait, sorry, situation. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, not a this, problem. Then, not then a I can... I can go. All right. Okay. Not a problem. Not a problem at all, sir. Yeah. You see, you see, Marco, the impossible situation, unfortunately, with a lot of our Christian brethren mm -hmm. is this, that where Christ, according to the Bible, is making explicit statements about how they should conduct their lives is clearly and utterly contradicted by a belief system, which is not only illogical at its uh, base, but it follows on and overrules what Christ actually is stating. So if, for example, just uh, as a going away thing for you to think about, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 16, it's a famous verse everybody knows and it's common that is used, when he said, by their fruits you shall know them. Are you familiar yeah. with that verse? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Do grapes gather from thorns and figs from thistles? Yeah. Every good tree will bear? Good fruit. Good fruit. Yeah, Every yeah. evil tree will bear evil fruit. A good tree will not bear evil fruit. A bad tree will not bear good fruit. By their fruits, you shall know them. What are the fruits we are talking about here? Our deeds, our actions. And who is saying this? 
uh, Jesus. Okay, if Jesus is telling you, and you know what he's mm -hmm. talking about here? He's actually talking about the definition or distinction you can make about prophets. Mm -hmm. Now, if he, is, if he is saying to you that the prophets are going to be distinguished as to whether they are from the creator or not by their actions, then necessarily and logically following, the believers in that prophet will also go with their actions. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Now, those actions can only be consistent if the belief, the mindset, is the one that the creator had intended by revealing it to the prophets who revealed it to the human beings. So in, a, in finality, when, the, when uh, uh, Jesus, according to Mark 12, 29, says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Yeah. He is telling you something very clear, that there is no distinction. You, know, you don't go into any kind of mental gymnastics to try and ascertain whether God can be one, three, five, fifty, three million, whatever. Yeah, the perfect. creator is one. Yeah. And one, 1 John chapter 4, verse 2, just for your benefit, it says there, test all spirits. Mm -hmm. The prophet that confesses that Christ came in the flesh, that prophet is from God. Now, I'm sure you will know that Muhammad, the prophet, peace be upon him, did confess that Christ came in the flesh. And according to that standard, he is a true prophet of God. Consider it anyway. And All thank right. you so you much. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. Uh, I'll bring in Randall on because he's a Christian and doesn't believe Jesus is God. <laughs> and um, what was the other thing you said? Oh, and the law is important. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. This, is, this should be interesting. Yes. So, you... so oh, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, go, go, go. Just tell us your position. No, go, go. Oh, so uh, brother, what was his name? Marco that was just on? Was, was yes. that his name? Yeah. Oh, are you still with us? Yeah, yeah. Who, oh, who? Okay. Well, uh, you know, I used to think like him for a long time because I was a part of a Western church growing up. And they taught us this false doctrine, too, that as long as you go to church on Sunday, which is not even the, the true Shabbat anyways, it's on Saturday. But anyways, um, if you go to church every Sunday and you tell Jesus that you're sorry and you get baptized, you can pretty much go do whatever you want and just be an anarchist. You know, that, that is what the modern Christian movement is teaching people. But this is obviously not true. Now, as far as Jesus or Yeshua, Isa, not being God, that's very clear as well, too, and very important. I, I, I do believe that he's a Messiah. But if he was literally God when he was being crucified, why would he say, Father, why have you forsaken me? So he's saying that to himself. Why have I forsaken myself? That doesn't make any sense. Um, but th that's a separate issue. But going back to the law, let's read from Hebrews chapter 10. And let's look at uh, verse 26. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice of sins. I mean, so it's... it's Randall, I'm sorry, do you know go ahead. Do you know what your problem is? What's that? Who wrote the book of Hebrews? I mean, does, does that matter? I mean, some people say that it's Paul, but some people disagree, and they say that, you know, it was James, but, but I, go I, on. I, just, just so, so you're saying, does it matter to know who wrote something? I mean, if we're reading from the Bible and it's supposed to be the inspired word of God, ah, then we, should, okay. we should take it. We should take it at its uh, at least at its face value. Right. right? So, so so the, the point that I'm trying to make is going back to this verse in Hebrews chapter no, but, 10. But, but, Randall, Randall. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, 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 I have to take that rug from under your feet. Sure. Why do you believe the Bible's the inspired word of God? And I mean, <laughs> where, how, how is this related to the, the law not being in I'll, I'll explain I'm actually it to you. agreeing with you. Uh, no, okay. I'll explain it to you though, because you're quoting from the book of Hebrews. 
and you're saying it's reliable because it's the inspired word of God. So what I'm trying to understand is, why do you believe that? Well, uh, even in uh, the Quran, it, you know, whoa, it speaks whoa, about whoa, the, the whoa, people. Whoa. Do you believe the Quran's a reliable source of information? Sure. Because they, 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 they are our cousins, our brothers uh, from Abraham. So the Quran says Jesus wasn't crucified. Do you believe that? Frozen. Um, no, because we have eyewitness testimony. No, do you believe Jesus? No, no, I, I know what the bitch you're wanting to get into. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just, and, I'm just and, and, Randall, you're, 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 you're breaking up a little bit. That debate with you, but just switch off your camera. It might be easier. I, I still, and willfully, if we deliberately sin, then there may not be a sacrifice left for us, but the law. So how, how does this Christian brother reconcile that part? And Don't that, worry about that Christian brother, ahead. Randall. We're concerned about you now. We're not worried about him now. <laughs> okay, Marco's okay, gone. sure. <laughs> Marco's got his own issues. You're going to have your own issues now. So let's just work this out. So you said the Quran's a reliable source of information. The Quran says Jesus was not crucified. Do you believe that? Uh, I, I don't believe in this particular part. Right. So then you don't believe the Quran's a reliable source of information, then, do you? Well, it has it has reliable parts of information in it, sure. But well, we can dispute some of it as well. How would you ascertain what's reliable and what's not? Well, just like if we're having a legal case, right? You look at the, the, the primary uh, information, just like right now, I have a King James Bible right here, right? But yeah. it's been proven time and time again that there have been certain things, you know, added in, like in the book of John, right? Mm. Uh, about the verse, the verse about the, the, the Trinity in mm. first John. So we have to get a broad spectrum. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is you don't believe that's the inspired word of God. I do. I do. The bit that's been added in is the inspired word of God. It's like this, right? If I tell you a story and then I tell you to relay that to someone else and then they relay it to someone else, things get lost in translation. And things get lost in translation. For us to be in or... What? Sorry? How do things get added in lost in translation? Uh, I'm having a signal issue. Yeah, switch off your camera. Might give maybe easier. Right. No, switch off your camera. Uh, just put here. you just keep just. It might be easier. Is that better? No. Uh yes. Oh, it's better. It'd be Things different. were fine on my end. I... Oh, okay. Am I having any connect connectivity issues? You you were stuttering a little bit. Now it's okay. 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 Uh, I think we get off track there. Uh, repeat what you were saying. Oh, okay. So ba basically, um, we talk about the reliability of the, the, the Bible. Okay. So you said it's the inspired word of God. Yeah. So why do you believe fabricated verses in the Bible and the inspired word of God? Well, I was specifically mentioning the King James Version. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So John 1 6, isn't it? John 1, is it what, John 1 5 7 or something? First John five seven. Y yes. Okay. Is that is that fabricated or not? Uh yeah, that was that was thrown in there. So sure. is that the inspired word of God or not? is that the inspired word of God or not? That is not. No. That's not. But so, so, if we so, you're, you're, so what you're saying is people can fabricate the word of God, yeah, and just add it in as they like. And if people do that, then I believe that they're going to be damned. <laughs> Yeah, hell. but how would you know? But how would you know? Because we have objective good and evil. These things no, have no, to how, exist. How would you know what's fabricated and what's not? Why are you reading a Bible that's containing fabricated verses? Look at it. Well, because I like to read from other sources too, like the the, the Sefer Bible, and like to look into the Septuagint and all these different uh, sources, and then I look at what 
is being consistently said over and over. And that particular verse is highly disputed, but it's also not uh, absolutely necessary for my salvation either. What about the story of the adulterous woman? Do you think that's the word of God? No, because it, it's been disproven. So, so that's another fabrication in the Bible you read, yeah? So what you're saying is your word of God can be corrupted. Is that what you're saying? Anybody's can. If, if, if I had a book, right, and I said, hey, this is the Quran, and I handed it to you, and you believed that it was the true version of the Quran, but I added in some things in there that you weren't privy to, would that make you a bad person? Would it make you a... Uh, a disloyal believer? No, 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 it would be, no, no, no. What it would do? Because look, when you read the New Testament, you think you're reading history. You, 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 can I ask you another two further questions, if you don't mind? Do you believe the authors of the Bible were disciples of Jesus, the authors of the Gospels? Uh, say that one more time. Do you believe the authors of the Gospels were disciples of Jesus? The officers of the Gospels. The authors, the authors of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Oh, I mean, come on. These people were killed for this belief. You, no, you don't do get you beheaded. The authors of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, were disciples of Jesus? Yes. Okay. And do you believe they were eyewitnesses to what they wrote? I mean, they they were there. Right. So you So you believe... Let me tell you, I think I, I know what you believe now. I think I've diagnosed your problem. And then I'm going to let the boys deal with it. Right. So here's your problem. You believe that the authors of the Gospels were disciples of Jesus, that they were writing eyewitness testimony, which they firsthand witnessed, and that anything that they forgot or erred on, the Holy Spirit would remind them and correct them. I don't and believe that, no. You don't believe the Holy Spirit corrected them. Where's, no. where's, where's the God's inspiration come from now? You just got guys who are eyewitnesses writing stuff. Where's the Holy? Where, where's the inspiration from God now? No, I, I I didn't say that the the Holy Spirit would correct a book. If if I have a book that's written by men held within my hand, oh wait, can you guys still hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, something funny was going on with my screen there. Um, you know, once things are written down. If someone lies about it, that's not God's problem. That's man's problem. So, what, so, and, so, we got the, so, so your basic premise so far, then let's, let's do the two, first two. Disciples of Jesus, eyewitnesses. Um, where's the, God's inspiration? Where's that part coming in? I mean, then we have to challenge the whole. I mean, we have to go back to, to Genesis and the creation of man. No, who's, who's his, we can get into you know, biology, in, the, the, the cradle gospel. of life. In the Gospels, who's inspired by God? I mean, all, all of the writings. I mean, I'm specifically challenging the King James Bible. And the no, reason no, no, why forget, I brought... Forget, forget which Bible. Let's just go back to Bible manuscripts. Okay. Authors of the Gospels, do you believe they're inspired by God or not? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So and what does being inspired by God mean? I mean, the same way that I've been inspired by God uh, to give a message, you know, uh, I, I walked, you know, nine miles across my city, uh, you know, carrying a cross after I survived a gunshot to the head where where seven other people were, were hit and uh, certain signs were revealed to me um, to go on to this mission that, that I've been on. And I believe that God reveals himself to people in numerous ways. Right, so, so if one of these authors made a mistake, the mistake would just remain there? No, these authors didn't make a mistake, but certain people take translations, certain versions, and they want to you know, add certain things in there. Just like with that verse with First John from that, that transcript, there's certain churches that say, hey, we need to perpetuate this certain doctrine, so you know, we need to add this in there. Just like you have Shia and Sunni, and you have these certain divisions about how things are ran— and it can be very difficult to get okay, down to the lies? truth, but my what criteria... About, what, what about blatant lies? Is, uh, uh, any of the authors wrote blatant lies? I mean, if they did, then, yeah, hey, God have mercy upon them when they die, you know? Right, so do you believe in the zombies in the Gospel of Matthew? 
about being brought back from the dead. About the zombies coming out of the yeah, the crucifixion coming out of the ground and entering into the cities and towns and such. Well, if it's if it's written there and it hasn't been disproven to me, then I'm I'm gonna take it on faith. Right. So you believe something happened even though history's silent upon it. Wouldn't you think that'd make more than news? Zombies coming out of the ground and going into the well, town well, of the cities. Do you, second, do you, do you... Wouldn't wouldn't that wouldn't that be more miraculous than one man rising after three days? If multitudes came out of the ground and went into the towns and cities, don't you think that'd be I a mean, talking I point? It, I mean, I think it's more miraculous about you know Muhammad, you know, splitting the moon in half. It's not going to help you, mate. It's not going to help you. Okay. Do you not think <laughs> that Jewish and Romans would write about zombies? I mean, but you know, does that help me get to salvation? No, no. What it helps you do is understand that Matthew's just lying. The author of Matthew is just making stuff up and passing it off as history. Okay, well, do people or okay, let me ask you this. Were early Christians willing to die for this Forget belief that. in a, no, 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 in no. a Messiah? The, the question is this. We're just looking at the author of Matthew. Did the author of Matthew lie? If he did, then how can you trust anything he says after that if he's a known liar? And why is I'm God not, inspiring not, and why is God inspiring a liar? I'm not making that claim that he's a, a liar. You are. No, I'm making the claim. No, no, yes, I'm saying to you. So I'm asking you why you believe in the zombies in the Gospel of Matthew when no other gospel mentions it and no one else in history mentions it. Well, we have more than one gospel, right? No, it, no, it's just like you know, uh, Where in history, where in the, why did the Romans write about zombies coming out of the ground? Why didn't the Jews write about the zombies coming out of the ground? Why wasn't nobody talking about zombies coming out of the ground? Why didn't Josephus write about zombies coming out of the ground? Why did nobody write about zombies coming out of the ground? Only Matthew writes that's, about it. That's not something that I've investigated. You know, th no, there's been things. To investigate. Yeah, sure. And, and I will, you know. Good man. So, <laughs> I, Randall, I quick will. question. Um, are you a Christian, by the way? Yeah, yes. Do you believe salvation is only in Christianity or do you believe it can be in other religions too? Ooh, that's a big topic, uh, I'll, but I'll expand upon this. Okay, so just like I was mentioning earlier in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, whether you believe in Christ, no matter what it is that you do, we all have to die and have a judgment day, correct? Do, do yeah. we all agree on that? Yeah, we all die and there'll be a judgment day, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I leave that to, to God or Allah, you know, I leave so you, that to him. You are, strictly speaking, you don't think salvation is only in Christianity. It could be in Hinduism, for example. I believe Based in salvation. Yeah? I, I, I believe, as far as my opinions about, about Christ, you know, I, I believe that if you accept the, the Messiah, as your savior, you know, you can be washed clean of your sins, you know, absolutely. And there is a very powerful message in what he brought to us. But at the same time, I don't believe that Yeshua or Jesus, Isa, can can be literally God. I mean, that creates all kinds of, you know, logical problems. But I believe in monotheism. <laughs> and ultimately, ultimately, the one God is the ultimate judge of everything. So yeah, if he wants to the question it, was, would you say that, say, for example, if a Hindu says he believes in one God? Yes. Would that be enough for him to gain salvation or does he have to believe in Christ? I don't know. That's that's up to God for to decide. Okay, so but strictly for, but, speaking, but, but, I don't think you're a Christian. For me based personally, on, based on the responses you have given, I don't believe you're even a Unitarian Christian. But But for me personally. Yeah, I, I want I to think, test that actually. Yeah, you're, you 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 have a philosophy of like some sort of a universal religion. Yeah. No, let, let me expound a little bit further. Okay, go on. Uh, the other. I don't know what that was. Uh, me personally, I do think that Christ is the best way to enter into the kingdom through His sacrifice. You know, so, so if I were to get, put a percentage on it. I would say 99.9%. That's the best way to enter into the gate, right? But there is a 
0.00001% of my brain that says, ultimately, it is up to the one God to weigh a man's heart and to scan over everything that he's ever done, said, thought, whatever. And he has the ability to make or break or bend any rule or law that he sees fit. And he's done this all throughout the, the, the scriptures where he has proclaimed that he's going to destroy a certain city. But then, you know, they repent or something happens and he doesn't do it. So who am I to say that he can't or won't? But at the same time, this is very dangerous thinking because if you spread this kind of thinking to people, they'll think, well, even though I'm a homosexual or even though I drink or do this, God might make an exception for me. So and I don't think that we can count on that. No, but if you why, uh, first, I want to know, why do you think the only way or the best way 99% of your understanding is through the sacrifice of a human being. Why do you think that's a way for salvation? Well, because if we look into the so-called Old Testament or the Torah, you know, in all of these uh, texts, the yeah. Jews, they used, you know, animals, they burned grains. They were constantly making sacrifices for God. In no, relation that's, that's to, different well, well, to well, well, a human sacrifice because I, I, a bit, I, I'm, I'm trying a to get difference to that. between sacrificing animals and grains or whatever and human sacrifice. Because in the Old sure. Testament, if you read it, it says that it wouldn't even cross God's mind to have such a, kind of a child sacrifice or human sacrifice. Okay, so why do you yeah, think yeah, it's the I best agree. way I, salvation? Well, I'm, I'm trying to get to that. You know, sorry, my okay. answers are a little bit long winded. But as I was saying, um, in the Old Testament, the Jews, they're constantly giving up these uh, sacrifices, you know, slaughtering lambs and burning some of their own grains and, and making these sacrifices and, and, you know, in repentance of their sins. But I, I believe that this message of Christ, I don't believe that Christ Well, it's not that I don't believe it's literally impossible that God can be three different people. Um, that, that's monotheism. But I do believe that Yeshua Christ is a child of a virgin birth, and he is divinely created for this sole mission or purpose to be a representative of what all of those previous uh, sacrifices were but in symbolic form of a divinely created person. And through that blood sacrifice, it's like taking a million or a billion lambs from the Old Testament and putting it into a symbolic form of a God's creation. And anyone who accepts that blood is accepting sort of uh, a, 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 a somewhat eternal uh, sacrifice for sins. But you have to come to that altar each time that you do sin. It's not like you accept this blood sacrifice of Christ and then suddenly you can become an anarchist like what this other Christian was saying, and you can just do whatever you want when you want. No, so that, that's a very... Question, the question okay, still remains, Randall, you know, why why sacrifice even one human being? That to an innocent human being. Are you saying God is incapable of forgiving sins if you ask for repentance? Well, I, I believe it has another purpose too, right? So we all agree that God reveals himself in you know various different ways. It could be through you know, certain natural disasters or through, you know, uh, audible sounds or voices. And I believe it was just a way to uh, to sort of reveal himself to the world. And as was mentioned, I believe, I want to say it was by Yusuf earlier. He Yusuf. quoted the verse, ye shall know them by their fruits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why, why would that Christianity... The that's, that's dealing with the prophets. But I'm saying, I, the question was... Do you believe God is able to forgive your sins if you sincerely repent to him and seek his forgiveness? Yes. Okay, then Absolutely. what is the purpose of any blood sacrifice? Be it animal, be it human, but human in particular. Why would God, to me, it seems like the biggest injustice. You know, God is the most just. And then you're saying the only way, not you at least, the Christians that say the only way, um, and you did allude to this, that 99%, that's the best way to seek salvation is through human sacrifice of Jesus. Why would, why would it be impossible for God to, to forgive your sins without any sacrificing an innocent animal or innocent human being? 
Well, as what was mentioned earlier about the law, right? So if we look in the Old Testament, if you, you know, if you broke one of the laws and you had two witnesses, I mean, you know, you could be stoned to death. I mean, it was very, very, very seriously, you know, and oftentimes we don't get a chance to repent. Sometimes we die in our sins. And no, I no, believe no, hold, hold that. On, hold on, hold on. If you look right. at the Old Testament, you know, the example that you gave, say, for example, adul adultery. Yeah. So if you had committed adultery in the Old Testament time, you would be stoned to death if there were witnesses. Okay. You cannot sacrifice an animal and get away with it, whether you had time or no time. Okay. That's a fair so, point. So the point I'm asking, you see, in Islam, we have the concept of forgiveness. And this is something that we believe that God, who is the most forgiving, the most just, the most merciful, compassionate and loving, he does not require any of his, what do you say, righteous believers or anyone to sacrifice their life, to kill them mercilessly in order for him to forgive. But you're saying the best way to enter the gate of heaven is through the human sacrifice. And that was, it, it wasn't easy, was it? it? It was something that Jesus himself did not want. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, he goes and he prays to God and he says, take this cup away, away from me. Let it be your will, not mine. So even Jesus did not want this. The question arises, why would God commit such unjust, what do you say, um, method of forgiveness? Because it says in the book of Hebrews, if I remember Hebrews 9.22, it says the only way God... Uh, uh, God can forgive you is by the blood and this blood is that of Jesus like without without blood without the spilling of blood there is no forgiveness Hashim do you mind if I send a wrecking ball through his whole narrative do you mind that Randall <laughs> yeah sure okay go for it okay I, I have thick skin it's okay <laughs> okay let me just, just do this wrecking ball of everything you've said on this idea of blood sacrifice and Jesus is the final unblemished sacrifice. I mean, I can do more than three, but I'll do three. All right. Okay. First problem you've got in the book of Ezekiel, it talks about how God says, if the wicked man turns away from his wickedness and keeps my laws, then his wickedness will not be reminded of him. Yeah. So clearly repentance is what it's referring to in the book of Ezekiel. No mention of sacrifice, mm. just repentance. Yeah. First thing. Second thing, if Jesus is the final sacrifice, why, when the temple's rebuilt, will, will there be a place for animal sacrifice again? And the temple's not been rebuilt yet. Third problem you've got, according to the book of Acts, they were still doing animal sacrifices for the forgiveness of sin after Jesus has been crucified and resurrected or whatever, it, apparently what it was. So if, as you believe that Jesus is the final sacrifice, why are the disciples of Jesus still sacrificing animals for forgiveness of sin? Why in the book of Ezekiel does it say animal sacrifice will recommence once the temples be rebuilt for the third time? And why, um, what was the other wrecking ball? Oh yeah, according to the book of Ezekiel, the wicked man will not be reminded of his wickedness if he turns away from his wickedness and keeps the laws and repents. So it kind of destroys this whole narrative of can this blood sacrifice necessity. I came in like a wrecking ball. Well, well, well not, 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 and, and those are all good questions. But, but I have a question for you also. Because well, first of all, first I, of all, I, I'm, just, just respond to those three questions. All those three points, if you can, which I don't think you can. I could even say, if you look at the in, in Leviticus, the blood sacrifices for unintentional sin to atone for the sins you didn't know you'd done. I could also throw that in, into the mix if you if you like. I don't mind. Yeah, I mean, those are all, you know, actually really, really good points that I really haven't previously uh, considered all that much. And, and I appreciate you, uh, you know, bringing that to my attention. I'm not going to sit here and be, you know, so proud and say, oh, you know, I have to lawyer myself out, out of this. And uh, no, yeah, that's the reaction I'm expecting, bro. The way you've responded is exactly how you should respond when you yeah, yeah. speak in truth, because you are seeking truth because you realize it makes no sense for God to be three in one. So that's making no sense to you. Monotheism seems to be the way. You don't believe Jesus was anything more than a man, apart from being a, a messiah, yeah, which is still a man. Yeah. You, you're close to Islam. You don't realize how close you are. 
and and slowly when you realize that there's no need for a blood sacrifice i mean you know you could even go go on and say things like well if god needs payment of, for to forgive sin where's the forgiveness because he's been paid so then you then you what you do then with this blood sacrifice idea you turn god into an unforgiving merciless god that requires payment doesn't matter who pays him as long as he gets paid where's the forgiveness where's the mercy well well, I, I have a question yeah, for you. I'd, let, let, Rand, let, I'd let's... like to ask you a question, my friend, because I've been waiting a long time. Sorry, Jake. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Randall's a nice guy, so... Yeah, I just want to know something from you. Do you worship Jesus? Uh, do I worship him? Uh, what do you mean by that, specifically? Um, if you ask me, I say no, I don't, very clearly. If you need me to explain it, it seems a bit strange, and that's why I heard what Hamza said, but I have doubts that you're actually uh, affirming monotheism because you want to come at the Trinitarians and these other Christians, but I just have this hunch that you worship Jesus, so that's why I'm asking. Do you, like, do you mean that, like, do I pray to Jesus? Is that what you're asking me? I can show you texts in the Bible that I'm talking about, but I mean, I think it should be very easy for you to answer yes or no. Well, I don't know what your definition of, of worship. So you well, answer it. You, you tell me how you understand okay. worship and then give your answer okay. based on that. Okay. So to me, if you say that you worship something, you identify it as being God. Is that what your definition is? If we were to put it in layman's terms, just real quick and simple. You don't need to call it God, but if you give div divine, pro uh, divine prerogative to anything other than God, then yeah, it would fall under worship and you'd be guilty of that. Well, to me, my definition of worship is giving praise to God. So that's my definition. And under my definition, uh, I, I don't worship Jesus, I give reverence to, to Jesus as, you know, any other prophet, but I don't recognize him as being, I mean, even Jesus himself, right? Whenever he's asked, you know, about how should you pray? He says, you know, our father in heaven, you know, hallowed be thy name. He, he doesn't say to, he doesn't even tell his disciples to pray to him. So I don't get where Christians pray to Jesus in his okay. name. That, that doesn't so make sense. So how do you deal with Revelations chapter 5? Do you know about that text? Go on. I'm just asking you, do you know it? I can pull it up and read it if you want. Revelations 5, 13 to 15. Let's see. I can, I can pull it up here. I have a script with me. And, you know, I, I appreciate you guys, you know, going, going through uh, with me. Let's see here. You said... Chapter 5, verse what now? 13 to 15. Okay. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such are in the sea and all that are in them heard I sing, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. And the four. Okay, that's the end of 13. No, I said 13 to 15. Read 14 and oh, 15. Okay. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And yeah. then, yeah. I'm so sorry, did you they, say something? Who are they worshipping? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see how you can get out of that verse that you know someone is calling jesus you know god where did i say they call jesus god i said who are they worshiping i don't know, I, I think we're creating some false equivalencies here i asked you a question how is that creating a false equivalence i mean, I, I don't know how you're reaching these conclusions it's making what a declaration i asked you a question
<laughs> Am I the only one that's uh, missing oh, this? Uh, oh, 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 okay. Uh, uh, okay. And the four beasts said, I mean, and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that lived forever and ever. Okay, I, I, I see what you're getting at now. Sorry, man. It's uh, it's late where I'm at and been a long day, so my brain's a little fried. I, I apologize. Uh what yeah. time is it where Let's you're see. at? <laughs> uh, it's about nine o'clock. Nine o'clock and it's late. Yeah. Do you know what time it is here in the UK? <laughs> What's that? It's one forty five AM. Uh, <laughs> hey, we can be tired at any time, right? <gasps> I like you though. So, so Randall, <laughs> um, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I have this. I, I've just been listening to you, but I had this hunch that you worship Jesus. That's why I had to come in. And before I let you go, kind of well, let, you know that you, let you know that your hunch is well. No, no. no Jay, I think Jay, it is. Sorry to interrupt you, mate. He he he's the opposite. He doesn't. He believes Jesus was just a man. I know that, but I think I still think he worships him. That's that's what I'm getting. Oh, at. I see, I see. <laughs> well, and, don't, and that's don't, why don't when I make... asked you the question, you 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 couldn't even answer it initially. What you should immediately say, no, I don't worship Jesus. Why, why would it take well, you that long well, to answer? Well, uh, because I come from a legal background, and I don't just answer questions without knowing what someone's definition of it. You know, like if I ask you, "Are you a good man?" Well, what's your definition of good? Shabir is smiling. <laughs> Yeah. The equivalent question is say, do we worship Muhammad? Peace and blessing upon him. And the answer is no. Yeah, let me ask Shabir that question. Shabir, do you worship Prophet Muhammad? <laughs> no. But, but, but no. So, so now we have our definitions. You know I understand the definitions also. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry, Randall, can I just ask? I, I do have, have you finished, Jake, brother? Well, I just was going to say that, I mean, I don't know I, what Randall understands worship to be, but I think the clear answer should be no. I think you do worship Jesus, and that's why you don't want to say it, and that your Bible seems to uh, hint at that in, in passages like what I mentioned in Revelation. You also have in, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 10, we're saying that every, every knee shall bow before Jesus Christ and all this kind of stuff. So I'm just wondering how, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God, how would you worship him as it seems to say in the Bible? Because that would be idolatry of worshiping somebody who's not God. Well, e e even Muslims believe that, that Christ is going to come back over this world with his sword, correct? It, and nobody's going to worship him, though. In yeah. fact, he's going to come he, back to say, look, all you people who were worshiping him, you're one day. wrong. <laughs> we also believe he's going to die one day. But, but now, how do you rec reconcile this? And this is a question I have for you guys, and I'm totally ignorant of this since you're all Muslims here. Um, how do you reconcile when it says uh, in the Quran, I believe, what is it in Surah, what is it, chapter 5, where it talks about, uh, you know, ye people of the book, and it makes some sort of declaration about, you know, you should follow, you know, those books and those laws. How, how can we, how can the people of the book follow their book if it's incorrect you know th and doesn't yeah, that's, that sort that's, of go that's something we deal logic? with that's something we deal with easily every day you know this is a common christian response but you're kind of sidetracking from the whole worship business is it making you uh, uncomfortable uh, no yeah, uh I but I mean, are you sidetracking that issue? You know, well, as, I'm wondering. Well? I'm still wondering if you're willing to say right now that you don't worship Jesus, because your Bible seems to su suggest it, and you haven't really answered to the passages, I, and you haven't clearly said no. By the way, Jake, I don't worship Jesus. Well, if okay. yeah, yeah, I I don't. Uh, fine, I can I can say that. Yeah, I I, I don't worship Jesus as being Ooh. in all of my prayers. I don't say, "Dear Jesus," never. 
You never so say what is causing you to hesitate so much, my friend. This is what I'm wondering. Because I come from a legal background and I know that words are powerful. And when it comes to debate, anything that is uttered or spoken is cemented. Okay. Is there so, a sense in there? Is there a sense in which you do worship Jesus that it could possibly mean that? In other words, what are you thinking that could possibly be construed of worship that you do or you say or you think about Jesus that could be construed as worship? Well, I suppose that in my previous, uh, you know, life, whenever I went to churches that had, you know, symbols of, you know, Christ on a cross and all these kind of things, you know, all, all those things, even even if you went to like a Unitarian church, right, and they have you know, a cross with Jesus on it. And they're like, well, we don't say that he's God, but we still have this symbol. And we, you know, all, all that stuff could be misconstrued as sort of worshiping him as God in a, in sort of a, a, a roundabout sense. And I used to be involved in some of that, but as I worship now in my current practice, I don't think there's anything that I, I could be doing to uh, be misconstrued in that way. So you don't you don't attend a Unitarian church? No, I don't. Okay, because you know that Unitarians worship Jesus, right? I I said I don't attend a Unitarian. Yeah, I'm just church. I'm just saying that. Did you know that Unitarians worship Jesus? Well, uh, I, it doesn't really <clears throat> matter because I don't go to Unitarian. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, I'll just say this last thing. You still need to deal with the passages in Revelation and these other places where it seems like, for example, the lamb is being worshipped. And if the lamb isn't God, I don't know why you're worshipping him. And that's why even mo most Unitarians that I know, because I've had them on my channel before, I've spoken to them, uh, who don't believe that Jesus yeah, is God. Yeah, and that's still something that I'm him. definitely still going to, him. you know... Uh, and I think that that's that's just ridiculous to worship somebody that you also say is not uh, God. I, I don't know. Uh, I think you're being a little bit harsh here in your in your dialogue. You know, because Welcome to Jake. What? you know we're reading from the King James <laughs> Version Bible here. Okay. All right. Whatever. I'm being harsh. I'll, I'll, I'll I would like to hear on. Brother Shabir's take on this. Inshallah. Yeah, Shabir, Shabir, let Shabir do the nice stuff. <laughs> no, 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 let's no, 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 can you still, I mean, can you answer the criticism that I have? You know, maybe if you can convince me, I will convert, you know. Yeah, that one's uh, easy to answer. Okay. Any of the other brothers will answer but, for you. Uh, <laughs> actually, Randall, uh, uh, do you know, you mentioned that you are from a legal background. Yeah, and answer I, I did, that. I, I, did, don't, I, I don't will come to I'm not going to divert. Uh, we are going to come to it, you see, because if you are from a legal background, you will know that when you are dealing with evidence, it has to be very specific. Sure. Yeah, correct? Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, excellent. So if we are going to be uh, following up on what you are saying, uh, you don't mind just telling us what verse you are referring to. Uh, what I was speaking about, about earlier. Yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned the Quran. Verse said something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is it? I've got my Quran. Just give me the reference. I'll read it. For yeah, you. just give. Uh, in, in, in Surah chapter five, is that correct? I'm, I'm just asking, asking you guys. You, you know, you're the Okay, so um, so sort of sort of ten, chapter five, so the book of Eunice, yeah. Uh, Bismillah, Rahman Rahim. He is the one who made the sun a radiant source. And there's a command. One second, I'm reading it. He is the one who made the sun a radiant source and the moon a reflected light, with with precisely ordained phases. 
so that you may know the number of years and calculation of time. Allah did not create all this except for a purpose. He makes the signs clear for people of knowledge. Surely in the alternation of night and day and all that God has created in the heavens and earth there are truly signs for those mindful of him. Are you sure that's the right verse? Hello? Uh, okay, so... Thanks for letting me read that. It was beautiful. What yes, I'm still here. Uh, 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 Randall, uh, may, uh, Randall uh, I'm sorry, how do you pronounce your name? Has it gone? Yes, you're saying it correctly. Randall. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, excellent. Can, 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 I, I, like I said, I, I had a particular train of thought in Hello. terms of, uh, you know. Hello? I think we've lost it. Gone? I think we lost it. Has, has it disappeared? Oh, I what think, a shame. I think his connection and uh, cut. Yeah, his connection's been spotty. Yeah, he, he went straight out. He didn't, he didn't uh, <laughs> thingy. All right, we've got two more quick guests, uh, and then we'll uh, call it a night. Uh, uh, Sheikh Hamza, I must apologize. I need to go now. Well, Randall's back. Randall's back. You've got to continue. Oh, Randall's back. Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, is he there? Hi, Randall. Randall, what's your, what's your, uh, what's the verses? What, what are you referring to? Hamza Sheikh? I must oh, apologize. Uh, I need I need to go. We were talking about. Okay. All right. Shabir. You, you need to go, Shabir. No problem. You can uh, jump I, yes, I must apologize. Salam alaikum, brothers. Wa alaikum as salam. Thanks for joining. Right, Randall. What is the um, what is the verse? This has happened a lot today. Christians have come on trying to use the Quran to support them, and uh, they just don't okay. understand it. Uh, you know, can I give you some advice, Randall? Sure, I'm here. Stay away from David Wood. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> well, you've got this argument from somewhere. Where have you got this argument from? Uh, it's just something that I've heard in passing, and since you guys are Muslim, I wanted to get your perspective on it. Well, you've not, it's, it's an anti-Islamic perspective that's coming from. So, And usually those are going to make you look stupid. Be careful. Well, I mean, I'm not presenting it as an argument. I'm I'm legitimately asking to be uh, educated on your perspective right. from it. You know, All right. inshallah. What's the verse? That I mean, that's what I'm asking you. What is that verse that they're referring Which to? Which verse? Like, Which verse? From what is it? Surah chapter five. Chapter five uh, about the people of the book. So, which verse is it? Give me the verse. That, that's what I'm asking you to to educate me on these arguments that is being made about that. Like, like I, I've heard from many Christians talking about in this particular chapter where it mentions about the people of the book, which is, uh, you know, what I'm assuming the Jews and the Christians to follow their their laws. Right. Or to follow their their scriptures. Is that what it says? That that's what I'm asking you. Well, if you t if you give me the verse. That you're referring to i mean i don't have that i mean does that is that even a verse does that even exist that's what i'm asking you well let the people of the gospel judge by their in is that the one you're referring to i'm um, sorry say that again one second i mean i can give you this verse this is a really nice verse i think you'll appreciate this is in chapter five because i know you like chapter five. Oh, people <laughs> of the book that's you rando now okay. our messenger has come to you, revealing much of what you have hidden of the scriptures and disregarding much. There certainly has come to you from God a light and a clear book, though which Allah guides those who seek his pleasure into the ways of peace, brings them out of darkness and into light by his will and guides them to the straight path. There you go. So in this chapter you want me to go to, Allah is clearly saying, telling you, O people of the book, our messenger has come to you, revealing much of what you have hidden of the scriptures and disregarding much. There certainly has come to you from Allah a light and a clear book, though which Allah guides those who seek his pleasure to the ways of peace, brings them out of darkness and into light by his will and guides them to the straight path. And you believe the next, you don't believe the next part, which is cool. 
Indeed, those who say Allah is the Messiah, son of Mary, sorry, God is the Messiah, son of Mary, have fallen into disbelief. Say, O Prophet, who has the power to prevent Allah if he chose to destroy the Messiah, son of Mary, his mother, and everyone in the world altogether? To Allah alone belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth and everything in between. He creates whatever he wills, and Allah is most capable of everything. So you believe that, don't you? I think you like this chapter, mate. <laughs> I'm reading it along with you. I, I, I just pulled it up here. So I've just give you a verse from that book, from the Quran, telling you that your scriptures are not reliable. I, I think he's referring to 547. Okay. But you have to read it in context from 544. Okay. You can understand it. Yeah. Uh, indeed, we revealed the Torah containing guidance and light by which the prophets who submitted themselves to Allah, made judgments for Jews. So too did the rabbis and scholars judge according to Allah's book, which they were entrusted and of which they were made keepers. So do not fear the people, fear me, nor trade my revelations for a fleeting gain. And those who do not judge by what Allah has revealed are truly the disbelievers. Okay, so. Uh, all the way to 47. Uh, oh, we ordain for them in the Torah a life for a life, an eye for an eye, a nose for a nose, an ear for an ear, and a tooth for a tooth, and for wounds equal retaliation. But whoever waves it charitably, it will be atonement for them. And those who do not judge by what Allah has revealed are truly the wrongdoers. Then in the footsteps of the prophets, we sent Jesus, son of Mary, confirming the Torah revealed before him. And we gave him the gospel containing guidance and light, confirming what was revealed in the Torah, a guide and a lesson to the God-fearing. So let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed in it. And those who do not judge by what Allah has revealed are truly the rebellious. Huh. And then I'll continue. We have revealed to you, O Prophet, the book with the truth as a confirmation of previous scriptures and a supreme authority on them. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed and do not follow their desires over the truth that has come to you. To each of you, we have ordained a code of law and a way of life. If Allah had willed, he would have made you one community. But his will is to test you with what he has given each of you. So compete with one another in doing good. To Allah, you will all return. Then he will inform you of the truth regarding your differences. Uh, okay, I, I, I have some questions now. And, and, and again, I, I'm not challenging you, my brothers, you know, even though I did. You know, if I, your audio is breaking up. Five sixty eight now yeah, someone's Christian, I still consider you, you know, No no that's the one I think he was referring to. Five forty seven. No. Brothers, absolutely. But now upon reading that on him uh, let's see. Uh, can you guys still hear me? Just about man. Oh, there so, is a verse in 68, uh, though. Okay, so, so, so I have Rand a question. Randall, what, is, what is your objection with regards to this passage? It, it's not necessarily in a, an objection. It's more of, of a question because you, you guys are a lot more educated on the Quran than I am, obviously, uh, which is why I'm asking questions. But in, in these words, is this the Prophet Muhammad? Is this him speaking in these words? No. So it is the Quran. The Quran is the word of Allah. Okay. Now, who, but who wrote these words down that we're reading? Well, regardless who wrote it, the thing is, this, these are the words of Allah, and they have been revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he taught his companions, the companions wrote it down, and so on. Okay. Now, and it's saying that in these verses that the, the scriptures that precede have, have been confirmed, correct? Confirmed and corrupted. Which which parts were corrected? Corrupted. You can only know that with the Quran. So the Quran says the revelations were given prior. Um, some of it was hidden and, and messed around. And you will know the truth by using the Quran because the Quran is an authority over them. It's, it, it's what we call the Muhammad. So if you want to know what's been corrupted in the previous revelations, just look at the Quran and that will tell you. And on what basis should we trust this revelation? Well, the Quran? From, because it's from Allah. I, I think you, you, you should stick to the question that you had because you had a specific question about this chapter 5. 
was it oh. verse number 47 that you were referring to? Now, let me just read 568 because I think that's what the people in the chat are saying it's 568. Okay. Uh, where it says, O messenger, convey everything revealed to you from your Lord. If you do not let them, then you have not delivered his message. Allah will certainly protect you from the people. Indeed, Allah does not guide the people who disbelieve. Say, O Prophet, O people of the book, you have nothing to stand on unless you observe the Torah, the gospel, and what has been revealed to you from your Lord and your Lord's revelation yeah. to you. O Prophet, will only cause many of them to increase in wickedness and disbelief. So do not grieve for the people who disbelieve. So so how, how do we know? Okay, okay so, so what you're telling me is, is that the parts in the the Gospels and, and the Torah that they were corrupted are corrected in, in the Quran, right? Yep. Okay. And we know that they were corrected because of what? You need to specify the objection you have or the problem you have with this. Well, well it is... It sounds like that, that you guys are going on faith that the the Quran is the the corrected version of the Gospels and and the Torah, correct? No, okay. The Quran, the Quran is the last message given revealed to the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it is the Muhammad. So it is uh, basically the book which distinguishes the truth from the falsehood. So from the previous. Um, messages which have been corrupted. So what was Torah once or what was Injil once has been corrupted and everything else has been abrogated once the Quran came into um, existence uh, or, or basically and, 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 been revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Quran acts as um, a protector of the message of truth in a way, if that makes sense. And, and and we're taking this based on faith, well, right? Based on, I, I, Randall, based Randall, on I have to stop you now. Bible, Just one second, on, Hashim. Yeah. He's, he's moving the goalpost, and I spot it every time he does it. Okay, here's your problem, Randall. You're going to ask us what we believe, and you're trying to use our scriptures as an authority. Yeah. Now, if, you're, if you've changed your question now as why do we believe the Quran is reliable, it's a completely different question. Yeah. If that's what you want to ask, ask it. I, I have a feeling your question was something along the lines of if the previous books are corrupted, then why does Allah ask you to judge by those books? Is it's a right? good question, right? No, but is that your question? Uh, I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? We're having some connectivity issues there. Okay, so I have a feeling your question was something along the lines of that if the previous books like the Torah and the Injil were corrupted, then why is Allah asking us to judge by it? Okay, yeah, that the, that's that's a fair question. No, but more or less, yes. It was your question, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, if you if if you had listened to what uh, Brother Hamza had actually recited or read from the uh, chapter five forty four all the way to forty eight, then you would have understood that first Allah talks about the Torah, then He talks about the 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 different what He say punishments and so on in the Torah. Then it talks about the Injil. The Torah was given to Moses. Injil was given to Isa or Jesus, uh, peace be upon them. And then finally it talks about the Quran. Yes? So it's giving you the chronology yes, I, I in understood which that. the revelation was uh, uh, came down to the different prophets and messengers. Now what you have to understand is that when it talks about... Um, Judging is talking about judging in their time. So when he talks about Torah, judge by the Torah. Because Allah, if you look at uh, another chapter in the Quran, and I believe that is chapter 7, 157, Allah says, and whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, such are the rebellious. So Allah did reveal the Torah. So you judge by the Torah in the time of Moses, in the time when the Torah was active. And then after that, came the Injil. So when you were in the time of Jesus, do you remember that passage in the Bible where it says, I'm the way, the truth, and life? The Christians yes. often quote, quote this. So in the time of Jesus, his message was the truth because he got the message from God Almighty. And God told him 
to convey this message to the people and he did and those people who who abided by these commands and message of god then those people would have eternal life yes because jesus his message would give them eternal life yes which means they will get uh, go to paradise go to heaven and this is something that is what's understood from this passages which uh, hamza read for you and at the end when he says uh, so hamza do you want to read uh, 48 again please if you got it open in front of you no, I, 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 i think i understand what you're saying here okay good is is i, it, I, I is see the... another angle as well though you know that on this whole chapter as well you know about judging the, the one you're supposed to be judging as a christian and a jew is muhammad peace and blessings upon him and is he who he's claiming to be sure so sure. Does, does he fit the mold of a prophet basically so what 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 could this is one explanation that so what your um uh, as a christian when you read your bible the we know that there's truth in it as well as false adria but the reality is this what is the test of a prophet how would you know who a true prophet is and who wouldn't is not a true prophet yeah, yeah exactly so if you go to the if you go to the torah or the old testament that we have which is kind of remnants um we can find things that point towards prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam So if you're if you're a Jew observing your book you will see that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is there because no one else fits the criterion and it's the same for the new testament for the um for what Jesus taught and for what you, you believe as Christians when you when you read the bible you'll see you're told to test the prophets that come after Jesus what does it say beloved believe not every spirit for test the prophets for the be, believe that every spirit for the many false prophets and out into the world how right. should you know one second how should you know them by the fruits you shall know them Yeah so you're told yeah. in your bible to test anyone who claims to be a prophet Agreed. that's what you're told to do Yeah Agreed. your bible doesn't say there's no prophets coming your bible says test the prophets because if there was no true prophets coming it would say they're all false so let me ask you a very simple question this verse of the quran is telling you as a christian judge muhammad peace and blessings upon him by your criterion so how does he fail the criterion of a prophet Well that's why I'm having this conversation with you because uh I'm I'm not extremely educated on the the Quran and no, the Bible, I, I think no. the Bible now what's the test of a prophet Oh that's a good question well, the Bible tells you In in what chapter are you referring to Well John tells uh, it, Epistle of John isn't it? tells you aside from you know ye shall know them by their fruits but you know we get into all kinds of arguments about what fruits are oh, well we, we don't have to get into all kinds of arguments what fruits are you should know them by the fruits but uh, uh, cuz it talks about how uh, a good tree will bring good fruits and a bad tree will bring bad fruits you should know them by their fruits for every true prophet that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of god so you're told anyone who claims to be a prophet and then testifies to Jesus Christ coming in the flesh is of god Yeah so there's one criterion. So does Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him testify to that? Oh very uh interesting things here and like I I think a lot of times that whenever Christians and and Muslims uh and Jews have these kind of conversations it's understandable that people want to be you know defensive of their faiths especially when they've been in them for a very long time but i just want to reiterate that uh you know i i didn't come on to this uh this chat to you know to challenge or cut down anyone i i i still hold to the belief that jews and christians and muslims you know Wonder, we're all of the family of abraham me? um but you guys have given me you got quite a lot to think about yeah, yeah we just went over that but okay I just wanted to say that you guys have given me a lot of information that I'm definitely going to ex- exactly exactly so my, my my brain is pumped up with a a lot of information and source material all right, all right. and uh and I think at this point I'm I'm going to you know go go read <laughs> more or less see yeah, I think he's delayed anyway but yeah. yeah we'll see you in two weeks so the next uh, arena I'm going to bid farewell and uh thank you Hamza Uh, Hamza and Hashim. Thanks a lot, bro. Thanks yeah, for sure, your patience. Yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah. I- I'll subscribe to your channel, and uh, and hopefully, uh, w- yeah, and hopefully we can have a, a follow up conversation. I noticed I didn't get a thanks, but that's okay. Come on, you got to thank him. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh yeah, you, you you were very nice and sitting there very quietly and uh, you know and listening and thank you so much for that. And and, uh, and joke joke the Muslim uh, metaphysician, you you you're a very intelligent guy, but but remember rebuke gently. Do not I don't know beguile. why. Called, was that was that on purpose that you called me joke? <laughs> no, it, no, it says that. Oh, it's, it's Jake. It's, oh, it's, it's, ja it's so, Jake. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I apologize. I, I'm on a mobile device, so my screen is very small. It's all right, I, I Randall. Sincerely, I, I sincerely apologize. No problem, Randall. Yeah, see you in two uh, weeks, mate. We we'll look forward okay, to. it Thank you yeah, so much. Get ready to get your harder. Inshallah. <laughs> is that it, Hamza? I think we need to close. Short we've now. got we've, we've got a Mac Mac. A what? I don't know. Mac Mac. 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 What's a Mac Mac? I don't know. Mac Mac. McDonald's? Hello? 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 <laughs> Hello? What are you, mate? I can't tell what you're saying. What, oh, that, you... That's just a video game avatar thing. Oh, okay. Well, are, you, are you Muslim? No, I'm agnostic. You're agnostic? Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> What don't you know? Referring me to speak to scholars and stuff, and that's why I'm here. I can, oh, okay. I can barely hear you properly. Let me sort his mic out. It seems second. muffled, your voice. Hmm. Right, try it now. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the... I'll list out the first one would be what is the food for the people of hell? Because we get two different verses that have two different answers to this. And both of them say they will have no food except the thorny shrub. And the uh, other what, one what are you agnostic people. about? <laughs> What's that? Do you believe God exists? I don't know. Okay. So what have you come on to do? So remind you've come on to... What point are some? I reconcile some contradictions that I see in the Quran. Oh, you've seen contradictions, okay. Well. Yeah. So, are you saying Islam is not true because of these contradictions that we say? Well, I'm saying they're, they're definitely the Quran is not inerrant if these are true. If you guys can show that these aren't contradictions, then oh, I'll tell I you what I'm going to do. Right, it's, it's late. Give your best one. Uh, the food of the people of hell. All right, cool. What's the food of the people of hell? Well, one verse says that it's a thorny shrub. What are you going to be eating, Mac? Go on, say again, sorry. Uh, the one says that they have no food except for a thorny shrub. Okay. And the other verse says that they'll have no food except for pus from wounds. Oof. But how can it be no food except this and then no food except this other thing? Maybe it's different levels of punishment. I don't know. Yeah. Different people being punished for different things. But it doesn't make that clear anywhere in the Quran. Which verse are you referring to? Uh, give me one second. So, so, Mac, just so you know, we don't just rely on what is in the Quran. we got several other sources that we rely on. So it's the Quran, we rely on the Hadith, we rely on the, the Tafsir, we rely on the Sirah, a lot of other sources in Islam besides the Quran. But the Quran is the main source, is it not? Yes, but many times the tafsirs explain the bits which uh, and go in detail based on the hadith. So for us, it's the both are uh, like important for us. We don't just say, okay, only the Quran and that's it. No, I, I understand that. I understand that. Okay. But so if you I, have you I checked the tafsirs of those passages, like there are applications out there where you get free exegesis, you know, which is the tafsir in Arabic. You, it explains to you these passages. Let, let's just hear them. Um... Yeah, give us the references and we can find so, them. So, 88, 67. 88, 67, yeah? No, okay. 627. Oh, 88, 627. Yeah. Eight? There, no food will there be for them except bitter dari. Oh, 627. Yeah. Um, uh, as the news of the overwhelming event reached your prophet on that day some faces will be downcast 
totally overburdened, exhausted, burning in a scorching fire, left to drink from a scalding spring. They will have no food except a foul, thorny shrub. Did you hear that word, some? Well, it says only some will go down to hell, but no. this is the food of the people of hell, isn't no, it? No, no, it doesn't. It right, what's the other one you're referring to? Yeah. The, the other one is the uh, 69, 35 to 37. 69, 35. Yeah. So he has no friend here this day, nor does he have And as for those, given their record in their left hand, they will cry bitterly. I wish I had not been given my record, known anything of my reckoning. I wish death was the end. My wealth has not benefited me. My authority has been stripped from me. It will be said, seize and shackle them, then burn them in hell, then tie them up with chains 70 arms long, for they never had faith in Allah, the greatest, nor encouraged the feeding of the poor. So this day they will have no close friend here, not any food except oozing pus, which none will eat except the evildoers. Okay. Yeah, so it says no food except the the pus. Ooh. And yeah. the other one says no food except the thorny plant. Yeah, I would say it's different punishments for different people. Where where can I find the information to back that up? Where well, we we have like Brother up? Hashim told you, we have you know ex, you know like um, exegesis like it's called tafsir in Islam, in Arabic, um, and it explains the pa the passages and the sources by them. And also we have um, narrations of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but we also take into account when it comes to describing these things. And we know from these narrations that there is different people in hell having different punishments. So the one who at usury will have a different type of punishment. The one who did this will have a different type of punishment. So we have no, it's not like everyone's going to have the same punishment. You'll be having a different punishment to somebody else, dependent upon what you believed or what you did or whatever. Well, I can understand there being different punishments, but I'll give you I'll give you an example, right? You'll have one of the lightest maybe you have one of the lightest punishments where there'll be coals put under your feet that boils your brain. But um Yeah, so just like paradise. But don't worry about it, you don't believe it exists, all right. There are different levels of hell as well. I think you need to understand that when Allah says certain food, it doesn't mean all the inhabitants of uh, hellfire will get the same food. Well, this I is mean, a, a misunderstanding. No yeah, so for that category of disbelievers, that is what Allah has uh, given them as a punishment. For another category of disbelievers or dwellers of hellfire, they'll get some other kind of uh, food, the one you mentioned in the other ayah. So I don't really see this as a contradiction. It's more what like a misunderstanding. The thistly thorn? Yeah, it's, it's more of a misunderstanding. Well, like it doesn't say that it's only the, for these people. The Quran it doesn't anything. tell you but all the details. The Quran, you know, the Quran there are many details. Right. Have I'll, to I'll, I'll, I'll be happy if you guys just send me a link to the hadith that says that this food is for this people of hell and this food is for this people of hell. You Good want to link what to the hadith? Well, yeah, but whatever, well, why where, do, why where do you not source it is to get this idea from that this is means for different levels of different... Okay, do you, you know. do you understand the different categories of the people in hellfire and in heaven in, in the Islamic uh, narrative? Yeah. Do you know? Well, I've read the verses about the different levels of hell. I'm not talking about the verses. Heaven. There's a lot more in the hadith. So if you look, if you look at any of the... Go to sunnah.com. I think that's a good source of both the Quran and uh, the Hadith as well. You'll find if you just type hell or Jahannam, I think hell, that should bring up most of the references that you require. And it gives you much more detail about both paradise and about hell as well. And it will it will tell me that the thorny shrub is only for certain people and uh, yeah, it'll tell you specifically for, for only which... for other people. It'll tell you what punishments are for which category of disbelievers or dwellers of hellfire. Not only that, it'll give you much more information than that. Okay, well, we'll see. If, if I don't find what I'm looking for, though, I'm yeah, going to be you know back. Where to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you, yeah, you're, you're welcome, mate. There's actually a third one you've missed as well. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's a third one. 3766. 
yeah, I think you should just yeah. But the, the, there, there's there's been a lot of people who have said like the tree of Zakum could be seen as the thorny shrub that's being referred to in the other verses. So, like, like I said, I'm asking questions, right? I'm not dealing from the place of certainty that I'm all I'm definitely right about this. I'm asking questions. No, that's fair enough. Yeah. Is is there any reason you're looking for contradictions in the Quran? No, that's that's not the reason that I read it at all. No, the reason that I read it was I had a you're searching for contradictions in the Quran. The Big Bang theory is mentioned in the Quran and all these things, and I was really into philosophy. Okay. Now I know there the law of non-contradiction is a philo philosophical thing, a great tool that allows people to really dig through to see what's false, because truth cannot contradict truth. Yeah, I mean, look, the Quran itself says that if this book is from anyone other than Allah, surely you'll find contradictions in it. Exactly. So this is, so this even, is a even principle he that the Quran that is using itself. But I think before looking for those contradictions, have you pondered on the universe, the creation, where did it come from? Do you think it could have come from something? The agnostic or? is the argument from causality or the Kalam cosmological argument. What yeah. was the first cause? I don't know. Yeah, but that's that's not good enough, is it? Do you think nothing can cause something? But the Big Bang isn't nothing causing something. Well, who said the Big Bang is the first thing? Well, exactly. I didn't say that. So I'm asking you, did, can nothing cause something, regardless of whether it's Big Bang or the singularity or whatever it is? Do you think nothing even exists? Give him the pen. Um, I mean, how do you give him the pen? Get that pen out. Exists. I was just gonna say, how do you get a big bang without a big banger? <laughs> big banger. Well, the, the, I've already admitted to that. It's just I don't know. I know, but you could just say that to anything. You, you so Ponda wants to come in, Hamza. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's, but, yeah. Where is he? He's in the chat. Yeah, come on, man. We're space for you. All right, I think I'm going to call oh. it a night, guys. It's, it's no, we're going to call it a night anyway. We'll let Yusuf come on. Just yeah, it's like it. nearly 2.30 over here, man, at AM. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll put the link here, Yusuf, just for you. <laughs> Give him the pen, Jake, honestly, please. Beg of you. <laughs> oh, Mag Mag? Yeah, let's just destroy him on the argument for contingency. Uh, how are you going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yusuf Ponda, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you doing, bro? How you doing, bro? Uh, uh, alhamdulillah, I'm just absolutely enamored with Jake's camera quality. <laughs> oh, you got Jake better. with his high qualities. <laughs> Do you think he's looking a bit bright? It's like spotlight on him. One sec, I've got. Uh, I had the YouTube running in the back. Yeah, mashallah. I think, I think it's the same better. camera. It's just he's got better lighting. He's got better lighting and he's got a stand <laughs> now. So it's got a that, good angle. That makes a big difference, the lighting. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. he, he used to have the um, the evil villain angle. Like <laughs> from, from down looking up. And uh, mashallah, it's <laughs> looking a lot better. But uh, hello, Mac Mac. Hello. How are you? All right, you want to jump off Hashim? You can, don't worry, bro. I'm yeah, inshallah. Okay, just walk along here. Take care, brother. Thanks for joining, bro. Wa alaikum, oh, yeah. Hashim. Salam alaikum. Right. Can you just give me those uh, Quran verses again? Uh, it was 88, 6 to 7, and 69, 35 to 37. Uh, 69. Uh, one thing is, well, there's a hadith. Um, that talks about there being a vast number of people in hell, that most people go to hell. Um, yeah, 999 out of every thousand. <laughs> yeah, so, and then the, one of the verses you gave um, made reference to some of the people that go to hell. Yeah? Which one yeah, was but that? Uh, the two, sorry. It still says there'd be, like, some of the people are going to hell, some of the people are going to heaven... You know, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but it's saying for that that sum in particular that it's referring. Let me pull the verse up. Actually, it's just going to be easier. I'm just reading a really good response to it. To be honest with you, eighty-eight six was the first one. Did you say? Uh, Let's 
886 to what, sorry? So they will... Um, oh, wait, no, it's... I might as well read from the beginning of it. Has the news of the overwhelming event reached your profit? On that date, some faces will be downcast, uh, totally overburned, burning in a scorching fire, left to drink from a scalding spring. They'll have no food except... Yeah, so it's referring to some of the people on that day. And then on the other one... Uh, Oh crap! I've I've got eight hundred and sixty-nine thirty-five here. What? That's not obviously not the one you mentioned. Uh, sixty-nine thirty-five for thirty-seven. Uh, sixty-nine. Hey Matt, have you been 37. on here before? No, I've I've never been on here before. Do you know me? Your voice sounds familiar. Uh, who's me? Jake. Uh, no. In fact, okay. I, 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 I've I, seen Hamza before. I've seen Hashim. I don't remember seeing you, though. Not that I'm like... No, your voice just sounds familiar. That's I thought I spoke to you before. Uh, I, I look like a lot of different people, too. <laughs> I often get, hey, are you Dennis? No, I'm not Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you. <laughs> we know just, Dennis. We know a Dennis. But he's Albanian. Sure but he's, Dennis, but... he's Albanian. So. Oh, I'm Canadian, so not the same guy. Uh, All right, one thing I just read, just while you're looking, um, Mac Mac, is that uh, there's three verses in the Quran that identify th three different portions of Hellfire, which indicates there's different levels of Hell. Oh, I'm, I'm not against there being three different levels of hell or anything oh, like okay. that. It's just, just so basically, yeah, so basically no what, 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 the, then, what I'm reading here as an explanation is saying there are multiple levels of hell, and in them people have different states of punishment, which we know from these verses. If the three things are distinct, meaning three different things, yeah, the meaning is that in one state, the people will consume only a certain thing, while in another, they will consume only a certain thing, and in another, they will consume another thing. Uh, in these verses, the word um, ill is not, is it illa? Is not used as an exception, but in the sense of rather similar to how it is used. The meaning is that the people of hell will not have any actual food at all. Rather, they will eat X. This is compatible with eating multiple things which are not from the genus of real food, such as what some of the exegetes have claimed to be the meaning of. A bit of po uh, poisonous thorny plants, discharge of wounds, they are all not food. So basically, um, one of the exegesis is saying that it's not, it's just basically saying they're not going to eat food, they're going to eat horrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah but there's, there's, there's it's one... saying that they're not going to eat food, and then it says they have no food except. Don't you see? Yeah, that's but a you, I think you need to. I think you need to look at the uh, the tafsir. For example, Ibn Kathir's tafsir. Uh, he quotes. Ibn Abi Hatim recorded, and he's he's explaining uh, a Sahabi here who's explaining the verse. Basically, it says when the people of hell get hungry, they will ask for food from the tree of Zakum. They will eat from it. Then the skins of their faces will fall off. If somewhere someone were to pass by, he would recognize them from their faces. Then thirst will be sent upon them. So they will, at, they will ask to be given something to drink. And this is also mentioned in another verse of the Quran, which he mentions here, mm -hmm. uh, to be given something to drink. And they will be given water like boiling oil that has been heated to the ultimate degree. When it is brought near to their mouths, the flesh of their faces from which the skin has fallen off will be baked by its heat. And whatever is in their stomachs will melt. They will walk with their guts falling out and their skin falling off. Then they will be beaten with hooks and it goes on rods of iron. Then each part of their bodies will burst into loud lamentations. So, uh, and then he, he mentions this boiling of the water is actually what causes the, uh, the pus or the uh, destruction to the intestines basically. Yeah, I think the issue is is that like there's nothing in what you've written there. Oh, sorry, written, um, mentioned there that says that all of the people in the hellfire are going to be subjected to that one particular thing. So it's you know with the first one, for example, it mentions some, 
and we know it's like there's not just going to be some people in the hellfire there's going to be a lot of people so that that begs the question well why use the word some here and why would you then make an inference to the possibility that it's necessarily referring to all people of hellfire oh even that's the question we don't want to ask is even if it does just say some for the first one right does it say yeah. some for the second one no it doesn't know but it doesn't so say it says, all there's no food except for pus from wounds yeah. and the other one would be in contradiction to that one would it not no it's not no, no, because, no, because, because it's not saying it's for all so although it doesn't say some it also doesn't say all well no food it, except yeah yeah I mean, it's not that's, saying that's, that that's pretty conclusively saying this is the only food. Yes, but not for all of the people of Hellfire. That would only be a contradiction if you could explicitly show that we should take that to say for all of the people of Hellfire, which it doesn't say. Well, is any verse that says the unbelievers without saying all the unbelievers only apply to some unbelievers? Well, it's that's the question, isn't it? Is it necessarily making a reference at all? There's no quantifier. It's it. So this is a similar issue with, like, for example, when they talk about the people of the book issue. It says the um, confirming that which came before them. And it doesn't give a quantifier. But then you'll have some Christians will read. Obviously, I'm not saying you're Christian, but um, oh, some Christians God. will read that. Oh, okay, I mean, I, I just but, see contradictions when I read. And the Bible is like you get the page five, you're almost at a contradiction. Mac, per Mac, page, Mac, and Mac. by the time you're at the end, it's like, wow, this thing. Mac, is just Mac. Let's just let's just agree on something. You haven't read the Quran and come to this on your own. So let's yeah, not. I did. No, you didn't. It, it, gone on some website. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anyway. It's, no, it's, but it's, 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 to, to, to make that claim is rubbish, mate. I've I've read the Quran and I didn't realize i ooh. think to make the claim that you think that you know what i read is utter rubbish i mean do you realize let's, how yeah, let's not, it is to say that let's you not, didn't do something he didn't you say you did. didn't read the quran he's saying that you didn't come to this sort of argument or contradiction by reading by reading the quran no way yeah um i agree I love uh, I agree. I love I agree. You want to know some, here i'll give you some of my original very original Totally, I've never heard other people say this. Things that I have dealt with in the Quran. Okay, we okay. can we can get to that. But let's. Well, this was your it's best a bit one. Of a, it's a bit of um, attention. It's let's just focus more specifically on um, this notion of a, a quantifier. That is, it. Do you at least admit that it doesn't say all, or that it doesn't necessarily refer to all? Well, I mean, it says. No food except for the people of hell. No food except is is that not signifying that there should be no food except this? Yeah, but is it the question is 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 it for all of the people of hell? That's what I'm saying. So well, I'm 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 saying to you, yes, you're right because it does say no food except. The issue that we're trying to address here is it like we said that uh, Amza's made reference to it already. Uh, we have. The understanding that there are multiple levels of hellfire and that there are different punishments for different people on different levels like for example one of the worst punishments is withheld for uh, dodgy scholars people who are supposed to be in a position of power within the muslim community and abuse that power and they lie and they cheat and they abuse scripture etc now, oh, they actually, get... I found I found a prime example. Sorry to interrupt you, Yusuf. No, no, sorry, go on. Um, okay, thus all this, but indeed for the oppressors will be an evil place of final return. So this is for the oppressors now, the oppressors, those who are oppressed. Yeah, it is hellfire. They will burn therein, and how evil is that bed? Then they will taste it—a boiling fluid and a filthy fluid of pus and blood, and other penalties of a similar kind to match them. So this is now a specific uh, food of the oppressor. So, and this is in the Quran. Surah yeah. 38, 55 to 58. So, yeah, we've so got now it's identified that particular uh, substance for that particular person, for an oppressor. And yeah. then you've got things like uh, those who unjustly eat up the property of orphans are only eating fire into their bellies. So okay. now you've got another type of person who eats up the property of orphans unjustly, that they'll be eating fire. 
Yeah, so the, the point here is that we've we've got lots of reason to believe there are specific punishments for specific groups. That doesn't make reference to all of the disbelievers. It mentions okay. the disbelievers. And you could be, like, for example, if you got, um, say, a bunch of football hooligans, yeah, fighting each other, and you've got Manchester versus Liverpool, and you were making reference to... Uh, the the hooligans that were the Manchester United supporters. You could say the Manchester United supporters then threw rocks at the Liverpool supporters. By saying that, are you making reference to all of the Manchester United supporters? Obviously not. You're making reference to the ones in the context of this specific initiation or in the, of this specific event or in this context. But you can still use the word the Manchester United supporters without that meaning every Manchester United supporter, correct? Yes, but if I said that, and all of them used rocks as weapons, or they used no weapons except for rocks. Or yeah. some used rocks. Right? Some yeah, used if, rocks. You, if you said that, now, if I say it still doesn't mean that. Rocks, that's it doesn't, fine. Yeah, yeah, but, but then either I don't way, say either they way. used no rocks except, or new used no weapons except for rocks. Yeah, but that, that's right? sort of superfluous to the point, because it, even then, you could say that, yeah. But then, obviously, you're only referring to the Manchester United supporters at this event, at this fight. You could say... Well, I didn't make that clarifier. All that I said is they used no weapons except for rocks. Yeah, that's fine. I don't, I don't know if you... I, think, I don't think you're following what I'm saying. So, the example that I gave, yeah? <laughs> no, no, no. Because the, the example that I gave, yeah, was to say... There could be a particular event. You've got 10 Manchester United supporters fighting 10 Liverpool supporters. And you could say all of them had rocks and were using rocks. You could say all of the Manchester United supporters were spitting. All of them were doing whatever. You could say that all of them were doing X, Y, Z. And you could use that phraseology. You could say the very words, all of the Manchester United supporters had weapons on them. But you're making a reference here to... At 10, not to every Manchester United supporter in the country or in the world, but the language is fine in that context and make use of it because you understand that it's making reference here to a particular group, even though it's using the word, even if it used the word all, when you're referring to this particular context. And it's not even used the word all in this verse that you've made reference to. It's just saying the disbelievers. So the Manchester United supporters used rocks and nothing but rocks. Okay, does that mean in that statement you're now saying every Manchester United supporter in the world used rocks and nothing but rocks? Of course not. You understand that when I say the Manchester United supporters use nothing but rocks or bricks or coshes or whatever... You, you know that I'm making reference to that particular group in that context, not to every Manchester United supporter. And we can say the same here. There's a particular context in mind. We know that there's different punishments on different levels. So by saying that the disbelievers are going to be subject to a particular kind of punishment, it doesn't follow from that that every disbeliever is only going to be fed that. Why? Because, well, we have other verses in the Quran like you've even pointed out, that make mention of the fact that other particular people, like for example the oppressor, are going to be fed specific things. So why should we take that verse to be meaning all when the Quran is mentioning the fact that people eat different things? It doesn't follow that it's... like It would just have to be a very uncharitable reading of that. Whereas if you take the Quran holistically, which is what we do, and it's perfectly fine and fair to say, well, yeah, it's for a particular group of people. It's not referring to all of the disbelievers. It's just saying the disbelievers, and it could be understood in the same way that when I say the Manchester United supporters were doing X, it doesn't follow from that that all the Manchester United supporters were doing X. But if I said all the Manchester supporters used nothing but rocks, yeah. Then, later I said, all the Manchester supporters used nothing but baseball bats. Yeah, yeah. Now, where would do be, you go? 
because then you could because the question is is well are you making reference to the same group so the, well, my I question is, is say all the manchester supporters yeah, yeah but you could have an event on the 15th of march an event on the 20th of december and one could be referring to the event in March, and another could be making reference to the event in December. I, I, I think we're going apples and oranges here because we're talking about the people of hell. Yes, there's different levels of people of hell, but the one person yeah. they will have Matt, no food. Matt, Matt, let's yet. establish something. Some people will have no food except oh, okay. this. Mac. And the other verse says they will have no food Mac, except this. Mac, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. It's not the first time this question has been asked. Can you see that link I've got on the screen? Uh, where? Call to models. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've read this before. People have linked this already to me. Right, so you've read that. Yeah, and where he actually says that he doesn't really know what the word Gislein means here. Arazi says that he doesn't know, yeah. Yep. So? But the point here is this, so you've read that. You've heard, a, you've heard an explanation, uh, and you don't agree with it. Well, he, he says he doesn't even know what it means. Right. So so they're just making up the meaning now. They're changing it to whatever's going to suit their purpose. No, that's just mean, no, 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 no. All right. I'm going to end this conversation now because you, you are disingenuous. You've, you've, heard, you've had an answer to your question. Just because you don't like the answer doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do now, get rid of you. And um, people watching, take that link. And you, you'll see the answer. And this guy's read this, and he's still come and asked it, as if like it's something new, something profound, something he's found. I know you. I know you're playing Mr. Nice Guy. I know it. I know you like to do that. No, no. It's just, it's just for the sake of even the the people listening as well. It's like the, my major point is that there is nothing about those two. Like they're not even in the same chapter. They're in completely different chapters. So. Why assume it's talking about the same group of people? Like that's the big issue. Uh, uh, here. You know, with the verses, this verse is talking about the oppressors are going to get this punishment, and the one who eats the orphans' food is going to yeah. get this punishment. Um, so because he, he, he yeah, there's seven gates of hell. There's lowest yeah. level. There's lower levels. So why why would you assume everybody's going to get the good food? Well, and the, the other question is as well, plant is or pus, which is worse? I'm going to say the pus is worse. When he tried to make the analogy again back to the Manchester United supporters, and he said that if you were to say uh, all the Manchester United supporters were going to be doing this, and then next then said that oh no, they're only going to be eating this, and it was in direct contradiction with the first thing, yeah, that that would be fair if it was like within the same statements, within the same like chapter, making reference specifically to the same events or to the same group um, explicitly. And it, like it, you've got two completely different chapters here, so it's not Just like. One second, I've got this guy shaking his head nonstop for the past half an hour. W what are you shaking your head at? Yeah, yeah, man, you can't just speak about it. But salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Why are, you, why are you shaking your yeah, head? Yeah, listen, listen, brother Hamza, you can't just speak about Quran just with the out of your mind. You can't just speak like that. I'll just bring this brother here, just talk about Manchester United. Al Ghashia, Al Ghashia means the day of judgment. It's when, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings all this, the day of judgment. That's why what he is. Right. Because what I'm hearing is not right. What have you heard? You, That's not right. You, 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 what I'm hearing, you, you talk about the stages, the stages of uh, hell, which is called ad-darak. Ad-darak means the hell. When you talk about the stages of hell in Arabic, you call it ad-darak. What have you heard? That's not the, right. Yeah. You talk about uh, you talk about the, the the stages of hell in one surah, which is not talking about the stages of hell. It's it's speaking about the day of judgment itself. Al Ghashiyah. Yeah, we know. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're talking. No, no. We're talking about the fruit of hellfire. It's Why not talking they... about the, hell, the 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 stages of hell. It's not. The, we're not the we're surah not, whoa, 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 whoa! What are you, you talking what about? about? Wait, wait, okay, wait, okay. I think I understand what he's saying. It's, no, it's fine. It's fine. Jazakallah khair for the nasiha. So, what are you saying that basically that verse there? So, one of them is I'm, referring to the hellfire, one of them is referring to the day of judgment before. Exactly. Exactly, okay. brother. Exactly. One, it's speaking about the day of judgment, and the other one, it speaks about the, the stages of hell, which in Arabic called ad darak 
when okay, you so speak about yeah. the state about the stages of Jannah. One you second, call Yusuf. It... Well, one second. I know the brother's excited about... We know how harsh is about the overwhelming day, but then it talks about the food of hellfire. Yes. No. No. Yes, no. it does. No. When you read it in Arabic, no, brother. Please. Well, yes, it does. Wait a second, brother. It's in Arabic, man. I'm reading it. Okay, what's it say? Uh, I, 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 I give you what it says. It says in Arabic. Right, one second, one second, one second. One uh, second. Hold, uh, well, give me a second. I so let's all bit... calm down first, though. Let's sit. Uh, no, no, no problem. No, no problem, brother. Hamza and uh, all the brothers over there. I just, I don't like someone speak about school. Something uh, like Manchester United or whatever, but just uh, try to explain what's going head. on. Don't worry about okay. that. Okay, don't brother. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hal ataka hadith al it's uh, have you heard of Al Ghashia? It's the day of Jad. You know, the, the, the faces of them just, you know, uh, from the, the appearance of this day, just Amilatun Nasiba, Tasla, Naran Hamia, Tuska, Min Ain in Ania, Laysa, Translate it. Wait a second. Laysa, Lahum Ta'amun, Illa Min Daria. Translate it. Just a second, Laysa, just a second, brother. Laysa lahum ta'awun min illa min dhariya. This refers to the day of judgment. It's not referring to the, to the, to the, in Arabic, when uh, I, I can't explain okay, it. Okay, let me read it in English, mate. I'm going to mute you. Okay. I'm going to read it in English. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Has the news of the overwhelming event reached you, O Prophet? On that day, some faces will be downcast. Totally overburdened, exhausted, burning in a scorching fire, left to drink from a scalding spring. They will have no food except a foul, thorny shrub, neither nourishing nor satisfying hunger. Now, reminding me why you're saying Surdul Ghashia is not talking about the food of hellfire. It says on that day, so it's making a reference to Judgment Day. So no, 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 it's not. What... Yusuf, Yusuf, it's saying Judgment Day is going to happen, Al Ghashia, and yeah. then what's going to be the consequences of that That's judgment? Right. One second, yeah. yeah. What's the consequences of that judgment? Some faces on that day will be in the hellfire, yeah. I don't think and you know there, this is what they're going to suffer. This is what they're going to drink. This is what they're going to eat. And then it goes on, and on that day, other faces will be glowing with bliss. Fully pleased with their striving in an elevated garden. So the, the Surah al Ghashia is telling you the day of judgment is coming and the consequences for different people on that day. Some will be in hell drinking boiling springs and eating and eating um, the thorny shrub. Others will be in paradise. So how can you say we're wrong about saying Surah al Ghashia relates to what people will eat in the hellfire? Explain. Can't hear you. Are you still muted? muted? Sorry. You're, You're muted, muted, mate. Go on. Muted. Okay. Read Tafsir al Tabari and you will understand, Mr. Ahmed al Utaibi. Read Tafsir al Tabari. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's referring back to the day of Al Ghashia. The first verse so, is, yes. The first verse is referring to Al Ghashia. What's the, what, t tell me uh, what uh, the verse six is saying. Just give me, give me a second here. Oh, it starts from verse four. Tasla naran hamia. No, no, I know, but let's let's go to the the, the eating part. Right. What what does verse six say? Laysa tusqa min ain aniya. Laysa lahum taamun illa min zariya. La yusminu wa la yugni min jur. Laysa lahum taamun illa min zariya. So what does verse six say? You know, I cannot just translate, translate it. it. Translate it. You translate it, Hamza, because uh, All right, I'll you translate know, it. I don't like to translate it in the wrong way. All right, I'll translate it. They will have no food except a foul, thorny shrub. Okay. So what was it about? Those are the people who go this, 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 this,
the, the that day of judgment they won't have no food no it doesn't say that listen let's, listen let's uh, leave it here listen. maybe it's yeah, better to i think, yeah, you're, I think you're wrong bro. you're being you're mistaken no bro. no 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 go back no, you're wrong. I think it's best we just we ask a sheikh about this. And... I mean, I'm reading right here from the chat here. From the... I, I uh, think Yusuf, a... I, know, I know you. I know how nice guy you are, right? I've just it's read not about that. The Quran. It's not... No, listen, listen, Yusuf. I just read from the Quran. This is Brother Ahmed Al Taibi, is an Arab, telling us exactly what it is. Jake's reading the same. He's wrong. And he was shaking his know. head. Look, he's doing it again. He's shaking his head. Well, I'm reading a tafsir that I think solves the whole problem. Uh, but I, I I don't get I, I really don't see the issue because if you read in in chapter thirty seven uh, where this other thing was mentioned which Hamza you made note of it before uh, thirty seven sixty six if you read Ibn Kathir's tafsir of it when he talks about uh, them drinking boiling water he says here according to another point. Uh, uh, according to another report, he said that this mi means a mixture made from boiling water. And then it explains it further. The boiling water will be mixed with pus and offensive just discharges that leak from their private parts and eyes. So to me, there's no contradiction. The, the tree that is being spoken of in, in one of the verses and the shrub in the other are virtually the same thing. That's that's what, and, that's what that link says. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and the water which is mentioned that everybody drinks is mixed with the pus, and that's what the pus is talking about in the other verse. And it it, it uh, basically burns and destroys the, the drink causes the pus. And, and, yeah, and it call it has some of it says it has pus mixed in it, and another report says that it basically causes the pus from destroying the intestines. So there's no, I don't really see any. Oh, but I don't know why that brother was so upset. No, I think it was because um, maybe he misunderstood my, my use of the, the Manchester United thing. I wasn't trying to compare Hellfire to Manchester United or anything like that. <laughs> I know, but, yeah, yeah. The, my point he, of mentioning that. He just got that, carried away. No, no, may Allah bless him. I, I think he, his intentions were good. But it was um, my mentioning of that was to do with the use of language. Um Merely as an analogy with oh, re reference to the way language is used, not saying anything about how you know hooligans fighting is as in any way analogous to um, the hellfire. Who is this big day. Hass geezer in the, in the private chat? Who is he's, this guy? He's some um, agnostic apparently. Who's like honestly, you know, man? I, I think he's like a Turkish agnostic, but his his devices are not connected, so unfortunately. Yeah. And I'm not going to bring been in the else back now. chat the whole time talking nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. Oh, anyway, like I say, sort of Russia talk about the overwhelming day, what's going to happen, and then what's going to be the results of it. Some will be in a scorching fire, some will be in a blissful paradise, and fantastic. The idea that just because one verse says overwhelming day doesn't doesn't mean the whole chapter is about the overwhelming day. Right, right. And but, but even if it, but even if it does, then it's he's either way that. it resolves it. Like regardless of how we're understanding it, if it's if he, I just find it ironic he came on to say that we were supposedly misrepresenting the Quran, and he is. I mean, he's just misrepresenting that chapter. Allah Allah. 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 All right, guys, I'm going to let you all go. Um, Yusuf, thanks for jumping on, Mr. Ponder and Soul. I shall see you tomorrow, innit? Uh, yeah, what time? Uh, oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let, let me know tomorrow, inshallah. Let tomorrow. Uh, let's let's say uh, nine, 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 okay, inshallah. Hey, Yemeni. Don't fall asleep though, I'll try not to. All right, inshallah. all right, as until then, anything going on on your channel or what, what's happening? Uh, probably. <laughs> when are we doing part two, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah, we need to sort that we, out. We, we, need, we need to sort that out and do part two. Yeah, we'll try to do it this week. Come All right, take, take care. Stalin. I'm see you Yemeni, about Yemeni, don't yeah. stop selling us out, bro. We want to see you more on uh, Worms. Inshallah. 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 All right, bro. Um, Yemenite front, Alhamdulillah. Anything going on on your channel? Or are you just bashing people up on Clubhouse? Uh, Clubhouse, Telegram. Uh, you know, just oh, grandma. Oh, <laughs>
Yeah, I'm on Telegram as well, just doing it as well. But no, inshallah, on my channel, um, I'm thinking next year, I'm working on a couple of things. Inshallah, next year, some stuff will come out on my channel, just research at the moment. Okay, and when you're joining us in Van Helm, Valheim, or whatever it is? Um, inshallah, soon. Uh, Join us, man. Yeah, we'll do it. All right, yeah. take care, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll see you on Sunday, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Oh, you're coming? Yeah, yeah, mashallah. Yeah. As alaikum. And Jake, the Muslim meta position, mashallah. Jazakallah khair for your presence. Uh, it was good, man. We didn't get any atheists, man. It was all Christians. It was beautiful. No, yeah, no, I know. What a shame. Uh, but yeah, it was fun, man. Good to yeah. be back. Alhamdulillah. Back in the fold. Um, yeah. What was going to say? Anything coming up with you? Tap, is it? No, or? really, man. Just, uh, just recently, uh, earlier today, I put out a video on David Wood, smacking him around a little bit because yeah, he's stepping. He's stepping into my realm with the Trinity, and uh, yeah, I had to smack him around a little bit. But um, yeah, nothing new, man. Just you know, same old thing. Alhamdulillah. So, Good to have you back, anyway, man. Alhamdulillah. All right, bro. See you about. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. And that was that. Mashallah. Another arena. Wow. We ooh, mashallah. Five hours and twenty-five. We lasted until. Oh, alhamdulillah, look, just over a thousand. That's good. Sorry, Simon the Wolf. You have to come next time now. Um, oh, I'm tired, man. That was that was a long one. Three in the morning. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it much. It was it was fun actually. It was just Christians, and it was good when we used Rob to beat up Christian. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to beat someone up with a Rob. That was awesome. Um, Jazakallah for joining us. Jazakallah for your support. Um, uh, read from that book. No, I'm not reading that. I've got a new book now. I've got Darwin's Doubt as well. I've got this book as well. I'll show you this one. Signature in the Cell. That's his other book, Stephen Myers. And I've got Darwin's Doubt as well. So I need to lock it all down. No atheists, though. Couldn't use any of my material. Um... So anyway, see how we hooked that Christian though? We hooked him in the in the arena warm-up. So it was well worth doing that. So that's how we hook them. Yeah? So go get them, guys. Um, I shall see you guys on Sunday. I'll do an early live for the um, Speaks Corner Sunday, innit? So I might do an hour in the morning, inshallah. Cut the highlights for today's stream. Yeah, I probably will. If someone could do that for me, I'd really appreciate it. So if anyone's capable of um downloading the video cutting it up and um that'll be really good that will really help me all right guys always a pleasure love to see you you know what's coming assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh